In a magical land, in a magical town, game. Santa and his magic elves are hanging around, building magical toys for girls and boys to deliver to the world and bring Christmas joy. The reindeer are snug in their snow-covered stable, while Santa puts turkey on the dinner table, but a mile away, huddled in the snow, Gary sits scared as the Arctic winds blow, alone on his own, forgotten and lost, surviving on roots and the permafrost. Dreams of joining Santa's team filled Gary's head, and he'd walk by the stable when they had all gone to bed. He'd tap on the glass, the reindeer would laugh, cutting Gary's self-esteem, painful in half. He was Rudolph's half-brother, a plan unwanted. By his father's indiscretions, he would be forever haunted. Gary the green-nosed reindeer, reindeer was of unexpected birth. But one year he saved Christmas, Christmas, and he proved to them his worth. All of the other reindeer, reindeer used to laugh and make him cry. They never let poor Gary, Gary fly with them up in the sky. In a big dark castle on the other side of town, Osama bin Laden was wearing a frown with a bat on his shoulder decked in a black cape. He devised a new plan to make America shake. He said, I'll destroy Christmas, here's what I'll do. I'll kidnap poor Rudolph as 9-11 part two. The West will quake when their holiday is gone. Then I'll rule the world like my name was Exxon. He snuck into the stables so he could steal. Rudolph and he left in his jihad mobile. Santa found out the news and he said, oh dear, Rudolph's gone, there will be no Christmas this year. The yells began to cry and the sky turned gray. But Gary heard the sobs walking by that day. He shared Rudolph's DNA and had someone to say. He said, I can guide your sleigh and make everything okay. Santa said, who are you? Gary said, I'm Rudolph's half-brother. You can tell because my nose is green instead of red. Santa said, whatever, just put on this harness. So then one happy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, say, Gary, with your nose so green, won't you guide my Christmas sleigh? Then all the reindeer loved him, loved him, and they shouted out, hooray, hooray. Gary, the green-nosed reindeer, reindeer, thanks for saving Christmas Day. And the toys were delivered across the world, bringing Christmas joy to every boy and girl. Osama was fed up and let Rudolph go, and their brothers reunited in the North Pole snow. Rudolph said, hey, Gary, I'm sorry we laughed and left you forgotten, like President Taft. We know it made you cry, we're sorry we were mean, we'd like you to join our reindeer team. And that is how Christmas got its colors, from the red and green noses of the reindeer brothers. You may see them flying high on Christmas Eve, bringing gifts to little kids like Stacy and Steve, and Dennis and Cindy, and Claire and Louise, PlayStation 2s and Green Day CDs. But not a for Osama as they stay in Espanol, no GameCube's in his stocking, now Santa brings some coal. Gary the green-nosed reindeer, reindeer, was of unexpected birth. But one year he saved Christmas, Christmas, and he proved to them his worth. All of the other reindeer, reindeer, used to laugh and make him cry. They never let poor Gary, Gary, fly with them up in the sky. So then one happy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, say, Gary, with your nose so green, won't you guide my Christmas sleigh? Then all the reindeer loved him, loved him, and they shouted out, hooray, hooray. Gary, the green-nosed reindeer, reindeer, Aww. thanks for saving Christmas Day.
Ah. Ooh, I gotta eat it. I gotta eat it. I gotta eat the height. Oh. Bring up something personal about me. Well, go fuck yourself, man. Dumb shit. It immediately negates your point when you go when you go low blow, moron. Bye, 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 bye,
It's like someone had too much chili at Wendy's.
I was young, all the world has seemed so big, nothing I can do. I dream of all that I could be and where to go, but dreams grow old with you. I need th that money. I really do. I need that money to pay my bills. going around the coronavirus test if you have health insurance is like 300 to 500 dollars if you don't it's like 1600 dollars what the fuck all right exultia pwt cheers with your bitches i'll treat your bitch for toilet paper <laughs> The I'm a pussy.
자. 뭐 you know, we contribute to you, but it always seems like it's a black hole because it always seems like no matter how much we contribute, you're always still having problems. You're always still in debt and, and nothing's getting better. I agree with you. You're gonna be treated like an asshole. You're gonna be shown the door. I love Hulk Hogan's dick. I am fat and I like you, my balls. <laughs> I am Cat and I'm liking my Thanks goal. to Jubbity Bubbity for joining the hate army.
Criticism is a great thing. And whenever people write off criticism immediately, it's stupid. It doesn't make any sense to me, you know? <laughs> Thanks for the money, stupid fuck. My name is Phil, and I'm an alcoholic. YouTube mode on.
It's Dark Dave's fault. It's Tevin's fault. It's Super Hound's fault. There's a sick motherfucker on the internet called Super Hound, whatever the fuck this idiot's name is. So if you're going to be an asshole, you're going to be treated like an asshole. You're going to be shown the door. <laughs> or at the very tail end of the stream, all right, <clears throat> excuse me, where I'm going to kind of do like a you know, endings, ending video to say, you know, thanks for watching today and all of that. And 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 say thank you tomorrow. And on camera, Those are it. the only portions of today's content that I will have any kind of monetization on. So please understand that if you willingly decide, oh, I want to contribute to Phil's stream today with a membership or gifted memberships or a super chat or a super sticker or tip, there will not be any mention of it. There will not be any shout outs for it. I need there will not be any problem really messages on the screen. Money. And I will not be updating the leaderboards whatsoever while I'm doing the reaction to Johnny I Howe. I don't care. All right? One of the major... <clears throat> uh, ...that I monetized them and to that day okay. found new ways to monetize yeah, them on the regular. All, All right? right? It's We're definitely going fall. to talk about this today. We are. What, what do I do? Fully, going to let you know exactly from my perspective. Uh, all the talk and arrangements and everything. You know, I don't, again, we're getting ahead of my, ourselves. I keep getting ahead of myself. Every day I start talking about it. I'm like, wait, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to actually do it today. Okay? Um. <clears throat> so, that's the deal. And that's very different. I don't think I've, I've done it since I became a full-time streamer. I don't think I've done a stream where I said I'm purposely demonetizing it. I don't think that I've had a video, right? It's always kind of been what I do is my job. It's my, it's fair game to monetize. And by the way, it is fair game to monetize. If I so chose, I would not be legally in the role to monetize today's content. However, I would probably feel awful. Since this is the subject matter of some of the video, the issues blah, that they had with me over the years, blah, 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 to further blah, blah, monetize blah, blah, them blah, seven blah, years blah, later blah, would probably blah, be blah, pretty hypocritical blah, blah, and or blah, blah, pretty blah, blah, tone blah, 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 deaf blah, blah, blah. to the whole point of reacting to their video, right? So, I'm not going to do it. I don't want to do it. And by the way, quite frankly, I don't need to do it. Um, you know, one day <laughs> doing something completely different is not going to ruin DSP Gaming as a, as, a, as a streaming channel or a business, all right? That being said, again, I'm not going to shut down everything on the channel. It's hilarious. I got messages overnight. You should completely demonetize DSP Gaming for the day. Why don't you just turn off every kind of monetization possible for the entirety of your channel? For the entirety of my channel. So I should not have any rights to make ad revenue today. I should not have any rights to get a super thanks or anything on any video on this channel today. Right, okay. Plus, I'll be honest with you, I do not trust YouTube. Just being honest here. I do not trust YouTube that if I were to turn off monetization on this channel, that I would then immediately be able to turn the monetization back on. I don't, have I don't trust do it, it I don't in any way, shape, or form. I don't have money to do it. I think that, you know, with the track record that YouTube has, I don't have money to do it. that would be completely stupid of me to trust it to work so i am definitely not going to chance hurting myself and my business this, again this is my job this is not my hobby and i mess around and who cares if it gets fucked up this is my job and if i were to do something that drastic and then it didn't turn back on right away i'd be pretty screwed <clears throat> all right so i'm doing the right thing here in my eyes by not monetizing the portions of this stream and or the on-demand videos after the fact, all right? And I hope that people feel the same way. And if you don't, sorry, because here's the thing. People always move the goalpost. Oh, well, if Phil monetizes that video, he's in the raw. Okay, I'm not monetizing it. Oh, well, then what Phil should have done is he should have monetized it, but he should donate to a charity and he should do this. Bullshit. This is where you get into the, the horrendous bullshit of the internet. 
these people who say shit like that will never be satisfied. Because then, oh, okay, let's do a charity. Oh, that's not a good enough charity. He should have done it. Fuck you. We're just not going to monetize it that way. There's no misconstruing of anything. There's no bullshit. I'm turning off the ads. I'm not going to be doing anything regarding any kind of income or revenue I while I talk sick? about the John and Howard video today, okay? And that's that, all right? That's that. So, all right, Eternal, you're gone because you have been being fucked up for days and you're gone, you're not coming back. Okay, and that's what I mean. I have no tolerance for this shit today either. This is something, just to, to clarify and be, be transparent with everyone, this is not exciting for me. This is not a fun day for me. This is not, oh, Phil's doing an exciting playthrough or a cool react event. This is not that for me today. This is meaningful in a different way. This is hurtful to me. There's a reason why I have not said much or anything official about this. You're not welcome on my video experience. in seven and a half years. It's because it's personal shit and you're going to be banned. Quite frankly, this is the kind of stuff that should never be on the internet. This is exactly the kind of stuff that hurts relationships, that hurts people personally, all right? It's one thing, oh, hurting someone's livelihood or whatever, you know, neither here nor there. This is something that personally is very hurtful to me to even listen back to, okay? We'll talk about that. Again, I'm getting ahead of myself. It took me a long time to even listen to the thing in full, all right? So anyway, all that being said, this is not exciting. This is not fun content. This is not that kind of crap. And by the way, I, I said this previous, and I'll, I'll state this again. I don't care. Okay? Um, what I will not about? be doing drama content like this uh, again anytime soon. After today, after this is put to bed and we finally get this I need rest this, after money, many, really many do. years I of need that kind money. of a lingering issue bills. and thing that people wanted an answer on, from now on, when people say to me, Phil, what do you think about John and Howard? What happened with that situation? Will you ever do stuff in the future? Yada, yada, yada. I will say, watch the John and Howard reaction. I did a whole giant project on it. All right? What, what do I and do? And that's my, my response to that. And then we're just going to move on positively. I am not going to be dwelling on the past um, with this any further. This is meant to essentially put this in the past. And by the way, I'm well aware... There are a ton of people watching today who have not watched my stuff in many, many years. I've already been contacted by quite a few people behind the scenes saying, I haven't watched your stuff in ages, but this has always been a lingering thing for us. Like, what happened with you and John and Howard? And we want to know, and we're going to be watching. So, understand that this is not just about me. It's not just about them. This is about a whole community of people on the internet who... Back then, during my formative years as a content creator, essentially watching me share my relationship and friendships per, pri uh, that were private publicly with people on the internet and thousands of people all over the internet liked that. They liked myself and John and Howard and our interactions and the way that we got along and the content that we made. And it was very hurtful, not only to us, but to you guys too, when it all fell apart which is part of the whole equation we're going to be discussing today because this is one of the major running themes of my history of content creation. When you make the private public, sadly, it hurts. And it can backfire. And it can spiral out of control. And that's exactly what many cases in this situation where this should have been stuff that was always private and behind the scenes. It's none of anyone's business. But instead, we ended up having a public facing relationship where when we weren't talking anymore, when we weren't doing content anymore, oh my God, what's going on? Oh my God, ask Phil, oh my God, ask Rambo, oh my God, ask Howard, ask, 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 Puster, Pester, ask, ask, ask. And I'm not blaming anyone. I get it. But that's definitely a huge part of this equation that if things had gone differently and if maybe we hadn't been so public facing with everything that we had done and made as much content as we did and shared as much as we did, then maybe that would have never happened. And we would have continued to this day to still have a friendly relationship. I don't know. I mean, it's all, it's all what do they say? Hindsight is twenty twenty, and there's all what ifs and everything. We're not going to do, do all that dwelling shit today. What we're going to do is focus on the video they put out. And I'm going to go through it piece by piece and essentially give you a frame of reference and context and let you know what I think about each part and let you know from my perspective if what they're saying is truthful or not truthful or maybe even not truthful enough because there's more to it. 
And I'll be honest, a lot of this today is going to be very damning to me. All right? It's not going to be pretty. There's going to be many portions of this video that we're going to go through that I'm going to be fessing up to some pretty bad behaviors and or being a pretty shitty friend. Because in reality, looking back at the situation, I don't think I was very unfair to them business-wise. I think I was a shitty friend. All right? I will publicly say that, and I'll talk about that when we get to it. All right? Um, and I think that's really the issue here. The issue wasn't ever really business. It was the friendship. Problem is, they made an hour and a half video about me. A lot of it's about business. And uh, that will address, okay? Okay. I just dribbled all over myself. When I opened this, this bottle of seltzer water, it exploded all over the place. So anyway, what, what do just I to do? clarify and just to say up front one more time, the only portions of my stream today that will be monetized is right now this pre-stream podcast. The, the the Feasting with the King episode we're going to do somewhere in the middle. And at the end, I'm going to do kind of a, a, a night ending, you know, thanks for watching, summary, have a good night, talk so to you tomorrow shut kind up of video to end the whole marathon thing. Fair enough. I will not be doing shout outs. I will not be updating a leaderboard or any do? of that during the portions when we are addressing John and Howard's video. Fair enough. I hope this makes sense. And I hope no one's going to be upset. Someone's going to come in the middle of the day and drop a contribution and be like, oh, he didn't shout it out. Now I'm upset and I'm going to charge it back and everything. I tried to do my absolute positive best to be transparent with all of you. If you want to contribute, do it now or do it during the other part. Don't do it during the John and Howard segment. All right? Okay, I hope this makes sense. All right. But I don't want to talk about that the whole pre stream. We got other shit to talk about. All right? First of all, I once again want to say thank you guys for the positive reaction to my very first DSP Reacts live event that I did a few days ago to the state of play that Sony put out. As of today, this morning, I want to say I think it's gotten over 4,000 views. I haven't really checked. Um, not to say that that's giant views. I don't pull in giant views on this channel and probably never will ever again. But for what it is, for the people who are interested and wanted to see me do a live react, the general consensus is it was a pretty good thing that I did. And people now are kind of geared up to see me do more. There will be more coming up. Um, this coming Thursday, which is the 9th, June 9th, at 11 a.m. Pacific time, I love is Summer Games game. Fest. And by all accounts, it's going to be a two to three hour long live streamed to digital event and i'll be covering it in full live here on the stream so essentially what i'll probably do is watch it live with you do a live reacts take notes then take a quick break and then come back and do my recap reactions afterward okay so there you go um and then there's another one i think it's on the 12th so three days later and that's the microsoft and bethesda showcase and that's at 10 a.m mm. and i will be reacting live to that one as well Okay, so those are the two that I'm planning on doing. Now, I'm well aware there's tons more coming up, but I'm not doing those. I'm not doing a PC game showcase, a future game showcase. There's all these little little ones and things. I don't really have any vested interest in those. Um, I don't, you know, I'm not going to be making content on PC gaming, so why am I going to react to that? You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> um, now, here's the thing. Those streams, I can't do gameplay. Like, how would I? I'm going to be reacting most of the stream and then doing the recap reactions. And even if I have a little bit of extra time at the end, what will it be, like an hour? So don't expect gameplay on those, those streams. Yes, those will definitely kind of push back my current playthroughs. That's okay. Um, You know what I mean? Like, we're okay. We're in a good position. It's not like, oh, God, I'm in the middle of Elden Ring and people are going to be so upset with me. It's not a big deal, I feel, to have a couple days where we're going to be doing that react-style content. All right? Um, But thank you. Thank you for supporting it. Thank you for all of that. All right? Okay, um, let's see. Outside of that, pretty slow. not going to lie. I'm trying to think if there's like anything else. I guess what we'll do is we'll briefly go through the schedule for the rest of the week and talk about the schedule coming up this week. And then I want to talk about the Street Fighter Six roster leaks, which we're going to go in depth about. And then we're going to order food for Feasting with the King. Okay? All right, so first off, the schedule for the week. You already know what we're doing today. I don't feel like I need to reiterate that. Tomorrow we go back to regularly scheduled gameplay. It's going to be... Skyrim Anniversary Edition on the first stream, and we are going to be doing the Stormcloak's political plotline. I did not do that plotline in my first playthrough many years ago, so I'm actually going to see that plotline for the very first time with you guys live. I don't even know what happens. Then, once that's done, I don't know how long it is, we're going to be doing the Dawnguard DLC. 
Okay? So, excited for this because it's basically we're heading into the end game slash kind of epilogue content for Skyrim when you really think about it. We've got the Dawn Guard, then we've got the end of the story. There's really not much left in the game. We've done almost everything. We're over 120 hours into the playthrough. <laughs> I've been playing this since freaking December. You want to talk about a completionist run? This is pretty much as complete as it can be with the game. Of course, the game shut glitched up, dude, in some cases, and I can't finish certain quests, which really sucks. There's certain creation code content that my wife Kat told me, oh, it's good, you got to do it, I got to do it, it doesn't work. The fucking mission's glitched. Bullshit. But what can you do? That's the, that's Skyrim in a nutshell. Bunch of glitches. <laughs> right? <clears throat> anyway, that's tomorrow. Then tomorrow night, the late stream will be the continuation of The Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. Very uh, fun playthrough for me. Uh, you know, Blast from the Past. One of my favorite, well, is my favorite Zelda game of all time. One of my favorite retro games of all time. And uh, I'm happy to be sharing this with all of you. We'll be doing probably dungeons like five and six um, during that stream. Then on Monday, WWE Tiger, 2K22 Tiger, My Rise, and we're heading into the end of it. And what I mean by that is we're currently in. I'm by the I'm plot by. line to go I'm up by. against Seth Rollins for the I'm WWE title, by. which is the big title on Monday Night Raw, the show that I'm on. So once I get that title, essentially, there'll probably be like defense plot lines, and then that's, I've done everything. So we're very clear to the end, or very close to the end, I should say, of that playthrough, okay? Um, and then Monday night, Uncharted 2, end game. We're actually starting chapter 23, and the game only has 27 chapters. We might beat it on Monday night, we'll have to see, okay? I will not be here on Tuesday. When I return on Wednesday, we'll go back to Skyrim as the mainstream. And then that night, Wednesday night, will likely be kind of like epilogue, well, end game content of Zelda. I don't know if we'll beat Zelda that day, but we'll get pretty close, I feel. Um, Thursday is what I just mentioned. Thursday is the day when we're going to be doing the live react to Summer Games Fest. Okay? So Thursday night is kind of up in the air. If I haven't finished Uncharted, we could do that. Jackie um, Chan is if dead. people wanted to see $50, maybe a late night stream of Skyrim as a, as a one-off rarity, we could uh, do that. I'm kind of leaving that it open. Is. And then Friday is a double new release day. This is June 10th. Right. We got the Quarry, which is the new horror game from the makers of Until Dawn and the Dark Pictures Anthology series, followed by Mario Strikers Battle League, obviously the new Mario Strikers game, which is uh, soccer, football, whatever you want to call it. Um, first party game that apparently has a really good like campaign and all that. So we got a double new release day that day. So that's going to be the entirety of the day. Now, obviously what this means is that this is going to bump our usual Friday night fights. We usually do Street Fighter on a Friday night. That's going to be bumped to Saturday night. So essentially, Saturday will be more of the quarry, maybe even finishing up my first run of the game on the first stream, and then the late stream will be Street Fighter. Then that Saturday the 12th is the next React event, which is the, the Microsoft and Bethesda Showcase. Okay? So, I know we're going through all this, and we're getting way ahead of ourselves, but this is a unique week. This is a unique week where I'm going to be doing... You know, playthroughs I've been doing for a while and trying to finish them up. There's going to be two new playthroughs and a double react event. So a crazy kind of a week with content all over the place. But hey, that's the cool thing about being a variety streamer. Every day you tune in, you don't know what the heck I'm going to be doing. Something different every single day, right? Awesome. Um, The one final thing that I would like to talk about before we talk about Street Fighter VI is this right here. Because, ladies and gentlemen, this has been astoundingly positive this month. And I just want to give a major shout-out to anyone who either became a channel member or gifted memberships to DSP Gaming this month. As you guys know, it was just under two weeks ago that gifted memberships were made available to me on this channel. And since then, we went from around 350 I memberships need that money. I really to do. over I need that 600 money. Bills. within, like, a week and a half. Okay. This is ridiculous cool and, 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 fu and positive. And thank you for that support. I was not expecting that much. I was expecting people to gift memberships because, you know, I was looking at my track history from over on Twitch. On Twitch, I started off on the regular when I was started full-time streaming around 2017. I had between 300 and 400 subs. And then what would happen is as the gifted subs were made available, some people started gifting. And what would happen is every month, I get a couple hundred gifted subs. And out of those gifted subs... Some people would keep on with the sub. So even though in the short term you could consider it artificial growth, there was long-term growth that came from it. And take a look at me streaming on Twitch from 2017 all the way till last year. It was about a four-year period. I went from around 300 subs 
upwards to around 900 a month. And climbing, oh, yeah, I was yeah, still yeah, on a yeah, growth yeah, 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 yeah. trajectory when it all fell apart over there. Okay? So, all the, the, the good news about this is, this is, I feel, the beginning of something great here on DSP Gaming. This is the beginning of growth. This is the beginning of people having a feeling of community. It's not just about, oh, I want to support Phil. It's, I want to support this community of people who all collectively enjoy Phil's content. We want to feel like we're helping each other out. It is the feeling of camaraderie almost, right? We all love games. We all like sharing our opinions on games. We like watching, you know, you like watching me play games. I love playing the games oh, well, and sharing those experiences oh, with cool. you every day. <laughs> Thanks for the money, stupid fuck. Gift hey, membership. DDM. I've been watching right. you since before that the big bang. That is something that it feels I'm your like a number community one event. Three. It really Wheelchair does. You get symbol. so excited for it. And it becomes this feeling of hype and excitement. And it's been really cool. This last week and a half, it's been like, oh, well, someone gives some memberships today. And by the way, it's just such a weird process because you have to manually set it up that you will accept gifted memberships on YouTube, which is just so weird because on Twitch, it was such an easy process. And here it's like, you have to purposely tell YouTube, yes, I will accept it ahead of time for you to get it. But even with the hoops that people have to jump through to do it, it's still, look at the growth, right? So, it is official. You will. We hit all of the, the monthly member goals for this month already, and it's only, well, we did it last night. So, we did it within three freaking days, right? How crazy. How freaking crazy that this happened, <laughs> you know? Um, so, let's talk about that. Goal number one hit means that we're going to be doing a viewer's choice playthrough. So next week, I'm going to set this up where you guys are going to be able to start nominating games for a full playthrough you want to see me do right here on DSP Gaming. And yes, there will be qualifying criteria. I'm not going to be playing any 80 to 100 hour JRPGs. I'm not doing visual novels. I'll set all that up ahead of time so you know well what qualifies and what doesn't. It's not going to be that constricting, but at the same time, the whole idea is that this is supposed to be a playthrough we do over the summertime until new releases start hitting in the fall. This is not supposed to be a game that I play for two years. Do you understand the difference? So no Divinity Ooh. Original Sin 2s or anything like that. I completely agree, Swago Nito. A horror goal would be neat. That would be cool. Like a, like a horror game being thrown into the mix, uh, like for viewer's choice. That would be great. If it was like a horror-themed game, I would love that. But anyway, we won't get ahead of ourselves here. Um. So that's number one. And again, there will be... There will be Opportunity for both members and non-members to nominate games. The members will have priority. Those all 600 of you will have priority because what games you nominate and vote on will then hit the final poll. You're a step ahead of everyone else, essentially, because you're a member. For those who are non-members, don't worry. You also have ample, ample opportunity to nominate and vote on a game for this event. Now, in addition, we hit the Tier 2 goal. And the Tier 2 goal has locked in that we're doing another React event likely in three weeks to a month because I don't want to do these that often. I feel like when I do these, they're special events. We talk about them. We hype them up. We set a date so people know to be here for them. And I, if I do React all the time, I feel like it's going to get played out. I'm already doing... We already did State of Play. We're doing this today. And the next week, we're doing Summer Games Fest, Microsoft and Bethesda. You see, it's, it's going to be too much. If I keep doing them all the time, it's like, well, not anymore. So <clears throat> we'll set a date likely for late june to early july but the next react event i am not doing drama shit i'm just not we've already done down the rabbit hole dark side phil today we're doing the john and howard video sorry the next one is not going to be this is how you don't, don't play metal gear solid or whatever it is we're not doing that we're doing something different and fun we're going to talk about it over the next few weeks we'll, we'll talk about it on pre-streams we'll try to figure out exactly what it is that you guys would like to see for the next react event uh, in particular i will be leaning Towards something such as uh, maybe reacting to a documentary that someone else made. Like maybe another Frederick Knudsen documentary or June the King does documentaries. I got permission to do his content. Or, as I said, there is a channel on YouTube that kind of does true crime, supernatural stuff. I got permission to react to, to that stuff too. So we'll talk about this in the coming weeks. And we'll, we'll start talking you know, about it and everything and go from there to figure out what it's going to be. So there will be a viewer's choice playthrough and... A new React event coming up. Now, you may say, well, wait a minute. You're three, well, now we're four days into the month. You already hit all your goals. So what's the potential for growth? Why would someone want to become a member now? Well, fair enough. When you hit your goal so quickly, <laughs> right? I mean, I didn't expect this. I never expected we were going to be hitting 
the 600 member goal in two, three days. That's crazy. Like, we, think about it. We were just at 350. Right? Like, what the heck? I flapped my jowls in, in, in surprise. What? How did we do that so fast? So, what I would say is, if you guys are interested in having another member goal for the month, I would be open to that. But I have no idea what it would be. I really have no clue uh, what it would be. Like, I think about it, I guess. Right, I think about like what would be another cool event to do or reward to give that's feasible. And I mean that. It has to be something feasible. It can't be, oh, let's completely interrupt Phil's normal content, right? And do something that's going to take ridiculous amounts of time away from him doing his live streams and gameplay and other stuff. We can't, it has to be something that makes sense and is kind of in line with everything else. All right? So let's talk about it. Let's think about it. And again, we don't have to do that today. Today we're kind of busy. But <clears throat> this is something that we'll talk about, I'm sure, over the next week or so, and we can kind of figure out another goal you guys would like. I'm all for it. However, I'll just throw this out there, all right? About a week and a half ago, within one day, I was gifted 100 members, okay? That means in a week and a half to two weeks, we're going to lose 100 members. So if I'm going to set up any kind of a new member goal, we have to do it relatively quickly before the membership goes boom because those 100 gifted members expire. So we got to think about it, okay? Thank you. People are already throwing out ideas, and I appreciate that. Again, we'll brainstorm about that coming up. All right. The Let Ziggy us Piggy talk about Street back. Fighter Six because this is the hot topic. This is ridiculous. Street Fighter Six is announced during the Sony State of Play. Within 24 hours of Street Fighter Six being announced in the Sony State of Play, the entire friggin' roster, or at least what everyone is assuming is the entire roster, is leaked on the internet with full character art. So, some employee... But why did this happen? And how? And, you know, how does this stuff keep happening? We keep getting leaks from these games. How the fuck does this happen and another interesting question, why did it happen right now? Isn't it interesting me enough to announce the game then the Why didn't the leak happen before the announcement? Very weird, right? Um, by the way, if you haven't noticed, no, I didn't drop everything in my schedule to start talking about Street Fighter VI nonstop. The gameplay continued as normal. A lot of people did. There's people out there who are primarily fighting game content creators, and I'm oh, not kidding no. you. They had the most views ever in a day that they've ever had yesterday. That's how hotly anticipated Street Fighter VI is. And I think that's a combination of two factors. Number one, people really, really want a new Street Fighter game. We haven't had one in a very long time. Street Fighter V is really, 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 really long running there. If you remember, the beta came out in 2015. The full game, I think, I want to say, came out in 2016, 2017. And it was really good um, at launch. And a lot of people, well, anyway, the game's been running very long and basically been milked for a very long time. People have been clamoring for a new Street Fighter for a very long time. The other thing is, I think a lot of people are going to actually be coming back to play Street Fighter who essentially don't didn't like Street Fighter V, all right? What's hilarious about Street Fighter V is the community kept kissing its butt for the longest time. And I've talked about this at length. Street Fighter V got way too much hype because what, what people were I afraid do? if they didn't hype Street Fighter V, there was nothing else that Capcom was putting out fighting game-wise, and it would essentially kill Street Fighter forever. So even though a lot of people did not actually like the game, they said they did, or they stomached it enough to be putting out constant content. Oh, I don't like this game, but here's a ton of content on it. Wait, what? You don't like it? Go play something else. There's 4 billion other games on this planet you could play if you don't like Street Fighter V. Nope, gotta I play it. I don't care. That was a lot of people's mentality during the run of Street Fighter V. Um, PayPal is a network me, of uh, I played it for about, what was it, about three, four months, use, didn't uh, like it, and someone offered to buy me a season pass like a year later, and they did, played it, still didn't like it, and decided to never go back to it. I was like, dude, there's so much more capacity. in gaming than uh, just Street Fighter, and if uh, I don't like a game, I don't have to force uh, myself to play it. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't. Um, and a lot of people gave me shit for that. They're like, Phil, you're the guy that we go to for Street Fighter coverage. We feel like you're an independent and you cover things fairly, and the fact that you're not talking about Street Fighter V, you're not playing the DLC characters, you're not doing this and that, 
is disappointing. And very honestly, yeah, you're right, because, I, you know, I was known during Street Fighter Four as one of the independent guys covering the game, not a tournament-level player, but someone who was fair and honest about it. I know a lot of extents, like, people don't care about fighting games anymore when it comes to Dark Side Phil. Like, they don't associate DSP and fighting games anymore. At one point, I had a whole fucking channel on YouTube called DSP Street Fighter, right? And now it's like, barely even, you know, think about that. I Once a week, I play Friday Night Fights, which is my old school Street Fighter stream. And that's about it. You know, when a new fighting game comes out, I cover it for a bit. Um, and I'll do the, if there's a single player campaign, and I'll do some online gameplay of various characters. And usually within a month, I drop it, right? I'm not really, I'm not hardcore invested in any fighting game these days. So anyway, Street Fighter VI announced, I mean, I, I already gave you my opinions on it yesterday. In a nutshell, I think so far it looks good. All right. Um, I can't tell you until we actually play it. Having the whole, what do they call it? Uh, drive meter, having different abilities. Like you can parry, but you can do a counter, a reversal, or another cancel move or whatever they are. That's good. Just having an ability to do various moves like that, instead of being set to one V skill, like it was in Street Fighter V, gives you variety of gameplay and control over the match that you didn't have in Street Fighter V. Street Fighter V, one of my major uh, complaints was, the whole game's pattern play. You pick your character, you pick your V-Skill, that's it, you're done. Now you know how to play that character and you play your pattern, and if you play better than the other person or you guess better, you win. No variety of gameplay, no, nothing, it's all the same. Anytime you watch a competitive match of Street Fighter V and you see the two characters, it's like the, you, you know what the match is at the select screen, right? Other fighting games were not like that. It was like, wow, you could pick Dalsim, but you could play him as completely zoned. You could do a hybrid of zoning and mid-range combat. You could rush down with Dalsim and do throw lo loops. You know what I'm saying? It was always <laughs> like that. Thank you for the money, and stupid Fighter Five kind of ruined that. That's why I didn't like the game. So now, if you're going to have a drive system where all these abilities are different, so one person might like parrying, one person might like canceling and being more offensive, one person might do a hybrid. That's good. That means variety of gameplay, which is what people fucking want. That's what makes a competitive game exciting. Not only for the viewer, but the player as well. That's what Street Fighter V was lacking. So if that actually does actually end up being how the game is played, great. Okay, But today we're going to talk about the roster leak. Because the roster leaked online, and let's go through it. Okay, So we're going to start off <sighs> with some of the staples. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through this kind of, you know, characters and tell you, you know, here's what they look like or whatever. Because that's all we really know. We don't know how they play. We know how they look. Um, so we start with the classics, meaning the original Street Fighter cast of Street Fighter 2. We got Ryu and Ken. Ryu is from Japan. I never knew that. I thought he was from uh, Tibet. No. Funny, though, because he kind of, the way he's dressed here, you know, it almost looks like he's like a monk or, or, or something like that. Like he lives in, like he's a, a hermit and he lives in the hills. Because isn't that like a hide, like a like a pelt or something he's wearing over his shoulder? I mean, it's hard to tell. But it kind of looks to me like this is him living the lifestyle. You know, in the original Street Fighter games, he was supposed to be like a guy wandering the streets with a bag with all his clothes in it and his belongings. The true wandering world warrior. Here it looks like he's kind of settled down, maybe, living in the hills or something. I don't know. Um, Ken is wearing what appears to be a, a lengthy bomber style jacket. Um, he's still wearing his, like, his notable red pants, but that's about it. He's not wearing anything else. Um, oh, see, really? Legend Killer says Ryu is essentially wearing Oro Street Fighter 3. You know what? You're right. Now I'm kind of noticing that. That's what Oro is wearing. So maybe he moved out to the mountains because Oro, the character from Street Fighter 3, is a hermit. He lives in the mountains by himself. He's such a powerful warrior that he lives by himself in the mountains and he only fights with one hand because if he fought with both hands, he would apparently kill everyone right away. Yeah, that's the actual lore of Street Fighter 3. So it looks like maybe he's been living with Oro, right? Ken, you know, who knows what he's doing in a bomber jacket. It's not really too clear here. What I would hope is that Ken, for once, will not look stupid because in Street Fighter 2, Ken was just a palette swap of uh, Ryu. Only difference is they put this yellow hair on his head but essentially it was exactly the same look as Ryu. Over the years, they've changed Ken dramatically, okay? But it's not really clear, looking at this, what he's all about or what his plotline will be. Zangief looks pretty cool. I mean, it looks like Zangief at this point, if you look at him, he looks like he returned to the pro wrestling circuit, right? 
You see, he's now he's instead of wearing like tights, now he's wearing like full wrestling trunks. And Ken's kind of blocking his arm, but it looks like he's wearing like a wrestling elbow pad. So maybe he actually fully did uh, return to pro wrestling, and that's his plot line. Now he's a pro wrestler again. Because remember, Street Fighter Two, he's not. He's like a former pro wrestler. Um, that's cool. Not like a Saturday Night Slam Masters vibe to him, right? Okay, let's continue on here. Hold on, I gotta select. I gotta select each picture. So now we kind of extrapolate upon that. We zoom back a little bit, and we continue on. And what you, what's revealed here is that it's all eight of the original characters from Street Fighter Two World Warrior will be in Street Fighter Six. Which I, initially, I'm happy. That was one of the things that was stupid about Street Fighter V is that they didn't have most of the original cast and then they slowly released them as DLC. Like, no, just fucking put them in the game or don't. They're the staple characters of the franchise. Either they're there or they're not. Don't then people charge... You're charging people for something that's been in the game since the start. Do you not think that's going to piss people off and or be really fucking stupid? So I'm glad that they're in there from the start. You got Dalsim... Looking like an old man with a big bushy beard. I like that. Although I don't know how the hell it's going to affect his yoga fire. Is he going to burn his beard off his face every time? This has got to be really careful. Uh, Honda, arguably looking his most muscular from any game ever. Although if you actually look at the character art of Honda from Street Fighter 2 series, he always kind of looked buff. Like he looked like, even though he's a sumo, he looked like he was built like muscle. But... The game itself didn't really portray him like that. Well, he looks crazy powerful. Like, maybe Honda isn't a sumo wrestler anymore, and he's become a different kind of fighter, or... I mean, I'm not saying that his fighting style will change, but you know the lore of the character. Um, Blanca's Blanca. I don't think Blanca's ever going to change. He's a mutated freak. <laughs> right? Um, What are you going to do? Uh, it is, you know, we'll see. But that's Blanca. Guile, I don't even know what's going on with Guile. Like... He kind of reminds me of fucking Van Damme. <laughs> he does. He reminds me of Van Damme from the Street Fighter movie. He's in like this, this like guard, this military garb, right? And I don't know. Like, I, I guess we'll find out. But it looks to me like maybe he went back. Because keep in mind, the plot. Of, I, I I should say this. The plot of Street Fighter Six takes place after the plot of Street Fighter Three. Shadowloo is done. Shadowloo is actually completely defeated. There's no more Shadowloo uh, terrorist organization. Bison's defeated. Bison's gone. No one even knows where he is, if he's dead or whatever. So that whole plot is over with. So, you know, there's no... Interpol isn't going after Shadowloo anymore. So these characters are off doing their own stuff. You know, we don't know what Guile will be up to in this, but it looks like he went back to the military officially, with the way he looks here. And Chun-Li, out of the entirety of the original cast... Chun-Li looks the best. Why? Because for the first fucking time in any Street Fighter game, they cut the bullshit trying to make every character look like a fucking anime and they made her look Chinese. Which she should have looked like from the first game, but they never... It's like they had the inability to make them look how they're supposed to look from the cultures they come from. For the first time ever, she looks authentic. I like that. They, I don't know well, why they didn't do, do that. Do? They had the ability to do that in Street Fighter 4, and they just didn't. They wanted to go with their kind of anime-ish, cartoony look. And I'm happy that finally they get, they're they giving her a look that looks like that people from that country. Thank God. Why not? I actually found it more offensive that previously everyone could looked cartoony and anime-ish. Now they're finally looking kind of authentic. Like I said, it looks like they're actually going for a more hyper-realistic look. Take a look at the proportions of their bodies. Right? They're actually like properly proportioned. I'm not saying that Zengief is, you know, not humongous. He is. But the point I'm making here is look, there's not a giant hand that's twice the size of her head coming up over here. You know what I'm saying? Her foot doesn't go 14 feet. <laughs> <and> like, <laughs> Thanks for the, the money. bodies are, are correct. Chicky Chang Wang. It, it took a while for them to figure out. We didn't want insanely gross proportioned characters, but they, it looks like they finally figured it out. This camera's going crazy right now, by the way. I guess what I should do is turn off the white balance again because it's going nuts. <clears throat> I will. Hold on. Let me do that quickly. What is the sun came out outside and it just it makes my white balance go crazy on the webcam. There we go. Okay. So, 
That's the original cast. Okay? Now, what we, we go into is returning characters who are not the original cast. Okay? We start off with Cammy, And it's funny because it says she's from Great Britain, which is correct. The character originally is from Great Britain. But I guess if you follow the plot of Street Fighter, she joined Alpha Flight. Right? Not Alpha Flight. Um... Alpha Flight is fucking Marvel Comics. Um, she joined a group of, I believe they were supposed to be like, like a military group, but then she got kidnapped by Bison and brainwashed to be one of his Killer Bee dolls. But now it's she's returning back to her Delta Red. That's what it is, Delta Red. Thank you guys. It was Delta Red, not Alpha Flight. I don't know why I got that mixed in my head. Um, but anyway, yes. So she's returned, and it looks like she's kind of fully representing where she's from now, and completely redesigned character. From the ground up. She's no longer wearing a military outfit. She's no longer wearing a Killer Bee outfit. She's kind of her own thing. She's kind of cool. I like that. Alright. Um, DJ. Now obviously I'm excited about that. DJ is one of my favorite characters in the original Street Fighter 2 series. He's actually one of the characters that I'm really good at in competitive play. And to see him return is actually surprising. Because he is... How can I say like... He wasn't ever a fan favorite. You know what I'm saying? He never so was. Shut up like, this dude he was, was always kind of like, oh, moron. there's Guile, but then there's DJ. And Guile's the better character, and DJ's kind of the downgraded Guile. What I'm hoping is that in this game, they will give him his own unique identity and or moveset that makes him stand out Um, in a, in a way that... And I also hope he's good, because, like, I hate to say it, when he was in Street Fighter Four, when they first put him in there, he sucked. And then they tweaked him in later versions, but the way that he was played was not... Let me put it this way. For someone who likes DJ as a character and played him in Super Turbo, playing him in Street Fighter 4 was not fun. He was just... Even though he was decent later on, um, he didn't play anything like Super Turbo. It was kind of frustrating. Okay? So I certainly hope that he'll kind of return to his roots of how he was played in Super Turbo. Uh, Rashid, returning character for Street Fighter 5. Fan favorite, right? I think a lot of people liked Rashid. Personally, he was one of my favorite original characters for Street Fighter V. Remember when I played the game, I actually played with him and really liked him. I thought he was a fun character with a good build. Um, and Jury, fan favorite from Street Fighter IV, who then later on was added to Street Fighter V. Uh, unique moveset, for sure, for a Street Fighter character. And since people liked her so much, I'm not shocked to see her return. Although, I'm very interested to see what will her plot be because the whole, again, the whole Shadowloo and the whole plot line with Seth and all that, it's all over. So, what is her relation to the plot now that all that's done? I have no idea. I guess we'll find out. Okay, continuing on. <laughs> the second half of the returning characters. Um, I guess Fun. I would not... I guess I'll be honest with you. I'm shocked Ed is in this. Ed is such a boring, generic guy that was added as a DLC character in Street Fighter V. He worked for Shadowloo. He was one of the agents of, of Bison. Okay, now Shadowloo doesn't exist anymore. So, who's he working for? And what's weird is, if you take a look to the upper left-hand corner of his, or his upper left shoulder, is that a Shadowloo symbol? There's no fucking Shadowloo! Unless they're unless that's the plot, they're coming back. After Street Fighter III, they're gone. There's no Shadowloo. So, what is that? And by the way, I, I mean, I looked at it, I didn't like that character. I just didn't like his build in Street Fighter V. I, he was pretty much one of the most boring characters that I saw in Street Fighter V. I just was not interested in this character at all. I, I kind of didn't even pay any attention to him in Street Fighter V. And shocked to see that they put him in Street Fighter VI, quite frankly. But maybe, I don't know, was he a fan favorite? I don't know. I didn't play Street Fighter V during that time. I thought he was one of the most unimpressive, uninspired, boring, oh look... Blonde hair, blue eye, generic, stereotypical, fucking Logan Paul looking motherfucker. He's boring. Now, I, don't want, I don't like that guy. Just being honest. And then, of course, Akuma. I mean, are you shocked that Akuma's back? Akuma will never not be in Street Fighter. <clears throat> Seriously. Since the day Akuma was put into Street Fighter, he's always been one of the most popular characters. He will, all, you know what I'm saying? Uh, he will always be in it, even if he has nothing to do with the game. Grab some salt. Like, literally, everything could be going on in the game, and you open a door, and Akuma's in there in a stall taking a shit. He'll still be in it, even if he has nothing to do with the plot, he'll be in it because he's that popular of a character. People never will let go of Akuma 
They want Akuma to be in the game, so he's in it. How does he look? I mean, his design is kind of a hybrid of a million other versions of Akuma. Personally, I thought his design in Street Fighter V was laughably bad. It looked like he had a fucking lion's mane. What, what, have you ever seen a human who grew a lion's mane around their head? I haven't. But anyway, <clears throat> there you go, Akuma baby. All right, let's continue. Now, we move on to new characters. And this is really where the big spoilers are, are happening. Because no one knew about these new characters except for Luke. Luke is the DLC character from Street Fighter V. So everyone already knew about him. But no one knew about these other characters. So Luke from the United States, I guess he's the Jake Paul, right? He looked exactly the same as Ed. Stupid. Dumb. Badly designed character. Didn't no effort at all put into him. And now not only is a DLC character for Street Fighter V, now he's one of the characters of Street Fighter VI. I'm going to laugh hysterically if they try to make him the main character of Street Fighter VI. I'm gonna tell you right now, no one's gonna care. People do not care about fucking Luke. They just don't. And they will not. <laughs> so if this is the route they're going, just prepare for Luke to become the next Alex. Because remember in Street Fighter III, they tried to change the plot of Street Fighter III to be about a new character named Alex. Nobody cared. They wanted Ryu and Ken in the classics. Um, people were upset that in Street Fighter III there was only Ryu and Ken as returning characters. And Alex failed miserably as a character. No one really cared about him. So even if they try as hard as they want, uh, no, I don't think this character is going to be successful. And by the way, Japan, not every... American is blonde hair, blue eye. Just so you know. Because you already got fucking tons of them here. Okay? All right, just throwing that out there. Okay, Um, the next character is called Marissa. Or is it Marisa? Marissa, I don't know. Um, A muscular fighter from Italy. Looks to me like she's kind of wearing MMA gear. Um, Some people have referenced that she's wearing gladiator gear. I don't see that. I see like she looks care. like an MMA fighter to me. And I feel like they're almost going for, like, a Ronda Rousey-Zangief hybrid. Because, obviously, she does not have any a, a feminine frame. Let's put it that way. Which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But you know this is just going to cause people to start now talking about gender issues and shit. And, and stuff that should not be discussed in Street Fighter. Um, you know? Uh... So who knows? I mean, we don't know. This is a, this was just a character leak. We don't even know the character. We you know we have no idea. We all we could do is kind of speculate. Um, but it looks to me like it'll be an MMA style fighter with a big frame, right? Like I said, like a Zangief proportioned frame. Um, there is uh, is his name? How do you pronounce it? Jamie, right? That's Jamie. Yes. So interestingly enough. Jamie is a fan of Yoon and Yang from Street Fighter 3. That's in his character bio. And he brings that style to his fighting. If you saw the Sony State of Play, you would actually see that he does, like, breakdance fighting. Which is weird because the way he dresses reminds me of Feng from Tekken. Okay? So I don't know how he'll fight um, besides those little, like, breakdance kicks. But he looks pretty unique to me. The next character's name is uh, Mimi, M-I-M-I, -M -I. Mimi, supposed to be a French fighter. A lot of people are saying she looks like a French version of Abel. Remember, Abel was a, a, a French fighter in the plotline of Street Fighter 4, who to some extent was meant to be kind of the, the new character in Street Fighter 4 that was a main following in the plot. Um, I have no looks very tall, but again, we don't know the, if these are properly proportioned. With big reach? Don't know. Can't tell. It's okay. Dark Dave's fault. Um, and then finally, the last character leak here. I'm going to see the height proportions. So it looks like two of these characters are short. One is tall and one maybe is mid. You can't really tell. Um... So this character, I believe, there's there's actually disagreement about the name of this character. Some people are saying her name is Riri, and some people are saying her name is Lily. 
because people are disagreeing because they're like, I guess the translation, you can't tell. It could be. The character, major character from Tekken. So people aren't sure blah, 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 the name of this character. Okay? But she is from Mexico. And it looks like she's wielding a pair of ball-headed war clubs. Um... Kind of reminds me of a few things. If, uh, you, you see Mortal Kombat, the character Kotal Khan, in one of his builds, he's using a giant club that's supposed to be like a ceremonial war club of like indigenous peoples of like America. And I think it's supposed to be a reference to like maybe Mexican indigenous peoples and things like that. So I think this may be a reference to the that cultural history of Mexico. I have absolutely no idea... If there was ever Mexican fighters who used claw clubs, you know, who knows? I don't know. I don't Certainly not, uh, not, oh, exactly. Aztec or Mayan inspired, perhaps, right? Looks like a unique character. Have no idea how she's going to play. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I hope she's not a complete cultural stereotype like fucking El Fuerte was. El Fuerte, quite frankly, could be considered quite offensive when he's jumping and saying tortilla pop and fucking burrito kick and shit. It's like, the fuck? Like, Japan, hey! Hey, Capcom Japan, hi! Can you not be that ridiculous? Like, can you, like, at least give some respect to the culture and not go, like, taquito roll and fucking shit? Like, come you on, like, taco punch? Jesus game. Christ. You have a fucking clue here. <laughs> it's out of control. Okay, let's continue. The next character is called JP... Does it stand for something? Are you I have just no idea. That? Just leave that. Um, but he's supposed to be from Russia. But interestingly enough, take a look at the the show his shoulder up there. There is a question mark on his shoulder. Why? What does that mean? I have no idea. Obviously, they put it there for a reason. I don't know if it means anything in particular, but it's kind of interesting. Will he have something to do maybe with the plot of the game? Could he be the boss of the game? What, what do perhaps? I do? What, maybe. What do I do? And so maybe he's running an organization or something? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Um, he certainly looks like a, a almost... You know who he reminds me of? Rugal. Rugal B. What, what do I do? From King of Fighters. That's exactly who he reminds me of. He's got the long hair. He's in, like, you know, very, very fancy attire formal looking attire and Rugal originally looked like that Rugal Bernstein but originally this is how he looked and that's kind of kind of uh, antagonist of Street Fighter 6 perhaps the next character Kimberly, all right, a fighter from the U.S. with colorful street clothes and a Walkman. What do I do? Do you see a Walkman? I'm just I'm reading some notes that people took about these characters online. This one I'm actually reading just for clarification purposes. I'm reading some notes from Polygon. I don't want anyone to say, "Oh, he per he read right off of Polygon and he didn't say he did." I'm reading some of the information off of Polygon.com. Shout out to Polygon who covered this story. Go read the full article if you'd like. Anyway, um, a Walkman, I mean, I guess she has some kind of a music player or something on her. You know, you know what threw me for a loop? If you watch the state of play that Sony did on Thursday, okay, it shows Chun-Li doing a flip over a character who looks like a teenage Chinese girl. And that girl has headphones on that has like a digital character on the headphone. And I was looking at that, I was like, oh, maybe that girl will be a character because that's probably the girl who Chun-Li is raising in Street Fighter 3. For those who don't know, in the lore of Street Fighter 3, Shadaloo's defeated, and there's a young girl whose parents were killed by Shadaloo. Chun-Li adopts the girl and becomes a, a mother, adopted mother to the girl. So I was thinking in this game, that girl would be a character. Like, she trained that girl to be a fighter. But then there's this girl who kind of almost looks similar. And I'm like, thrown for a loop, like, who's this then? Uh, you know... I don't know. And who knows? I mean, she's got weird hair. Like, it looks like she's got, like, maybe hair extensions with flames coming off. Does that mean she has flame abilities? I, I don't know. I guess we're going to find out. And then the last character, um, 
called AKI or Aki, but it's it's abbreviation like A period K period I period. A ch supposed to be Chinese, okay? White haired woman who has claws. Kind of reminds me of uh, Fang, right? Like Fang was a clawed character in Street Fighter. I have no clue how she's going to play. She looks completely unique. Maybe a... Uh, I mean, obviously she looks like a villain. Just take a look. Her design looks like a fucking villain. So you almost feel like he, JP is the antagonist and she's the second in command or the henchman. Much like how in the original Street Fighters it was Bison was the guy in charge and then he had his, his uh, you know, his, his big, big three under him with Balrog... Sagat and uh, Vega. So maybe she'll be one of the new newcomer characters who will be working for JP. I'm guessing. I mean, this is, I have no idea. I have no information about any of this. I'm just, you know, guessing. So what do I think of these miserable. character designs? Because ultimately it's not it's just miserable. about uh, the leaks, but what do I think? I think there's potential. I'm liking it. I'm, here's what I really like, okay? You got the eight original characters returning. So for those who played the classics, you're already satisfied because all of your staple characters are in there and hopefully they, they adhere. And I will definitely emphasize this. Hopefully they adhere to their original play styles. This is one of my major gripes with Street Fighter V is that they had returning characters like Blanca and Vega. And even though technically... Their movesets the looked similar. Games. They played absolutely fucking nothing like the characters from the original games. They turned Vega into a fucking motion character. I was completely worried. Vega with a dragon punch. How to say I don't understand what made Street Fighter popular without saying I don't know what made Street Fighter popular. Take classic characters and completely change how they're played, destroying the design of the character. You know, like, I mean, it seriously, it was like hack mode playing that game. You're like, Jesus Christ, why have the, why call him Vega? Just fucking call him something else. Don't have him be Blanca. I just put a new character in the game because it doesn't play like Blanca. So why fucking call him Blanca? That frustrates people who've played these games for 20 plus years and just want to see their favorites come back. Capcom didn't understand that. How are they all so off base? I just don't understand it. All right. So anyway. I hope the original eight characters, at least to some extent, will play Looks like, like the had too eight much classic. At Wendy's. Then you have the returning characters from the later iterations of the games, and that's a good thing. Fan favorites, right? Characters that people absolutely loved and enjoyed and want to see return because they've had a go. You know, Kuma, like I said, will always be a fucking fan favorite. I don't think he'll ever not be in a Street Fighter game at this time, at this point. Okay? And then, of course, the new characters. And there's a good amount of them. It's not just, oh, there's two or three. There's like a good mix of new characters this time around. I like, excuse me, I like that. I definitely like that. And I feel like, I feel like everything we've seen is on the right track. The graphical design for Street Fighter VI is more realistic. No hyper accentuated proportions and stupid cartoony shit or anime shit. It looks more realistic and they look like people from the region they're supposed to be from. Good. Having a good mix of characters. From original, middle, and now new. That's good. Having a combat system that can be played differently with the drive meter can be parry or counter reversal or an offensive cancel. That's good. It's all good. I, I, You know what I mean? Like, has anything that I've seen so far made me worry? No. But then again, uh, this game's been in development for quite some time and apparently was rebooted completely. After Ono presented it to the, the board of Capcom, Phil, you know, we said this looks terrible, you, and they just it started over like from scratch. Black hole because so I don't know. No See, the thing is, you, you're I don't really have faith. Having I'm being honest with you guys, now, I don't have faith. And, and getting better. In Capcom, after Street Fighter Five was you. so bad, in my opinion, I'm a lifelong fan of Street Fighter. I've played every major one. I feel Street Fighter Five was so bad. It was so off base of what you would look for in a competitive game. It was literally made for people to play online with lag. It sucked ass. It took away the competitive spirit of the game There's when the game was a boring pattern play game with guessing. Shut like, up. I hope Jeez, this game is what? completely different. Seriously. Won't Seriously. Hey, you know what? How about this? If you want to have pattern play characters, have them in there, but have other options. 
have the original Street Fighter characters play like Street Fighter 2, have the returning characters play like Street Fighter 4 or 5, and have the new cast play like something different. I'd be pleased with that, because then you can play it any way you want. You need variety in order to have a fighting game be competitively fun and challenging, not just for the viewer, but for the player as well. That's what Street Fighter V was missing, and I hope... Oh, no, you didn't, you I motherfucking hope. piece of shit cocksucker. I don't know if that's what we're going to get. Mark my fucking words. Okay, we're about to do shout-outs, but i got to blow my nose. For you. Because I feel like I'm, I'm going to find out who the fuck you are. You motherfucker. You are fucked. Let this be noticed live on the internet. Oh. You're fucked. And you are done. Ugh. Oh no. <clears throat> there is some good news. Go, 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 go. I remembered to take my allergy meds. I knew today I was going to be talking for a very extended period of time. So I wanted to be able to do this without having, like, oh, God, I'm sneezing my eyes and everything, you know, nasal drip and shit. So the good news is I'm medicated. I should be ready for today, okay? So what we're going to do now, we're going to do shout-outs for contributions. We're going to update the leaderboard. And then we're going to look at a menu. Or we're going to see what Never won the pill, poll because I don't know what cuisine has won the poll for PC with the King today. We're going to look at it live. And then we're going to pick out what I'm going to order. Then we're going to go on a break. For me to go order, because i got to go check with my wife, see what she wants. We're going to order. I'm going to switch over everything to the React event, which then means all monetization will be, you know, shut off. There will be no leaderboard, no pop-ups, nothing. Just me and the video. We're going to do that for at least two to three hours. And then we're going to go on a break to do Feasting with the King, at which point everything will come back temporarily for Feasting with the King. And then after Feasting with the King, it will all be turned off again. We'll finish the react, and then there'll be kind of a, my job. a summary video at the end to say goodnight. Fair enough? Let's do some shout-outs. Here we go. <clears throat> if I could get down on my hands and knees and say thank okay. you, still be on <clears throat> Excuse me. I would do it. So, thank you to Ruby for a super chat. It says, to clarify this, for all the newer fans or even longtime fans, Rambo isn't his real last name, right? I mean, he's outright said that in his own content many times that no, Rambo is not his real last name. I don't know why you ask me that, but no, it's not his real last name. <clears throat> B-Boy Cyclone re-upped his membership for 13 months is excited to hear your reaction brother stay up yo again I'm not excited for today you're getting the wrong impression today is necessary today is a step forward I today love is it. clearing the oh, air I love it. and in a lot of ways taking a weight off my shoulders that's been on there for many years and it's a way to address the past and move forward positively from it this is not an exciting event I'm slow. not pumped to do this this is hurtful stuff there's really damning stuff we're about to review, guys. You understand that, right? I mean, I know for a lot of you, you're like, oh, but it's from the past. It still hurts, man. It hurt. Every time I, I listen to this video, it hurts. Every fucking time, you know? And I just want to put it to bed so I don't have to ever listen to it again. I'm tired. I'm, basically, I'm tired of people asking me about it. I'm That's why I'm doing this. You understand? So this is not fun. This is not exciting. It's not the point. Okay. What the hell are you talking about? Ruby did another super chat and says, would you, be confused. would you be allowed and would you ever consider reacting to the entire entire series of Schnozman and Hope Hunt? Not doing it. Not doing it. In, it's just not even in good faith. Right? You want to watch Schnozman and Hope Hunt? Which we're going to mention, actually, because it's in this video. You guys will know what I'm... So if we shut up this dude talking, who's being a Schnozman and Hope Hunt. We'll talk about it in the react, but I'm not doing it. No. Pool King did a $10 super chat. So do you still keep in contact with John and Howard or other people that you had in the videos? Um, no. And we'll talk about that. Again, we're all getting ahead. You guys are asking me questions about stuff that literally will be answered. I don't want to get ahead of myself. No. I've not had contact with these guys in literally six and a half years. Um, for most other people from back in Connecticut, the moment I moved was pretty much the end of contact. Almost, I, I will say there's probably two other people. Okay, I take that back. Three people in Connecticut who I was friendly with, mostly through Street Fighter, who did at least from time to time attempt to contact me and talk to me. But it just kind of went away. And you know what they say? It's out of sight, out of mind. If I'm not in Connecticut, if I'm not attending Street Fighter tournaments, if I'm not having get-togethers at my house, and if I'm not hanging out with these people, you move on. 
And that's essentially what happened with many of my Street Fighter buddies is we just, I wasn't playing Street Fighter. I lived in, Se in Seattle area. I'm gone, right? To them, that's it. That's the end of that stage of, of life. No more hangouts at Phil's place and stuff like that, you know? Um, and of course, I wish them the best, but that's just stuff that happens, you know? Okay, let's continue. Phantom Ryu has joined the channel. Phantom Ryu, someone who I used to play Super Turbo with back in the day. Speak of people who used to, you know, used to have uh, interactions. This membership for four months in a row, so I hope Gen makes it into Street Fighter Six. Yeah, we, we should clarify, even though we just talked about the Street Fighter oh, Six no, roster leaks, you. that oh, may no. not be the end all be all roster. That could be the starting roster. There very well could be expansion characters later, or that could just be the roster as of now. We have no idea what those leaks are. Someone leaked that shit, and we don't know. Was that meant to I be public? Is to that development I data? Do I, don't I don't know. To do it. I don't have money to do it. I don't have money to okay. do it. I don't have money to um, do it. So I by the way, do it. Let's actually see how many members we're it's at as of now. Super Hound's fault because we might actually have created a new record. Remember, six hundred one is our record. We may have actually hit a new record here. on the internet called Super Hound, Super. whatever the fuck this idiot's name is. We're at 603. Wow, guys. Again, isn't it funny how for months memberships had stagnated, right? And everyone was like, oh, the reason people don't become a member is because there's, it's not good. The program's not that good. There's no incentive. All of a sudden, there's gifted memberships, and I'm at 603. Like, wait. Now, wait a minute. No, again, it's exactly what happened on Twitch. Do I, do I believe that the Twitch subs were that good? No. I don't think that the Twitch subs were that good either. It's a feeling of community. It's a feeling of camaraderie. We're all having fun together. Let's all support each what? other. And then, boom, here comes the support. <clears throat> Parasolo just gifted a membership. Who's going to get it? Cabal. Cabal just got the gifted membership. Congratulations. Oh, so that wow. means we actually oh, just went cool. up to 604. You see, what, you see the point air. I'm making here? Now, again, guys, thank you for the support on the pre-stream. However, I'm not doing any shout-outs for any of this stuff or anything during the, the React portion. Just to make that clear, we'll do it after. We'll do, you know, when we're, we're doing Feasting with the King, that's when we'll get back to that. <laughs> okay. Tarantula MS 2018 just did a super chat. Says, do you think there should ever be a Street Fighter versus Mortal Kombat? Uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not against the idea, especially when, if you haven't seen, but the last Mortal Kombat... Adopted a lot of gameplay mechanics from Street Fighter-esque stuff. Meaning, you know, quick get-ups or wake-up recovery rolls and shit. That Mortal Kombat had never had that before. So it almost was I moving more towards that style of gameplay. So I would, I would argue, seven. yeah, like Mortal Kombat's going there. And it would eventually maybe be adaptable to have the two sets of fighters go at it. I don't know, though, because it would mean, you know, Street Fighter isn't gory, nor does it want to go there. So... It would have to be maybe like like Mortal Kombat characters have fatalities and Street Fighter doesn't. I don't know. Plus, you're talking about a whole bed of worms or a can of worms, excuse me, when it comes to intellectual property rights and how much licensing fees and shit. It would be crazy. I don't know. Could it happen? Yes. Will it happen? Unlikely. Let's put it that way. Um, <laughs> Uncle Ruckus has re-upped his membership for two months, stating MK12 will have a custom character story mode. I'm not sure if that's confirmed or not, but thank you, Uncle Ruckus. All right, we have a couple quick tips to shout out. We have an anonymous $2 tip saying, will you be reacting to Nintendo <laughs> Direct fuck? if Nintendo ever announces them? Possibly, yes. If it's a Nintendo Direct that I feel will be interesting to me and my content and something that I'm interested in that I'll play, then yeah. <clears throat> if it's like, oh, it's a whole Nintendo Direct about a game that I'll never play, then no, I'm probably not going to cover it. <clears throat> Hollywood J. Hale with the biggest tip of the day, $25. What do I do? Thank you, Hollywood J. Hale, for a $25 tip. He says, based. Thank you. I don't even know what that's in reference to. Thank you, Hollywood J. Hale, for the tip. All right, so guys, before we end the pre-stream, we got to see what food we're ordering and, and, and figure out what we're ordering. Let's take a look at the poll that you guys have been voting on. I need th that money. I really do. I need okay. that money. Over the last bills. several days on the community tab of DSP Gaming. What's funny is, at first, it was almost a tie, triple tie. Then, for like two days, Szechuan Chinese was in the lead. Then overnight, you guys may not realize this, Vietnamese became the leader by 1%. And ladies and gentlemen, it is official. 
Poke Bowls got 29% of the vote. Szechuan Chinese got 35% of the vote. And with over 1,300 people voting, Vietnamese food is the winner. I would be lying if I didn't tell you I was excited. And here's why I'm excited for this. I've always wanted to try banh mi sandwiches. I've heard so much good stuff about them. I've heard that it's like fresh baguette bread with various meats and ingredients they put on them. And people tell me they are absolutely delicious. I've never had one. So this is an opportunity for me to try banh mi, but also I want to get a pho, which is their traditional soup, and then maybe something the else. Ziggy so Piggy's back. let's do this. Right now, live, <laughs> let's figure out what I'm getting for Vietnamese food for Feasting with the King. Let's do it. Let's do it to it. <clears throat> I love Hulk Hogan's dick. Okay. So, to open up this thing here, all right, and we'll start right from the beginning. Bubble tea. Bubble tea. Okay, who out there, okay, who out there has had a bubble tea and what do you think? I'm just curious. I'm not saying I'm going to order one. To me... I know bubble teas are very popular in various different Asian cuisines. But to me, like, the idea of having this, like, isn't it supposed to be, like, candy or tapioca or something? Like, that okay. jelly consistency okay. Fair enough. in your tea? All right. It just seems weird to me. Like, if I'm, I want a refreshing drink, I just want a refreshing drink. I don't want a bunch of chewy, sweet, like, gooey jelly candy in my tea. But maybe, I, maybe I'm wrong and maybe it's really good. I, you know, I don't know. What do you guys think? Swago Nito says it's delicious. Some people are saying it's decent. Some people are saying it's just a blatant gimmick. I like bubble tea, but you need real boba. It's sweet milk tea with tapioca balls. The tapioca balls are a strange complement to the flavor. Bubble tea is overhyped. It's decent taste-wise. See, I like, this one, I like having such a great live audience. You guys give me all these different takes. Personally, I've always been like ugh, apprehensive to try it. Maybe one day I would, but since I'm getting this delivery, I'm not going to order it. I don't want to get a drink coming. It fucking spills all over the place and ends up being, like, you know, uh, shitty. You know, I'm not going to do that. So, okay. So, let's move on to the actual food. Um, When it comes to, app like, appetizers, I was looking at some of these. So, they have, like, fried tofu. I've never had fried tofu before. I don't know what that would taste like. They have salt and pepper fried tofu. Um, Things that are that are kind of... Things I would have had other places. Coconut prawns. I've had those other places. Vegetarian crispy rolls. I don't know. Nothing too special there. But then when you move on to, they have their fresh rolls. I think what this is, if now you could, guys could correct me if I'm wrong. Aren't the fresh rolls basically like almost like a translucent rice paper? Or or it's it's sticky, right? And they wrap a ton of things in it. Like they have shrimp noodle tofu avocado, papaya and beef, chicken and basil, and lemongrass and pork. So they have five different kinds. And by the way, this is like a, almost like a big meal. Like they're, they're, they're hearty. It's not like, oh, a little thing. Apparently it's supposed to be a good amount of them. Right? Some people are saying I should get one. I'm not, I don't even know what lemongrass tastes like. I wonder if it's good. Spring rolls are always a good choice, people are saying. All right, that's that's an idea. They have all these varieties, okay? Now, pho. I'm definitely getting pho. For those who don't know, pho is rice noodle soup, and you can get so many different things in it. <clears throat> like, for example, here they're saying classic beef, ginger, chicken ginger, vegetable and tofu, a combo where you can get, like, ribeye, brisket, meatball, tripes, tendons, like every kind of meat you could think of, okay? They even have an oxtail pho. Or a shrimp pho, okay? Um, I want to do one, but I don't know which one, all right? And I'm going to need your help determining which pho to get. I want one. I just don't know which one, okay? Um, it's none of anyone's business. And then what do I do? they have some traditional dishes, but as I've told you guys, I'm leaning way more towards getting um, a banh mi sandwich because I've always wanted one. So they do have them. Here's what they have. Just listen to this variety. Ribeye, steak, pork, tofu, chicken, grilled chicken, braised pork belly, and ahi tuna and avocado. That is a crazy variety. Again, I've never had a banh mi. I don't know which one is even... Where do you start? 
What's a good starter bond me? Business related. I don't know. So here's what we'll do. Why don't why don't we do one of what I just said? A spring roll, a pho, and a bond me. We'll order one of each, and that would that'll be a good variety of stuff to try for DSP tries it. How does that sound? Okay. <clears throat> okay, so where are Fresh, they call them fresh rolls, not spring rolls. They call them fresh rolls. Okay? <laughs> Thanks for the money, so, stupid fuck. Here's, food, here's the options. Food, There's five. Yeah, food, grab glasses, shrimp noodles, tofu avocado, tiger, avocado tiger, papaya tiger, beef, tiger, chicken basil, tiger, and lemongrass pork. How about this? I'm going to eliminate chicken basil because it kind of sounds a little generic. It says it's green leaves with basil, some pickled daikon, carrot with peanut sauce. I mean... I kind of could tell you what that'll taste like. You know what I mean? Um. So, how, let's do a poll right now. We're going to do a poll, a live poll. Here we go. Which spring roll should Phil order? Should it be shrimp noodle? Should it be... I'm going to describe these in a second. Tofu avocado. Should it be... Papaya beef. Miserable. Or should I get lemongrass pork? Now I'm going to read the descriptions. All right. Go, 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 go. Fatty fat fuck fuck. Shrimp noodle is green leaf, basil, pickled daikon, and carrot served with a peanut dipping sauce. Tofu avocado is green leaf, basil, pickled daikon, carrot with peanut sauce. Exactly the same. Papaya beef. Oh, they're all the same. Oh, no. Papaya beef is green leaf, basil, pickled daikon, carrot, but it has a soy vinaigrette dipping sauce. I guess they felt the peanut didn't complement the flavor of the beef, so they gave you soy uh, oh, vinaigrette like instead. You. And oh, then no. lemongrass pork is green leaf, basil, pickled oh, daikon, posing. carrot with lime vinaigrette. So the beef one has soy vinaigrette. The pork has lime vinaigrette. The tofu and shrimp both have a peanut sauce. Okay? Okay? All right, people are voting. So, here we go. Right now, in the lead is papaya beef. Interesting. Papaya beef. Keep in mind, if I get beef uh, fresh rolls, I don't want to get beef pho. pho. I don't want to get beef and beef. I want to get something different. So, if you wanted to see me do beef pho, then do not vote for the papaya beef fresh roll. All right? Okay. Protusum Zone, if you're bored, you can just leave and not come back. He's just sitting here complaining. I'm bored. I'm bored. Then leave. There's over 700 people here having a good time. You're sitting here whining. <clears throat> okay, the votes are shifting a bit. I think when so I if said, an asshole, if you want to see me do beef, like an fall, asshole, you're be don't vote the for the papaya beef, people are changing their votes. Because I'm seeing the votes actually shift as we speak here. Okay. Yeah, keep in mind, you don't want to get three dishes all the same protein. That's ridiculous. That would be stupid, right? We don't want to do that. Banned. All right, right now... Papaya beef is still in lead 31%, but tofu avocado is actually jumping ahead to 27. Oh, we're seeing a shift. We're seeing a shift in the votes. Papaya beef is not only ahead by 2%, with tofu avocado right behind it at 27%. Lemongrass pork at 24. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it 30 seconds for you guys to vote. And then, because we have three to vote on. So, let, I'm going to give you 30 more seconds. And then, I'm going to end the poll. All right? It's very close oh! right now. It's neck and neck between papaya beef and tofu avocado. Are you Interesting. a functional retard? I have to ask. Hello, Guts. How are you? Welcome. It's neck and neck. No, papaya beef has taken the lead again by 1%. With only about 15 seconds left. Let's do a countdown. Ready? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Special delivery. <laughs> That's it. Papaya beef has won by 1%. So I will be ordering papaya beef rolls with a, I think it said soy vinaigrette dipping sauce. 
Okay. Uh, ooh, Moving on to the... Oh. Eat the hype. Oh, All right. Greetings, DC. How are you? He says he has a grass is greener haiku, the hanging green leaves, the vibrant green living grass, the bright shining sun. That's beautiful. That sounds like straight out of uh, Ghost of Tsushima. Good one, DC. Okay. That's number one. Papaya beef, spring roll, or uh, fresh roll. Now let's order a pho. Now, I already told you guys, I'm not getting beef. We are, we're getting beef in the rolls. So now, here are our options. Chicken ginger, vegetable tofu, oxtail, or shrimp. So I'm going to put those up for a vote. Here we go. Which pho should fill order? <clears throat> so, chicken ginger... <clears throat> Vegetable tofu. Stop this! Oxtail. Mm. Or shrimp. I will describe them. Let's get the... Let's get the poll up. <clears throat> Alright, for you guys to vote. So here's here's the description. Same exact thing about someone dying chicken ginger is sliced white meat chicken yeah, served with will. fresh bean sprouts. Yeah. More people died here from Basil, the Basil, lime, and jalapeno. So it has some spiciness so, to it. I don't know why we're Vegetable tofu. I really don't. It's fried tofu, carrots, broccoli, and zucchini in a vegetarian broth served with fresh Ugh. bean sprout, basil, lime, and jalapeno. So that also has a kick to it. Oxtail. Thinly sliced, medium rare ribeye steak with roasted oxtail blah, 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 served with fresh bean sprout, basil, lime, and jalapeno. Or shrimp, which is served with beef broth. Oh, it's just exactly the same. So they're all, all the broths and ingredients are the same except for the, basically the protein. Okay. Okay. Whoa. Oxtail is ginormously in the lead. Initially. 56% of the vote right now is for oxtail initially. I've never, for the record, I've never had oxtail. Never. So I don't know what it's like. I don't know what it would taste like. I don't know if it's going to come on a bone or if it'll just be the meat. I have absolutely no idea. <clears throat> Oxtail is really good. I'm being told. Can I handle this much beef in one day? Yes, as long as I don't have any more. Like for the rest of the week. Let me think about this. The other meals we're having this week, we're having turkey, turkey meatloaf. It's turkey. That's fine. We're having, um, okay, one day we're going to have gumbo, and that is some shrimp, but it's also chicken sausage. So if I'm going to have that. I should probably have that Monday. Yeah, so I'll, I'll have the turkey meatloaf for dinner tomorrow, and I'll be fine. As long as I'm not eating, I like, Hulk Hogan's red meat on red meat or shellfish with red meat, and I'm not, you know, if, th if today was a drink-a-thon and I was going to be drinking all day on stream, then I wouldn't be ordering the beef. But I should be okay. No, Derek, we've not gotten to the banh mi sandwich yet. All right, we got 270 votes. 56% of people have voted for oxtail. I think we could just we could just say oxtail. I don't even think we need to, to make any more progress here. Okay? All right. Oxtail. Pho. Added. All right. Now. The banh mi or Vietnamese style baguette sandwich. Here are the options. Now, I'm just going to tell you guys. We're eliminating beef. There's no way I'm getting beef. Okay? So, there is sautéed pork. There is tofu. There is chicken. There's pork belly. And there's ahi tuna and avocado. Now, being that I'm already getting beef and beef, I'm going to eliminate the pork belly. Pork belly, I've had it before. I know what it is. It's delicious. It is incredibly bad for you. It's basically like, you know bacon? That meat that everyone likes? Think insanely fatty bacon. That's pork belly. Okay? So I'm not doing pork belly. Absolutely not. That's not gonna even going to be an option. Okay? Um. I think what we'll do is the sautéed pork, the tofu, the chicken, and ahi tuna and avocado. Those will be the four options. Okay, so here we go. Wh which the Ziggy Piggy is here? Vietnamese sandwich should 
Bill Tron. Shit. So we got chicken, pork, tofu, or ahi, tuna, and avocado. There you go. And now I will read you the descriptions of the sandwiches. Okay? So, served with house garlic mayonnaise, pickled daikons, carrots, cilantro, cucumber, and a side of yam fries. That sounds delicious. Yam fries. Yummy. All right, here we go. Ahi tuna and avocado has an early lead, and that's interesting. I have never had... Okay, I've had tuna in sushi. I have never had it in a sandwich. That sounds very interesting to me, actually. Okay. Ahi tuna and avocado is taken off. It is 5% in the lead and actually increasing salt. in the lead. Yeah. Nice. Bro moment is absolutely dedicated in the stream chat. He's pissed. He's ripping pissed. You want to know what he's saying? I've never heard of ahi tuna in a banh mi. This is unacceptable, unprecedented. I don't like it. Okay, I kind of extrapolated upon what he was saying. <laughs> but apparently he is not of the opinion that we should be doing a tuna banh mi. He doesn't like this. Okay. All right, we got almost 300 votes, and it looks like the ahi tuna and avocado is way ahead. Again, I've never had tuna in a sandwich like this. This should be interesting. By the way, it doesn't even say if it's cooked. I would assume it's not raw. It's not raw tuna in the sandwich. Is it? You would think it's cooked tuna. Hmm. It's sinful to mix tuna and avocado. <laughs> All right. Well, we got about 300 votes. All right. We got about 300 votes, and it's now almost 10% in favor of the ahi tuna. So that's what we're going to do. Okay. So, yes, ahi tuna and avocado sandwich. Sweet. With, with yam fries. I've never had yam fries. Aren't yams very similar to sweet potatoes, though? So, likely, it'll be very close to the flavor of sweet potatoes. Right? All right, so ladies and gentlemen, we've got it set. Here's what I'm going to be eating on Feasting with the King later today. Papaya beef fresh rolls. I believe that said it had a, uh, like a soy vinaigrette dipping sauce. Oxtail pho. And ahi tuna and avocado banh mi sandwich. Yummy. That sounds delicious to me. Stop this. Okay, so guys... Thank you. This has been a great pre-stream podcast. I hope you've enjoyed it. As I've explained, all right, once I stop this podcast in moments, here's what's going to happen. Number one, I'm turning when off the monetization. There will be thank you and still no pop-ups. I would do it. There will be no leaderboard. Today's been incredibly nothing. slow. We're going to set up for the React event, and then I'm going to react for a while. When the food shows up later today, that's when everything else will go back on. Okay. And that's when we will do shout outs for any contributions that have maybe come in or whatever behind the scenes. Um, and dur right, right before and then during the Feasting with the King. We'll do Feasting with the King with the food. I'll order the food for roughly, just so you know, roughly around 4 p.m. Pacific time will be when the food will come around. All right. Then after that, everything will be turned off again. All right. And then we will do the second half of the React event. All right. And then when the React event is over and completed, I will do kind of a, hey, thanks for watching, summary night end video, where again, if there were any other contributions that came in during the course of the day, we will do shout outs. All right? Fair enough. I'm trying to be as, as fair and transparent about this as possible. I don't want people to get the wrong impression and think, why is Phil not appreciative if we're contributing? Why, is it, why are there no pop-ups? Why are there no shout outs? That's not the purpose of today's stream. All right? Came in from Vinit DM, 
who did a super chat. Thank you to Vinit for the super chat. Let's get that on the leaderboard. And then I guess what we'll do is we'll end the pre-stream. Or I'll just say this. Last chance, if any of you want to shout out right away, you have to contribute right now. I'll give you like 60 seconds, all right? And that's it. Then I'm turning it all off. All right, so you got... Okay, mouse is not working. Yeah, like 60 seconds. Not pressuring you. I'm just saying after this, you're going to have to wait several hours if you want I need further, the, that all right? Money. I really do. I need that money to pay my bills. <laughs> Okay. No, there are no goals. There's no goals for likes. There's no goals for bulls. There's no goals it. on the stream today. To do it. I don't have money to this, do it. This I don't have money to here do it. I don't does not affect do the content. I don't have money to do okay? it. I don't have money to do it. At all. In fact, this is stupid. I shouldn't have I should not have termed it like this. Here's just what we're gonna do. Ready? My fault. So totally my fault because I just left it saying that. There we go. I'm trying to make this as clear as possible. It's not about that today, okay? Okay. Alive and well in Israel. All right, are we good? Yes, this is my Chicago 2009 shirt, Derek. I will address that actually in, in the React event, okay? Alice Telemont took me a dollar fifty. Says, "Go get it." Thank Jay you, Alice. Harris. Okay. I think I think we're safe now. Again, this is it. As of right now, it's official. I'm turning off the pop-ups right now. <clears throat> off. I'm turning off the leaderboard. Off. I'm turning... Look at this. YouTube mode on. Oh, my God. We're being erased. Everything is going away. Everything's being erased. That's it. All right. Let's end the pre-stream. I have a little bit more setup to do. I'm going to run, like I said. I'm going to order food with my wife. And then we're going to come back and get started, all right? Thank you, guys. Great pre-stream today. Excellent. Okay. Stopped recording. A couple quick things to add here. I got to do this and this. Hold on. Uh, is that it? That's not it. What is that? Oh, that's when I got the copyright claim. Where the hell is it? Oh, here it is. That's it. And then I've got webcam border. That's it. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's a set. That's one perspective. What we need to do is do the other perspective. So let me swap over here. Get rid of this. Okay. Yeah, this is correct. This is the right spot. But I got to get rid of the leaderboard. And I got to get rid of the pop-ups here. Okay. So as of now... Everything should be set. And by the way, to show you guys the setup, a little preview before we start. Okay. Here's the setup. All right. While we're watching this together and listening, I'll be here. They'll be there. You'll see this is pretty well done. And I got to give a huge shout out early to the fan who put this together. Essentially, what a fan did is they went through that video recording. It's not a video. There's no video. It's just audio. And they put together it's this presentation so that I'll be here, they'll be there, and then there's going to be clips and things oh no, playing so under me. Streaming you. All oh right? No. And then what I can do on the fly, I can swap over. If I want to go more in detail or talk for a while before we hit resume. We can go over here, talk, and then go back. See? Pretty good? All right, so here's the deal. I'm going on a break. Because I'm going to go order food, use the restroom, and come back in a couple minutes. But there will not be any ads. I'm just going to do a break here, and then we're going to be right back. And then when I come back, we'll actually tweet we're starting and everything. Okay? <laughs> Sounds good? All right, guys. I shall return. I'll be right back.
It's Super Hound's fault. everything here get everything going um i'm gonna obviously i'm gonna tweet and post that we're starting so people are aware the ziggy <clears throat> piggy's back okay okay yeah brief break you guys were oh you'll go <laughs> he's back he's back already okay <clears throat> okay um here we go let me tweet that we're starting right now All right, let's get this going. Looks like I I went to piss and order food and we lost 100 viewers. That's spectacular. Too bad, you're just going to have to miss the whole event now. 
ending ending it early. All right, let's tweet. What just happened? You fucking piece of shit! I almost deleted it by accident. I did a whole post. Delete the post. <clears throat> Here we go. Grab some salt. Okay, so those are posted. We'll probably get an even another another second influx. Right now, probably, of people. What, what do I do? Okay. All right. So, guys, we're about to... Oh, there's a gap in the video. I didn't see it till I moved my head over it. Did you see that? There's a gap in the video. Hold on. Let's see if I can fix that. What about now? That's a smaller gap. It's still there, though. Tiny gap. That's better. Now there's no gap. Okay, good. All right, is everyone ready? All right, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to start up, and I, I basically have to give kind of a background explanation to everything. It's going to take a while, because I need to give a frame of reference of what this video is, why this video uh, it was made. I have to give a little bit of background about me and John and Howard. So everyone kind of understands Do you want to um, play the fucking all of game? that. Okay. Um. Let's see here. What, what do I do? What, what a piece of shit. <clears throat> okay. All right, we'll get, let's just get started. Enough with the dilly dallying and the bullshit, right? I'm John. And I'm well, it played. I don't want to play it. How? I I pressed up. Now, why did it play when I pressed up? That's weird. Hello. I'm, I'm John. trying to figure out how to get this to play and stop on here without fucking. I want to be able to pause it on the fly. It's being stupid. Hello. Okay. That was weird that it played. The homosexuals are that evil people who are all passive. Okay. <clears throat> are we ready? <laughs> hello. I was like, hello, John. Because he said hello. I guess I should turn on my headphones so I can hear it. Okay. All right. And by the way, I'm not sure how loud to make this. I guess I could do it like this. If it's too loud, you guys let me know. I don't know how loud the video needs to be for you guys to hear it properly. All right. <clears throat> All right, are you guys ready? Here we go. Let's start. I'll give an intro and then we'll begin. Okay. Hello, everyone out there. Dark Side Phil here. DSP for short. My real name is Phil Burnell. And today I'm doing something that is incredibly different from anything that I've really ever done before um, in my 14 years of content creation. Okay, today I'm going to be responding and reacting to a video slash audio recording, we'll talk about that in a moment, that was put out over six and a half years ago, okay, and you actually see the date right there, it was uh, November 28, 2015, when originally this hit the internet, it was put out there by two people who, I guess you could call them former friends of mine, um, who essentially felt that they felt the need to respond to a lot of stuff that I had said on the internet about them. Uh, since I had moved from Connecticut to Washington State, which took place in June of 2014, and again, you know, this is about a year and a half later, um, what I need to do to really give you guys a full understanding of the situation is to give you our history. Because when this recording was put out, on November 28, 2015, it immediately starts addressing topics and subjects and things. And without proper perspective of understanding the history of myself and John and Howard, it 
and a half years old. And many of you today who are viewers and or fans of myself and my content uh, on YouTube don't even know <clears throat> about the history of myself and, and these gentlemen because it is long in the past. Let's be honest here. Uh, this is ancient history, you know, six and a half years since it's really even been touched upon. Although admittedly, over the years, people always ask me about this. They say, Phil, what do you think about that video that John and Howard put out about you back then? Phil, are you ever going to talk to Howard and John again? Will you ever do content with them again? And I always kind of dodge the question or very briefly answer it. There's been a few times where people kind of goaded me into giving an answer during, say, for example, if I'm doing Battle Royale gameplay, and that's a lot of gameplay that needs, like, downtime filled where you're talking to kill time when you're gathering resources or whatever. And so I have kind of briefly answered and, and, and addressed it over the years. Quite frankly, never satisfactorily. I don't feel like I should have done it that way. I think if I was going to address it, I should have fully addressed it in a full-fledged professional manner, which I, I have not to this point, okay? Um, and that's what we're doing today, all right? Today, we're going to go through this entire recording, piece by piece. I'm going to tell you uh, about a lot of stuff, all right? Essentially, what this video is is a way for them to vent because they never did that before. The two of them never really came out publicly, or in, in some cases, even privately. They never really came out and said this stuff. And because of that, a lot of this stuff, quite frankly, I wasn't even aware of. All right? When this video came out, this was like, wow, news to me that some of this stuff was actually happening. Okay? At the same time, it doesn't mean that just because I was ignorant of it, that it's okay. All right? One of the major reasons I'm doing this today is to kind of give some closure to this subject. Six and a half years later, I have not spoken with these guys since then. Okay? We'll talk about that. That will actually be one of the subject matters that we'll discuss today is why. Why haven't you, you guys talked in six and a half years to hash this out? We'll talk about it. Okay? But what I want to do is not only clear the air, but fess up to a lot of stuff. Because... I'm a different person now today in 2022 than I was in 2015, than I was in the years before 2015 when I was actively friends with these guys and doing content with them and hanging out with them behind the scenes and all of that. I'm a very different person now. And if anything, one of the things that really prompted me to do this was because recently I did a different React event that was DSP Reacts to Down the Rabbit Hole Dark Side Phil. And in that documentary about me that's only about 30 minutes long. It really goes through my history of content creation and the ups and downs and the things, the really messed up stuff that I did publicly I need back those, in the that day. money. I really do. Okay. I need that money to pay my bills. This is an example of the messed up stuff that I did privately back in the day. And as much as you can say, well, the public facing stuff is the stuff that everyone deals with, cares about, obviously... The fact no, that no, 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 all of a no, sudden no. these guys who had been a part of my content, in particular John Rambo, I will emphasize here, was a major part of my content for years and years. He was in multiple shows, playthroughs, travel vlogs. And for him to just suddenly not be there anymore and then to have less and less contact, less and less mentioning, and to the point where now it's like we don't talk about each other anymore. The viewers, you guys, all right, over the years started to question, what the heck happened here? What is going on? And to be very, how can I say, basically, there's two sides to it. And what I mean by that is there's the public side and the private side, right? You guys know what was made public. You saw the recordings. You saw the playthroughs. You saw the travel vlogs, okay? But there's a private side as well, right? There's a whole friendship behind the scenes that you guys aren't aware of. There's discussions and things that happen behind the doors that are not broadcast. But you guys became a part of that with the public side. And what ended up happening was, I feel like over the years, the public became a major part of that relationship because they wanted to see that relationship continue. They wanted to see the content continue to come out. And you will see that one of the running themes in this video is that the public were urging us on to say something interact to do the content we had promised or to say something on one side or the other that was always a factor okay um 
Anyway, what I'd like to do to start today is just let everyone know one of the running themes in this video is that I unfairly monetize John and Howard, all right? And there's a theme of money. There's a theme of I wasn't fair with money, but then I was fair with money. It's very confusing. Uh, but one of the major points, it's actually said like during and then at the end of the video is that I tend to find ways to monetize them. And I have actively decided that today, since I will be doing this React event, that I am not monetizing it at all. <clears throat> there will be no advertisements on this stream. There are no advertisements on these on-demand videos on YouTube at all. I have disabled all pop-ups, any kind of leaderboard. There is nothing going on right now in the realm of contributions, all right, actively. I've decided that any portion of this should not be monetized. If this is a concern of theirs, that I unfairly monetize them over the years and I'm continuously monetizing them, it would be pretty dastardly of me to years later, okay, come back to react to this video and monetize it. So I'm not doing that, okay? I could, it's within my legal right to do so if I wanted to. I've decided against it, all right? Maybe back in the day, again, one of the things that's changed about me, maybe back in the day, I would have. I would have been so stubborn, like, ah, it's my right, I'm going to do it, I'm going to make a buck on it. I'm not going to do that today, all right? I want to do the right thing. If I'm going to address this, okay, um, I'm going to do it in a proper fashion where <clears throat> it's not about that. It's about me, finally, after six and a half years, telling you the full story from my perspective and allowing you to objectively make your own decisions. Many of you have no idea what this even is about because you've only been around for the last seven years. In fact, <clears throat> looking at my history as a content creator, I have actually made way more content since I've lived here in Washington State than when I was back in Connecticut with these guys, okay? So for many of you watching this, you're like, I don't even know the situation. So we're going to start from the beginning, okay? <clears throat> Back in the day, in the mid-2000s, I was a pro Street Fighter player. I say pro because pro entails that you do it for a living. No one was playing Street Fighter for a living back then. It wasn't possible. There were no sponsorships, no partnerships, been no tie-ins with anything. Lie. There were no teams, no esports leagues. It was just grassroots. Okay? And being grassroots, um, basically you could play in every major tournament you wanted and you would never make enough money to make a living. So I was a competitor. I played in tournaments. I placed in tournaments. But I was never a pro because there was no pros back then. All right? <clears throat> Around the mid-2000s, I began, began to be known for being a very prominent and high-ranking Super Street Fighter II Turbo player in the United States. Although we can go through the whole story of that. Stop I've already it. addressed that in my Down the Rabbit Hole video. And you can go watch that video tiger, tiger. to get the full oh, oh, explanation. Oh, 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 go watch the oh, oh, reacts oh, oh, to Down the oh, Rabbit Hole Dark Side Phil. You'll get the explanation about my Street Fighter days. Okay? But during this time frame of, say, 2005 to 2007, shut up dude who's been <clears> a moron? people on the East Coast of the U.S. started to respect me for the first time as a high-ranking Street Fighter player. And when they did, the word spread... Phil was so good at Street Fighter, you want to play with him. You know, you play with Phil, you're going to see a top-ranking player in person. You're going to learn. Now, here's the thing. Today, it's things very different with Street Fighter. Today, you can go online and play people from all over the world, including sometimes, if you're lucky, top-ranked players. You can do it from the comfort of your own home. Back then, that was not possible. If you wanted to get good at Street Fighter, you had to play like crazy against as much, <clears throat> uh, as much variety of competition as you possibly could. All right, and you essentially had to Grab some put salt. your butt physically next to someone to play them, okay? So during this time frame, I was very friendly with all these players in Connecticut who I had known from over the years, and I come home from like Evo that one year when I did really well, and everyone's like, oh my God, you represented Connecticut in such a huge, great way. This is when I lived in Connecticut, by the way. Oh. And so I continued to play Street Fighter <clears throat> regularly. One day, my friend Tony, who mostly... We were known for playing Marvel vs. Capcom 2 and Capcom vs. SNK 2 together. Said, hey, I got a couple buddies who actually like Super Turbo, and obviously that's the game you're really good at. You want to go play with them? Sure, why not? So he mm. took me to someone's home. I believe their name was Jamie. And John Rambo was there as well. And this is the first time I ever met John Rambo. So this is probably between like 2005, 2006, I would guess. 
Um, and immediately, you know, you could tell the guy was super friendly. He was kind of, uh, when I first met him, I felt like it was almost like a deer in headlights moment. Like, oh my God, this is a guy who just came back from Evo and placed. Again, me, I'm the kind of person, I never saw, saw myself as any kind of a celebrity. Even in my days as a prominent YouTuber, I, I never saw myself in that light. I'm just a normal guy doing my normal thing. But these guys are like, wow, I get to play a guy who just did really well at Evo. This is cool. And that's how our friendship started, where it was just us essentially playing Street Fighter together um, and practicing and trying to get better. And <clears throat> excuse me. Chili at Wendy's. we basically had kind of a... I don't know if you want to call it like a like a like a brothership, brotherhood, or a camaraderie, but essentially we were the players from Connecticut. We would travel to tournaments to play video games. I would play Super Street Fighter Two Turbo. I was still playing Marvel vs. Capcom Two and other games. John primarily was playing Super Turbo and also Capcom vs. SNK Two. Okay, and I remember those years. We tr basically we just hung out playing Street Fighter casually, and then we would travel to tournaments together, share the share hotel rooms, split the cost, um, support each other in tournament. You know, root for each other when we were playing competitively. Those were the formative days of our friendship, okay? And, you know, for me, at that What's time in my blog? life, What's I didn't have blog? many or any real close friends. It was more all my time and effort was put into competitive Street Fighter. I've talked about this in the past that I didn't even really play console video games outside of Street Fighter. It was just focused on Street Fighter. So the relationship and friendship that I had with John was primarily Street Fighter-related stuff, okay? Now, fast forward to years later, you, you can see footage of us at tournaments together, right? You can actually see this from this time, like Evo East 2006 and Evo East 2007, us playing, I'm rooting for John, John's rooting for me. You can find some footage of this, very rarely, because back then, it wasn't a prominent thing. You can find some of this kind of footage from old school YouTube and stuff like that, okay? <clears throat> now, years later, 2008, I started doing YouTube videos. Okay, and at that point, suck shit. We don't want to hear John is involved in them. Face. In fact, in a limited capacity, whenever I'm covering Street Fighter a stuff, if I'm going to a Street Fighter tournament, and never or if I'm covering again, the launch of Street off, Fighter 4, or if John's coming over to my place and we're playing some, 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 some uh, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo HD Remix. Okay, that was the game that was kind of prominent at the time, and we played a lot of that together. You can find sets of that, and we'll talk, we'll actually talk a little bit about that. He'll talk about it. Um... But really, John didn't become a staple part of my content until, I would say, probably mid to late 2010 when I lost my office job and I started doing YouTube full-time. And John, at that point, we basically kind of skipped from being just Street Fighter buddies to actual Are you going to just complain all night? Just friends. leave that. Like, I would say that was the time in my life that I, I felt like John was, like, one of my best, if not my best friend. Because when I lost my job, uh, in my office job. I had an office job for about four and a half years Were for a helicopter company. And after working there for so long, they laid me off completely unexpectedly. It was so shocking. They had given me awards saying, thanks for going above and beyond at this job. And two months thanks, later, they Barry. laid me off. I appreciate that. Completely shocking. I didn't know what to do. I had a condo. I had car payments. I had all this debt in my name. And there was no other equivalent jobs in Connecticut I could get to make that much money. I thought I was going to lose everything. All right? And it was this time this. when I remember now this shot I called to John Rambo, and John was incredibly supportive to me. What, what he was do like, I do? dude, don't worry about it. I know you're the kind of guy you're gonna recover from I this. My job. I remember him being so supportive on the phone about it. And I was like, you know, John, I'm doing some gameplay today. Dead space Dead Space, excuse me. Dead Rising 2. I'm already doing this playthrough and I'm sucking at it. I can't get any further in the game. This tiger's kicking my fucking ass. Would you want to come over? The game's co-op. Would you want to come over? What the hell are you talking about? And join about? me for this? And kind of like, like right now, everyone on the internet knows I just lost my job. I'm making a video about it and everything. But it would be really nice to have a friend over to come do some gameplay with me. That's not Street Fighter. You know, let's do something different. And that's actually when our co-op gameplay began together was that fall of 2010 when it was a regular thing. Before then, yeah, sporadically, we would do some co-op things, but primarily it was always Street Fighter shit. And by the way, I should emphasize... None of my content was monetized at this point on YouTube. I wasn't making money on any gameplay or anything I did with John at this point, okay? It was just for fun. I was doing YouTube for fun from the years of 2008 all the way to early 2011. It was all for fun, okay? So John and I start doing regular cooperative gameplay. Fun. And at this point, we basically kick off what I would consider a real friendship. It wasn't just Street Fighter buddies anymore. 
supporting each other and playing Street Fighter. He would come over and we would have meaningful conversations about our lives. We would hang out for about an hour or more before we ever turned on a camera to record oh, any style of gameplay it. or any kind of commentary because we actually had a running miserable. commentary show called Smart Guys on professional wrestling. Professional wrestling was something that was meaningful to both of us. We we're both lifelong fans of wrestling and we had different perspectives that we could add when we were doing commentary on a pro wrestling show. <clears throat> so, John and I were Street Fighter buddies turned into what I would arguably say good friends over the course of several years. You know, that 20, 2005, 2006, we knew each other, Street Fighter, all the way through like 2009. And then 2010, the friendship really kicks off to a real friendship when we start doing things that aren't Street Fighter related. Okay? <clears throat> John then became a staple part of my content, whether it was Smart Guys or Gameplay Once a Week, if we traveled and went to a trip for a Street Fighter tournament or we went to a gaming convention, he would come along the way. John was inspired to start making his own content for YouTube on his own channel, John Rambo Presents, where he would make not only initially gameplay, but he would branch out to a podcast series called John Rambo Presents the Show. In addition to that, he did a highly edited, uh, really highly stylized and produced series called Strasman Hole Punch. That's about two superheroes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, okay. Along the way, I turned my YouTube presence into a job. Now, I never intended for that to happen. It was always just a fun thing to do. But in 2011, I got partnered with Machinima. I started getting the ability to monetize all of my videos on YouTube. Okay? And John was a part of that content. So, at one point, we had the discussion, well, I'm making money on these videos now. What's fair is fair. John should be making That's a awesome. cut of all the content that he's in. Okay? So, yes. And we're going to discuss that in detail. But he did start getting paid for his work with me. Okay. Over the years, this continued. I need that money. Yeah, this I continued really all do. the way from 2010 to pay my bills. all the way through, through trips, through through all kinds of different series. We did. We went to WrestleMania together. We went to conventions together. We did all this stuff together. It all came to a head essentially. I don't have money to do it. I don't have money to do it. I don't have money to do it. Because in 2014, I, I made a life changing do it. decision I don't that have I was going to, to leave Connecticut to and move across the country to the state of Washington to this home that I live in to this day, okay? Obviously, this was a life-changing decision. It was going to change any kind of arrangement or, or, or content that we were doing together. It was all going to change because how are you going to do it? I'm not there physically anymore, all right? And our discussions were that this content would continue after a period of time where I would get settled in and we would basically continue to do content together remotely over the internet, Okay. Uh, we'll talk about the details about that in this video, so I don't want to get into that, all right? Now, that's essentially where we're going to kind of leave it with John, all right? Because that's really, this video will discuss our further relationship, okay? I don't need to go any further than that. That's the history of me and John Rambo. Howard. Howard is a completely different situation, all right? Just to give you guys some perspective, and you may not know this, because I've never really talked about it over the years, but... Howard, I would say, was a Street Fighter buddy of mine, absolutely. An acquaintance of mine a little bit outside of that. I never had what would be considered kind of a full-fledged private or close friendship with Howard. That never existed. Maybe that came across that way in the videos that we made together because we kind of played off each other really well, especially in co-op gameplay or a lot of the interactions when we were doing Street Fighter stuff. But... Howard was way more of a friend and always a close friend of John Rambo. Not of mine, okay? I will give you the history. So during the time when I was already friends with John Rambo and we were already traveling and playing Street Fighter together, this is before I did YouTube videos, one day I decided to do a backyard barbecue cookout party at my parents' house. I bought a big tent and I had tables set up to play video games, Street Fighter, outside. And we had a big cookout with liquor, Beer, food, everything. I posted up on, at that time, the website SureYouCan.com, which was the big hub of where you would post up for Street Fighter stuff. And I said, Phil's big backyard blowout. I don't know what I called it. I said, come on by. If you're, if you're you know, someone from Connecticut and you're, you're a player and you want to just come and say hi for a few minutes, grab a burger, play a game, or you just want to come chill with us all day, come on by. We're doing this.
I had all my longtime Street Fighter buddies over, but some newer people who I never met before. And one of the people who came by and I met for what I thought was the first time was Howard. He comes by with a giant plate of burgers. Blah, 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 I remember, because he was the only one who came with a ton of shit. He's like, hey. My name's Howard, and you might not know him. Fuck. In Bridgeport, Connecticut. And I used to go there and play Street Fighter while you were there. And you were always in, like, the higher echelon of players. Like, it was you and your buddy T, and a few others. I went and played, but I was never like competitive like you guys, so I casually played with you guys all the time. But you probably don't remember me because I wasn't part of like your circle of friends back then. It's okay. super hound's fault. Cool. That's, I mean, that guy history. I don't, I don't remember the guy from back then. I mean, then again, I don't remember much back from back then. His formative years as a teenager. You There's know. a sick like, motherfucker come on it. on Met the internet called Nicest super guy hound. possible. The fuck super nice guy. Name. And basically we hit off a Street Fighter friendship, meaning, as, again, we were traveling to Street Fighter tournaments or whatever, Howard would come along with John and I to these tournaments. He became part of our group, all right? He really was. He was part it's of our Street Fighter group, fault. okay? And that's really kind of where our relationship stayed for the longest time. Um, when I started doing U2, Howard became a part of some of that content. Some of the earliest okay. content I did was called East Coast Fair Customs. Enough. We went over right. Howard's home, and what did we do? We made Street Fighter joysticks. We bought joysticks. We ripped them apart. We put in custom buttons and joysticks we had ordered. We put artwork on top. We printed it out at, like, Kinko's. We printed it out, and we had these cool joysticks that we sold online for a profit, okay? We had joint ventures like that over, over the years. Um, and, and Howard was always welcomed whenever he wanted, if he wanted to be part of a playthrough or if he wanted to be part of content that we did. Primarily, he always was interested in Street Fighter game. stuff. So if we're going to a tournament, he'll go with us, you know, or that kind of stuff. All right? Um, you'll notice over the years, every once in a while, Howard was involved with a playthrough. Okay? Usually that happened if it was a game that needed more than one person to play with. So if it was like, two, like three players or we're doing a party game with motion controls, it makes sense to have Howard in, in that with us. Right? Because... Like He's the third guy. He's a cool guy. We know him from Street Fighter. He's a friendly guy and all of that. Why not have him involved in our content? Now, by the way, he's not the only person. There's other people who've been involved in our content over there. Joe. Joe is actually a close friend of Rambo's who Rambo brought in to be part of cooperative playthroughs that we did. And you can see Joe in several different playthroughs that we've done over the years, including Ooh. Family Guy is one of the notable ones. Okay? So there's other people along the way who've been involved in our co-op content as well. Howard was I one of them. Lie. Joe was one of them. Okay? What I would say is where Howard really became prominent in my content and where this conception of that F Howard is a close friend to Phil's started happening when we started doing a series called Project 7. We will talk about that series in detail in this video, all right? But if you're wondering uh, why am I doing this background, uh, all right? Why am I going into the history of me uh, and Rambo and me and Howard? Uh -huh. Why? Because... In the context of this video that they made about me, if you just watched the video, all right, you would be of the impression that we were this close-knit group of friends who were constantly doing stuff together, who were constantly involved with each other on an equal level. That couldn't even be further from the truth. I was... ...who I had the business relationship with to pay him for appearing in my content. All right? John was the guy who I considered a close friend. That never happened with Howard, ever. Okay? I never had a close friendship with the guy. I was friendly with him. I knew him. I knew some of his family members. And, you know, from, from going to over his house, you meet people or whatever. But it was never like he was, we were all three close friends. It was like I was friends with John. John was closer friends with Howard than I was. And Howard would be involved in our content from time to time. Okay? So you might say... Why am I bringing this up? Here's why. Because this video was the John and Howard video. And that shocked the shit out of me. Because if anything, I expected that if there was going to be anyone who would come out and say something, it would have been John. That John would have come out and said, listen, the reason why I'm not talking to Phil anymore is this. Here's the reasons. Here's my gripes. This video originally was about an hour and a half long. And most of the stuff is from Howard. If you listen to the video, which we're going to, 
you're going to hear all these gripes that Howard has about me, all these issues he has with me, okay? Which is fine. I'm going to fess up to a lot of this stuff because it's true. But the point I'm making here is I wasn't close friends with Howard, yet it seems like this video, the way it was made, is to spin it in that direction. Like, oh, look, both John and Howard were good friends with Phil, and now they're really destroying him in a public video. But Howard never was in that level of friend. I never was a close friend with Howard. Some of the things he says in the video, you'll see him like, oh, well, Phil never contacted me. It's because I never contacted you ever. Most of the time that I had contact with Howard was through John. Okay? So we're going to get to that. All right? But I needed to kind of give this, this pre- viewing information because it has to put it into a frame of reference, all right? John, I feel, had every right over the years to complain, had every right to slam me for shit, all right? He's the one who I had the close personal friendship with. But when people told me, hey, Phil, did you hear that there was a big video that John and Howard made about you today? I was like, John and Howard? Howard? How is Howard involved in this, you know? Okay, why am I doing this now in 2022 when the friendship fell apart in 2014 and 2015? Okay, I'll tell you why. When this video came out, all right, it was so hurtful to me that I couldn't watch it, all right? Most of the information that I heard about from the video was through third parties who had watched it and would either come to my streams and tell me what was said. Some of my friends and or moderators at the time watched the video and came to me and told me what it said. Um, I need I those, basically, that money. I really do. I need that money. When it came out, all right, I was already in a really bad place in my life in 2015. I mean, we, again, if you want a full explanation of all of this, go watch the DSP reacts to the Down the Rabbit Hole Dark Side Phil video. That year, 2015, I had been swatted, DDoS attacked repeatedly. I had my channel destroyed by false copyright claims and lost millions upon millions of views my channel was kicked out of the youtube algorithm so i was losing 24 fucking seven why did this just beat oh because i'm not using it so it turn auto turned off i was losing money on my business by the way i had a personal relationship with my ex that was falling apart at the time i was living with my ex and we were supposed to be in this, this relationship and it wasn't okay it was all this tour this, this storm of shit happening to me at once. So when this video came out on November 28th, 2015, all right, I couldn't watch it. I heard about it and I was like, I can't, it wasn't until, I couldn't actually, I couldn't even specifically tell you exactly you when I watched it. I don't even it, remember. You're just gonna waste I just know eventually again. I watched it. Um, You know, and when I did, like, like when I even heard the video came out, you ever, you know that feeling you get in your chest? It's not necessarily panic, but it's like true pain. You get that heart crushing feeling right here. Like your whole body just droops and you're like, oh, when I heard this video came out, I was like, wow, a video like that came out and they really hate me to do something like that. All right. Because, and we're going to talk about this and again in the video over the years, abso friggin' lutely. I spoke out of turn. I said things publicly I should not have said. I was an asshole. I'm going to fess up to all of that today for the very first time, okay? But I was always in the hopes that these guys would contact me privately and we could talk about it, okay? I was trying to contact John in particular, not so much Howard, but John in particular. I was trying to reach out to him over and over, over a course of about a year to a year and a half, and he decreasingly responded to the point where he ghost started ghosting me, basically. Not, no response at all anymore. And I was hoping that eventually they would reach out and say, all right, enough is enough. Let's talk about this, you know, respectfully, like friends, like men, whatever you want to say. And let's hash it out so we can put it to bed. And even if we can't be friends anymore, at least we can hash it out. That's not what happened. They chose to make a 90-minute long hit piece, I guess you could call it, about me. Uh, most of it, I wasn't even aware of. And I mean that for a fact. Like, most of the stuff they're going to bring up here, I not that I didn't know the situations, but I didn't know that they had issue with it. There are a few things, and a few, few certain situations they'll call out here where absolutely John told me about them, 
And he'll even talk about that. Oh, and Phil apologized for this situation or that situation. <clears throat> but a lot of this stuff, I didn't know about at all. And it was the first time hearing it and having the whole internet hear it at the same time as me was like, wow, that's that tells me they didn't want an apology. They didn't want a change in attitude. They just wanted that relationship to end then and there, done, right? Because they could have behind the scenes reached out to me about to talk about it and they never did. Um, so I didn't watch this video right away. It, took, it was at least months, if not maybe even a year till I actually watched the video myself, just hearing hearsay of what it was. And basically, I never really wanted to, I, I basically acted like it didn't exist, all right? Um, never really addressed it. Over the years, like I already said, sometimes I would just casually mention it in my content, which I shouldn't have done. I should have just ignored it completely, right? I should have. Um, and then, you know, after, as time passes and all that, my life changed. My life got better. I always will say, like, 2017 was one of the worst years and best years of my life for various different reasons. But I changed the content I was putting out. I changed the format of the content. I met my, my now wife. I began a life-changing series of events. And since then, I kind of got a different perspective on life. Um, and <laughs> after years and years passing and all of that, um, I feel like today, from a, as a different person, a changed person, that I can come back and do this and give meaning to it as a way to not only clear the air and apologize for the things that I did wrong, but also to clarify some of the situations here that aren't fully explained because there's a lot of what I would consider half information or misinformation that is not true. When people saw this video for the first time in 2015, some longtime fans of mine were shocked to the point where they said, I'm never watching your content ever again. And they left. And there was nothing I could do about that. Um, I was of the impression that if I immediately responded, okay, publicly, it would do more harm than good for everyone. Not just for me. But at that point, John Rambo had his own channel and shows and things that he was doing. And the last thing that I wanted, if these guys already felt like my relationship with them had caused them pain over the years, the last thing that I wanted to do was react to this immediately, and the next thing you know, they're hurt even worse. We're going to talk about that because I really feel like it was the public. People asking, what's going on with this, with that? Is there content coming out? Is there this? That constant kind of nagging questioning about what's going on in our private lives was what led to me giving into the pressure and, and saying things I shouldn't have said, making mistake after mistake, and making this relationship fall apart, Okay. So imagine me immediately reacting again, right, to this video would have just made it exponentially even worse. And I said, I'm just not going to say shit. And for clarification purposes, no, I have not spoken to these guys since this video came out. Are um, you a functional retard? We'll talk about I have to ask. why, okay? But that's why it's seven years later or six and a half years later, and now I'm doing this. Why? Today, John Rambo no longer makes content for the internet. He deleted his Twitter, and he doesn't post on his channel anymore. He's been blah, gone for blah, years. Blah, 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 Howard very sporadically posts up anything on his YouTube channel. Me talking about this today is not going to hurt those guys. All right. If anything, all this is going to do, it's going to hurt me. All right. But the reason I'm doing this today is because recently I've been looking back at my past, okay, and I've been saying, here's mistakes I made. Here's fucked up things that have happened. Um, let's address them so we can move past them. I did that with the down the rabbit hole video. We're doing this with, with John Howard today. So this way I can finally say, hey, you want your questions? You know, you want answers? Here it is. I did a react to it. You can watch that in its entirety and get your answers. And that's it. After today, I have nothing more to say on this subject. Okay? After today, if you want to know about John and Howard, watch this. Okay? All right. Without further ado, ready? Let's get started with the video. Now, a little bit of background about this video, okay? Because some people are confused about it. I am too, quite frankly. All right. <clears throat> this video was not released on John Rambo's channel. This video was not released on Howard's channel. There was a new YouTube channel created 
in November of 2015 called The Uncanny Knotman. Okay? This was the only piece of content apparently released on that channel. It was released... At, uh, actually, there's disagreements on what it was. Some people claim they've seen a video. There's video footage to this of the two of them sitting there like on a Skype call talking. Others disagree and say, no, it was always just audio. I don't know because I didn't see the original. What ended up happening was this apparently was posted to the internet on November 28th. And within a day or two days was deleted completely from the internet. Not just the video, the channel, the YouTube channel, gone. So I don't know if... These guys released the video, and then immediately people started contacting them about it, you know, in a negative way, to the point where then they said, man, this was a bad idea, and so they deleted it. The problem is with the internet, they don't forget. The moment they released this video, people archived it. And within days, there was re-uploads, 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 left and right, up and, up and down everywhere. So just shut up this dude who's being... Here's the really ride. weird thing about this, this video, Okay. It jumps around, and if you listen to the audio game? closely, there's audio cuts. So what I don't understand is if this was them having a conversation and talking, why are there audio cuts? Did someone edit this? Was it John? Did someone else edit it after the fact? I've never seen or heard the original, because as I just told you guys, when it, when it was released, it actually hurt me so bad to know that they did this publicly that I didn't watch it right away. I ended up having to watch, just like everyone else, I had to watch a re-upload of it at, at a later date, okay? Um, and so, I don't know if what we're about to hear today is the original or not. Um, since then, John Rambo has, like I said, deleted his Twitter. The original Twitter post was deleted, but you can find it on the Wayback Machine, uh, you know, on, YouTube, on, on the internet, excuse me, um, along with evidence that this Uncanny Notman channel did exist. Um, it's just confusing. Now... Just for full disclosure before we hit play here, this recording is the fullest version available on the internet with a small portion cut out. There is a couple minutes at the very beginning where they talk about their own Thanksgiving. They had, oh, I had a good Thanksgiving. Here's what I did. Here's what you did. And then immediately they get into the stuff about me. So there's maybe just a couple short Ooh. minutes missing off the beginning of this that is not pertinent to anything we're doing today. There's no reason to include it. Okay. We're going to go right into it, right where they start talking about me. And we're going to go from there. Okay? Take that as you will. So we're going to hit play. But there's a couple quick things that I'd like you to keep in mind. Uh, a few running themes that are going through this. All right? The first theme is that the timeline in this video is all messed up. All right? There, even me trying to listen back to this recording and, and, and do this react for you guys is incredibly difficult. Because... For some reason, they're jumping forward and back in time. So they'll be saying, oh, I want to talk about this subject of what just happened to Thanksgiving, but then I want to talk about something that happened in the past, but then I want to talk about something that happened last year, but then I want to talk about something that happened in the past again, but then I want to talk about something that happened yesterday. <clears throat> but then they'll say things like, oh, but I told Phil twice about this. Like, but wait, what, when, where? It's very confusing. I I'll try my best to, to clarify but even for me, like, I get my head rattled listening to this because it jumps all over the place. And I, it's hard for me to put my finger on what they're talking about at certain time periods, okay? <clears throat> Another running theme that you're going to hear is about money. And John and Howard saying things like it's not about money, okay? Which is fine, but then they go into money over and over and over and over and over again. Multiple times, multiple subjects. So if it's not about money, why do they keep bringing it up? I never... Okay, that's a full lie. Already I'm catching myself in a lie. I almost said I never talked about money with, with them. That's bullshit. I, need, I did. That money. That's I really one of the major do. problems. I, is to pay my I, over the years, was accused by the public of being bad to these guys. And people would think of reasons why these guys would not like me anymore. Did you, didn't you pay them? <laughs> Well, then I would say, well, actually, yeah, I did. John, in particular, got paid this and that. I never should have done that shit. I, you know, stupidity. We'll address that. But running theme I here is money. I don't have money to do it. I don't and have money to do it. I don't have money to do man, it. Man, if anything, by the end of this video, are we going to learn something about friendships and money? They don't mix. Okay? <laughs> Holy shit. One final theme. Trolling, troll bait, and responding to people who are just trying to get a reaction from you. 
yeah, that's a problem that I've always had. I get baited like sh crazy by people, whether it's on social media, in the comments of my own videos, the stream chat, my forums, anywhere. People hounding me, asking me the same question, trying to get information, and I should have shut it all off, and I didn't, okay? So those are kind of the running themes. The timeline's very confusing. Money isn't an issue, but it is. And Phil falling for troll bait, okay? Keep those in mind as we watch this, and it'll make a lot more sense. Now we can begin. Actually, before... I'm just kidding. Let's do it. Oh, I'm John, and I'm joined by Howard. Basically, this is a response to a lot of things, including a video posted by one Philium uh, two days ago. So what we tried to do here, and by the way, I have to give a giant shout out to a viewer and fan who basically put this whole background thing together here, as you can see. This person, who will remain anonymous because they do not want to be trolled for doing this, put together all of the supplementary information we need. So whenever John and Howard reference something that can be found on the internet as a direct re reference, we have the information and we watch it together. That way you can objectively judge for yourself, okay? So John is about to reference something from an Ask the King episode, November 26, 2015, part three, that I posted on my channel. Here we go. Who recorded, who decided to record himself scolding us like a high school gym teacher saying that you're immature, and you need to learn how to be men. First question from Eric. He says, uh, Phil, I admire your honesty and hope you can answer my question since you're quite open about this. I know you'll probably get this a lot, but what's up with you and John Rambo? Did you have a falling out? Uh, is it because you two are far away? I'd like to hear your thoughts on the matter. Thank you. And I should have said, I have nothing to say on the matter. It's a private matter. If we ever decide to talk about it publicly, we will. And that's that. Here's what I did do. The bottom line is this. I will tell you completely 100% honest with you. And, uh, you know, people will... I say that a lot. I'm going to be completely 100% honest with you. I also say I'm going to be transparent. These are mannerisms in my speech. When I say that, essentially what I'm trying to do is emphasize that what I'm about to tell you is a serious matter. It's not me joking. But some people over the years have misconstrued it as dude, meaning other things. Mean All it means when I say that is I'm about to tell you guys something really important. And it's meaningful to me, so please listen up. Yeah. Probably try to make shit up or say they don't believe me because they <laughs> want to believe drama. Oh, here we go. Shit. Now he's talking about WWE um, champions. The bottom line is this. When I lived in Connecticut, you piece of years, donkey. The bottom line is this. Co-op commentary, co-op gameplay. How about we did this? Show smart guys. WWE we traveled champions. together. We did Street right. Fighter gameplay together. We did a lot WWE of stuff. WWE champions and everything lives together. rent free in your motherfucking. In all head. of that time, I don't think all right. about WWE. In champions. all of the time that we did you that do. stuff together, I could think you of probably maybe know way more about one the fucking to two game than I ever will. Ever, because you're an idiot. That we you're ever had a disagreement on that. something, and even then, it was something that was minor and that was handled quickly, and it wasn't that we ever let it got to the get to the point where business would hinder friendship. You know what I mean? And I think that's kind of the big risk that you take when you go into business with someone. And what I just said, oh, maybe one, two times we had a disagreement. Funny enough, those will be brought up in this video by John and Howard. So we're going to get to all that stuff. That it might negatively <clears throat> affect the relationship that you have the person outside of the business. And even though we treated the whole YouTube Stop thing that this. we did together as like just a casual silly thing, there was money involved and there were other factors involved. The bottom line is never in that entire period of time before I moved out of Connecticut, did I ever get any, you know, ever have any ill will or feelings toward John? Never did he have any real major ill will or feelings towards me that I knew of. He never said anything about money. You know, he got paid for everything that he was involved in. He never said anything about money or anything like that. And we had great agreements that were going on. And when we left it, when I left Connecticut, where we left it at, was that I was going to move here. It was going to take me a couple of months to get set up everything with work or whatever. But I was going to contact him uh, in early, uh, early fall, let him know when I was fully up and running again, and that I wanted to continue to do stuff, whether it was smart guys via Skype and uh, gameplay, you know, cooperatively over the Internet. And obviously, John didn't have a PlayStation 4 or an Xbox One, and we were going to try to coordinate it and figure out what could he or couldn't he do for gameplay. Would we do stuff last gen? Would there be other stuff? We were going to figure it all out. Okay, uh, and that's where we left it. Now, John came, he helped me pack all the stuff up. 
when I was leaving in June of last year, he came and helped pack up and helped me move out of my place in Connecticut, okay? And we stayed in contact. I talked to him via text a lot. We were talking about different things going on with the move. I talked to him about TV shows and stuff going on. I was asking him about what was going on with Schnoz Man a Hole Punch, and we stayed in contact regarding that. And the way we left it was that later in the year, once he was done with Schnoz Man a Hole Punch, we were going to talk again about the possibility of, of, of coming back together and doing uh, you know, uh, content over the Internet again. And then in late 2014, Finally, we had a conversation. He says, listen, I'm going to make this abundantly clear, you know, so there's no misconceptions. At this point, I'm kind of burnt out on the whole YouTube thing. I really don't even want to put a lot of effort into my stuff. I've, I, I put all this effort into Schnoz Man a Hole Punch, and that's really where I put all, exerted all of my effort, and that's what I focused on, and that's really all I really care about at this point. I mean, it was cool that we did all the YouTube stuff previously, but I don't really care to be, you know, involved with anything from your YouTube channels at this point, and if that changes, I'll let you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. I won't even, you know, great. I won't even bring it up if you don't, right? There's no reason for us to really bring it up or anything uh, uh, any further. Uh, 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 and I remember as last year progressed even further, I would text him, and every once in a while he would text me back. It was like we were almost losing touch. We didn't have as much contact. Now, if you remember, traditionally I would be on John's Ooh. podcast for the Black Friday episode. Every year he would have like a special Black Friday episode where they go through PayPal. ads and stuff about Black Friday. And last year in particular, I hadn't heard from him, so I actually texted him and said, FYI, John, I'll be available if you want me to be on, but I haven't heard from you yet, so I'm assuming maybe you don't want me to be on or whatever. That's fine. And he never really responded. I didn't really hear from him much. I wished him a Merry Christmas later that year. He did respond to that. And then less and less I heard from him. It wasn't like... There was any argument, there was a falling out or anything. None of that happened. So if anything actually happened behind the scenes with John or Howard or whatever happened with the people back in Connecticut, right, who I used to do stuff with all the time, it's 100% on their end, and it was never actually brought to my attention at all. So I am completely in the dark in this situation. What ended up Almost 100% true. I'm going to call my, out my own bullshit here. <clears throat> but there's a good reason why there's some bullshit here. There is a situation that John will address in this video where along the lines of me trying to contact him in 2014 and get answers like, hey, are, you know, what's going on? Are you all right? Are we going to do content together? Uh, you said we were going to do the content and now you're not like responding about it. And I'm curious because people are pinging me about it. So basically I'm feeling all this pressure to make content with John because everyone had wanted it. And John said he was going to do it. And he's basically kind of just saying, no, I'm not going to do it or just ignoring me, okay? Um, at one point, I spoke out of turn and I did reveal something that we talked about privately in a text that I should never have talked about publicly and it will be in this video, I promise you. But here I say in this video, oh, I never have any idea why John would be angry with me. Bullshit. He was very angry with me when I did reveal some private information about him. Oh. Uh, publicly that I never should have. So this is bullshit. This is me at this time trying to save face because from my perspective, the friendship's already over. These guys are ghosting me at this point. This is late 2015. This is Thanksgiving 2015, okay? These guys are completely ignoring me. They're not responding to any any messages I send to them. So to my, my side is this friendship's over. So why would I act like there's lingering shit. Just tell everyone it's over. That was kind of what the point of this video was, was I'm trying to tell everyone it's over. Stop bothering me about it, right? Because from my perspective, they, they're, they're, they're done with me. They want nothing to do with me. So let's just leave it at that, okay? But I lied. I outright said there, there's you know no contact and no reason why he'd be upset with me. I knew he was upset with me for that situation. I absolutely knew it. But I lied in this video, okay? Happening was I did continue to once in a while contact John on stuff. Uh, and sometimes he would respond and sometimes he wouldn't. And I actually remember the last major time that I actually had any kind of interaction with John Rambo was in early 2015, he launched the DVD, the Blu-ray release of Schnoz Man a Hole Punch. And when he did release it, I retweeted him. I let everyone know, gee, you should maybe buy some of this. I bought a DVD myself. And he even signed it. You know, I guess every DVD he sold, he signed it. And he actually wrote on there, thanks for all the good times that we had together. You know, John. So that was the signature he put on the DVD. Does that sound like anything negative? No, that sounds great. Like, he's like, you know, suck, it sucks that we don't do stuff together anymore because you moved, but thanks for the good times we had. That's literally like what he wrote on the DVD. 
And then after that, I have no clue. I've not heard from John since then. He doesn't ever write me. He doesn't call me. He doesn't text me. Nothing. And I did try actively to contact him and talk to him over the course of the year. And basically, I heard nothing whatsoever from John Rambo at all since then. So I have no idea what happened. If he something happened in particular that turned him off or got him angry at me. The bottom line is it's never been brought up. And I'm going to say this, and I hope that people don't take this the wrong way. But in life, if you have something <laughs> Thanks for the money, that stupid you want to say or you have an you issue didn't have with the someone, guts to play the right, original video. say it. Bring it up. Hash it out. Don't let resentment build up behind the scenes for whatever amount of time or whatever. Because this, that's what happens is then... If something happens and you don't bring it up and you let resentment build up, that's when relationships get ruined, right? And the bottom line is, did I ever hear, get hear or, or even get wind of anything negative from John or Howard or anyone from that camp who I used to do stuff with in Connecticut until I moved? No, not once. And in fact, we even had the big, remember that we had the big going away party in June of last year and they all came. They were all there. We had fun. We had a blast together. We were drinking. We were playing games, eating, having a lot of fun. And it was like, nothing's wrong. And then all of a sudden, once I moved, it was like, that's it. Well, Phil's gone, so now he's out of our lives. He it almost feels like to me like they're saying, well, he abandoned us. And we used to do all this fun stuff together. He's not here anymore, so now we're mad at him or something. I don't so, wow. Pretty messed up what I'm saying in this video. All right, for multiple reasons. First of all, <clears throat> yes, there were disagreements that we had um, in Connecticut before I moved. However, those disagreements were... Pretty much kept private and were never aired publicly so you guys didn't know about them until john and howard put out this particular video that addresses them so there were disagreements but basically i since they weren't public why do you want to make them public right and by the way any disagreements that we ever had that we talked about behind the scenes were settled it wasn't like oh here's an unsettled argument we had and there you know we just left it linger forever it was kind of like all right you're mad at me for something let's talk it out Okay, sorry, we'll fix it, done, and then move on, right? When I was living in Connecticut, keep in mind, John was in my content from, you know, the Street Fighter days all the way through the very end of me being in Connecticut, okay? There was no point where John said, I don't want to be in your content anymore, or I don't like you, or, you know, all this pattern of bad things, you're a bad friend. None of that ever happened, okay? So, from my perspective... Yes, were there things that went wrong in Connecticut? Yeah, any friendship, you're going to have disagreements. You're going to have things that you feel like were messed up or one person didn't do the right thing. That always happens. That's never You're never going to have a perfect friendship. But from my perspective, I'm thinking everything's good. When I'm moving, I'm being told by everyone everything's good. John, you know, says everything's good. Howard, not so much. We'll talk about that in a bit. We will, okay? Because actually, in particular, that going away party has a story behind it. That will be discussed in this video. Howard brings it up and I will fully tell you the full story on that. But anyway, uh, with John, seriously, I had no idea that he was angry about any of the shit that had happened in the past from, from the way that we had talked about it. Everything was water under the bridge. No issues, no lingering problems. Okay? So that's fine, but why am I talking about this in the video, right? Why am I addressing this? Why This is so stupid. It really is. I like It's the dumbest thing. And again, for me... 2015 was a really bad year where there was so much pressure on me from every direction. For some reason, 2015 was a year everyone hated me. I don't know why everyone hated me so much. I never really faced that much hate in one year, all the shit that had happened to me in that year. And one of the major things that people were constantly, constantly on me, all right, about was, was in particular that I didn't do stuff with Rambo. Why aren't you talking to Rambo? What's going on with Rambo? Not Howard, Rambo. Okay, and Do you there was so much pressure, I just kept game? talking about it. Completely wrong. I should never, I should have just kept my fucking mouth Stop shut. This. And if ever there was a resolution between us, great. But there was this lingering thing going on behind the scenes that was kind of breaking me down. I'll talk about that as well today because they address it. So that's all going to come up. All right. Be, what I have to ask from you guys is tremendous patience. This is a very long process to get through, but there's going to be a ton of shit that has never been publicly revealed that I'm going to reveal to you today. All on my side. Shit about me, okay? All right, let's continue. I don't know, but it is, again, it's speculation. Anything that I could possibly say about a John Rambo situation is pure and utter speculation. That's true. Because I've been completely in the dark over I didn't the whole know situation anything. since it began, if it even began. So 
That's why people want to start all this, this fucking shit, right? All this drama and controversial shit. They must have had a disagreement about money. They must have, Phil must have revealed something really personal or something, nothing. Which is hilarious because that's exactly what happened. That was one of the reasons why John was mad at me is because of that text conversation we had had. Well, shut up and I revealed some of the information about that conversation to the public. He even yelled at me for it. I apologized. And now here I am saying, oh, that never happened. Great. Really transparent there, Phil, you fucking asshole. Ever happened. At least from my <laughs> side, Zippo. I was never, again, never contacted, never told, never ever got an inkling that there was something wrong. So if there was anything that ever went wrong between my relationship with John or Howard or anyone back in Connecticut, it's on their side. They let it build up. They let the resentment build up on their side without ever speaking up. And I hate to say it, but in real life, if you're mature, if you are a man, oh, you great. will speak up about an issue. You will not let it linger and resent and build and fester into some kind of a negative thing where you don't want to talk to someone again. And then you're going to even, at some points, talk shit about them and stuff. See, I would never do that because I have no reason to talk shit about people who I have always had a great relationship with. So for me, I have no clue if there's any negativity, any resentment. I have no idea, and I'm still in the dark to this day. Now, before we continue, wow. 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 This is how you don't talk about your friends, right? Holy shit. What a stupid fucking fucked up, messed up, undefendable thing to say. Okay? Special now, delivery. The, <laughs> yes, I didn't really know exactly what had happened. <laughs> behind the scenes. Yes, I felt like there was a lot of passive aggression against me from John and Howard, and particularly John. Again, Howard interjecting himself into the situation here, but it was primarily John because he was ghosting me, not responding to anything. So obviously there's an issue. Wow, what a great idea. Why don't you say that they're not real men? <laughs> Thanks for the money, stupid fuck. That'll get you know on their good side. Right? I will talk about this further later in the video. Why it all came to a head at this particular date. Why it all happened this way. I will reveal later on when we get to some other subjects. Stuff that was going on behind the scenes. That made me act like a complete and utter fucking asshole. Alright. Not act like a complete and utter fucking asshole. I was a complete and utter fucking asshole. On this date and time making this video. This never should have happened. It, you know. I wish... We could erase this kind of fucking dumb shit from the internet. But then here's the thing. If you deny history, you don't learn from it. So I felt like if John immediately in this, this video was going to say, this is a fucked up thing Phil did, I had to show you exactly what I did and how fucked up it was. It wouldn't have been fair to just assume, let's see. I look at this today. I'm embarrassed. I'm fucking sad. I'm really upset with myself. That this is the kind of way that I used to behave back in the day. I was so hyper-defensive about everything, right? That I would literally just sit there and fucking talk dumb shit to try to make it so that I looked good. That is the worst possible thing you can fucking do. Especially if it's for friends, man. Like, what did, you, what did I think was going to happen here? I'll t well, actually, I do know what I thought was going to happen. And again, we're going to talk about that later in the video. But this is indefensible, Okay. Right? Like, I, I look at this now. Oh, geez. I mean, I, there's not even... Is there a single perspective you can take that you can say, oh, this was okay? No, I don't think so. At least now I could say that. I don't think so. That was just fucking stupid shit. Now, let's get back to John and Howard. So that's when, when people ask me straight up, what's, what's up with John Rambo? I said, ask John Rambo. Because I have no clue. I'm literally in the dark. I was never... Nothing was ever brought up. And unless... Unless... <laughs> John kept mailing me letters, and they went to a dead address, but he didn't realize it, so I didn't know he had a problem with me. No, obviously, I'm just being silly. No, it just never happened, so I have no idea. I mean, I'm literally in the dark. That's the bottom line. That's the whole situation. There is no situation. I don't know. And it's a shame. It's a shame because it was, that was a longstanding relationship that I had. You know, the mid-2000s, I met John, and whether it was Street Fighter or us just doing other stuff on YouTube, I always had a blast with him. So I don't know what his problem is. And I have no control over it. He doesn't talk to me anymore. He won't even respond. If I text him or call him, I don't get anything back. 
So from my situation, from my perspective, it's 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 uh, not even a relationship anymore. It's over, and it's one hundred percent on him because I had nothing to do with it. There you go. Yeah. So you know, there you go. And there the, you go. the things like people want to really want to know why we don't do anything with him anymore. <clears throat> and he himself oddly is saying that he he wants to know why, you know. But that video that he put out, I think, is a perfect example of why. Now, now, okay, fair enough. Touche, he's right. But from my perspective, okay, bef- they weren't talking to me for an extended period before that video came out, okay? And yes, absolutely, I, I fell into the trap of being goaded by the public, goaded by the internet to keep talking about it, talking about it. But that right there, that video... Not, who would be surprised to say that ended a friendship? No one. But up to that point, again, I was never really told about issues. The issues they're about to bring up, 99% of them I'm not even aware of, or we talked about them already and were already hashed out. So I didn't know that these were lingering issues and things adding up for reasons why they wouldn't want to talk to me or be my friend anymore. Okay? So he says, oddly enough, Phil doesn't know why we don't want to be his friend. No, not oddly enough. They never said anything. They never said, Phil, listen, your behavior is toxic. Your behavior is detrimental to us and our well-being. And we would like to not be your friend anymore if you're going to continue this way. That conversation never happened. So when that conversation never happened, the resentment built up inside of me and prompted me to do something like that stupid video, basically saying, why won't you just tell me what's wrong so we can address it, right? It's called passive aggression. You're not actively being aggressive with someone you're being passively aggressive with them by not talking to me, by not responding, <clears throat> excuse me, to my attempts at communication, by saying that you were going to be in my content and then, oh, can't do it, oh, still can't do it, oh, another reason I can't do it, oh, can't do it. And now I'm the one with the public face to the public getting all the requests. Where's John Rambo? Why isn't he in your content? What's going on, right? That's passive aggression against me, Okay. I'm not saying that they were wrong to do it. I'm just saying that's what happened. And because they said nothing, it boiled to a point where people absolutely demanded answers. Personally, I was ready to move on from it, but people were all over me every day about this. So it kind of boiled to that point where finally I'm doing an Ask the King, and I basically made that that segment that should never have been made completely incorrect that I did that. Okay. You know, so if you, if you really, like, examine it, it's a video he puts out on Thanksgiving Day which I don't really understand. Um, and last year, Thanksgiving, you decided to unfollow me. Okay, now, here's where the timeline already is skewed. He just started a video that's basically going to explain the things that I did that were messed up, okay, that caused them to not want to be my friend anymore. Let's start with the video he just made on Thanksgiving. Oh, wait, let's talk about last Thanksgiving. Wait, what? But you didn't, can we get to the video about Thanksgiving? No, he goes back a time a year. And this, is, this, video, this video is very confusing, because he does this a lot, they jump around the timeline, and it's like, so what, in what order did this happen? Did this piss you off first that led to this, or did this happen, or this? I'll do my best. I really will, but this is the first instance oh, that's happening, personal that they jump me. all around. Oh, yourself, so, man. now we're going back in time, Thanksgiving you immediately 2014, your point. okay? When you go, when you Here we go, go low blow, moron. Well, yeah. Some issues, so, something with Thanksgiving, I don't know if he's eating something that doesn't agree with him, maybe he needs to follow your turkey recipe. Yeah, it, it really, I, I think for me, it really started with that because not only did he unfollow, like he, the way I noticed it was when I was on Twitter, he, I looked at his people that he was following and he unfollowed both of us. The way I noticed it is that I was on Twitter and I just happened to be looking at the people that Phil was following on Twitter and I noticed that he had unfollowed both of us. Huh? That's confusing. So you just randomly go to at they call me DSP and look at who I follow randomly and noticed. Uh, Stop no, this. I don't. Do you do that? Do you go to someone's Twitter profile and just check who they're following constantly and they're like, see, you know, that's confusing to me. Uh, I know exactly what happened. I unfollowed them. And the internet trolls message them about it, likely spamming their comments, 
leaving tweets on their Twitter accounts, et cetera, et cetera. And it bothered them. So then they went and looked and noticed, oh, Phil unfollowed us on Thanksgiving. Now we're getting harassed by a bunch of people on the internet about it. And that's not fair. Okay. So fair enough. Okay. Here's the deal uh, on that is this is kind of a pattern where I do something. It's Tevin's fault. That you would think unfollowing someone on Twitter, anyone, doesn't matter if it's your friend, a celebrity, one of my viewers, you know, would have zero impact on anyone, right? It's Dark but Dave's fault. In the scheme of things, when you are online stalked by people 24-7, like, seriously, if I misspell a word on, my, on a forum post or something, they'll, they'll call it out. Something as innocuous as that, oh, that'll never do anything. There's a negative repercussion no matter what, okay? So was, was this, oh my God, Phil is doing a horrible thing. He's been following his friends on Twitter. What a huge dramatic, no, I never, ever thought of it like that. You can argue, oh, maybe it's passive aggression or whatever. I never thought of it like that. It's actually directly addressed in this video later on, the whole situation around it, which we'll get to that when we get to it. But basically, to me, I wasn't thinking of it like that. And by the way, I didn't just unfollow Rambo and Howard. I unfollowed a bunch of stuff that day. Um, I remember sitting down and I was getting bombarded with negativity about them for not being on John Rambo's Thanksgiving show. And with that, he addresses that later. So I don't want to jump the gun on that. But I was being bombarded by a bunch of negativity, both from my viewers and trolls, why aren't you on John Rambo's Thanksgiving show? You're always on John Rambo's Thanksgiving show. I don't understand. And so I was getting bombarded in all kinds of shit all over the place on social media, uh, in the comments of my videos about this to the point where I was like, you know, this is so fucking stupid and frustrating. Like, I don't want to deal with this dumb shit. This is so stupid. And I went on Twitter that day and I was like, this social media thing is fucking dumb. I'm so annoyed at it because people can spam me about bullshit like this. Who cares? You know, there was, to my knowledge, there was no animosity between us for me not being on this show. So not only did I unfollow John and Howard, I unfollowed a bunch of other shit. Because at that point, I remember I was looking at my Twitter feed. And here I am. I'm trying to follow news. I'm trying to follow gaming trends. I'm trying to follow shit going on, on the internet. And I got a million posts about John Rambo and Howard. And how John Rambo didn't have Phil on his Thanksgiving show. What a, what, you know, wow, Phil must be a real piece of shit. And he really must have insulted John behind the scenes. And I'm like, I don't want to do any of this at all. I want none of the. I don't want to be involved in any of this bullshit, toxic nonsense. So I unfollowed them. But there was other people too. There were people who I've been following who were also in on that. And I unfollowed them. But there was other shit too that I unfollowed that day. I just remember that, that Thanksgiving, I was sitting around, you know, having a personal day, kind of relaxed. It was a day I didn't make a lot of content. And I'm like, I'm just going to go randomly, you know, on Twitter and see what's going on, see what's going on in the world. And all I see is a bunch of toxic, dumb shit about me not being on John Rambo's Thanksgiving special. And I'm like, I don't want to deal with this. Unfollow, unfollow everything. Just unfollow all of it. Fuck this. I don't even want to follow any of it anymore. Okay? What happens? I get made to be like a villain for unfollowing people on Twitter. That it's the most, To me, like when you say that to someone, you're a bad person because you unfollowed someone on Twitter. Do you want to talk about first world problems? If being unfollowed by someone on Twitter is a problem for you, that's a pretty good problem to have, I think. If that's a problem for you. Oh, God, I was unfollowed by someone on Twitter. All right? I, I don't ever look at who follows me, who doesn't follow me. I couldn't give two flaming shits about any of that. It means nothing to me. It never has and never will. Okay? So... This part, like, you want to say, Phil made a video out of turn, speaking up, saying messed up stuff, 100%, I'm going to agree with you. When you say, wow, Phil did a really awful thing, he unfollowed me on Twitter, I'm going to say, what in the fuck are you talking about? Like, what? I'm sorry, that one doesn't, that one I don't get. That one throws me for a loop, all right? that That's an issue for anyone <laughs> being unfollowed on Twitter. Now, being harassed by trolls about it, I can understand, but you notice... That's not what was said here. Howard's like, oh, I noticed it when I was just casually checking who was following me on Twitter. And Phil had unfollowed. What? Like, no. That's not, I know what happened. They got harassed. And this is another, as I said, this is a running theme. 
because these guys are friends of mine in real life and are associated with me and make content with me, they are now <clears throat> the subject of the ire and the focus of thousands of internet trolls. At a moment's notice, they do something and they're criticized. They're slammed on for it. I do something. They're criticized. You know, they get attacked. That's not fair. No. It, they should not it's it be bothered on Thanksgiving because someone unfollowed them on Twitter on Thanksgiving Day. That should be the last thing they're contacted about. That should be the last thing they're bothered with. But this is a... a, a you're going to find a, a, the, the trolling... There's gets both sides, me and on the it. Internet it leads both of us to kind of do whatever the fuck with shit, I feel. Um, and this is one of the situations where I just think this is completely off base at all, that this is something that was even, a, even an issue. Someone unfollowed me on Twitter, and a troll messaged me and told me, fuck them, block them immediately. Don't deal with them. Why are you addressing? It's nonsense. It's internet nonsense. Just it's, 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 it should not be bothering you. And I... I'm I'm sad what to know years later about? that dumb shit like this that I you know who would have thought job. I didn't think that unfollowing someone would be a, something that would affect them and it did that's fucking terrible that it did. Are you I never just complain all night? Just leave okay? then. And yeah. there was there was no real really no rhyme or reason to it, which I I thought was I think that was the first shot. I just explained <laughs> the rhyme or reason. To I'll it. be honest with you. It's weird stuff like yeah, especially uh, when you work and, and you work hard and stuff. You you look forward to certain days off. And like Thanksgiving is a certain day, like with your family and whatnot. Um, and then like to and to do these things on Thanksgiving it sounds silly. It is just a day, but you're showing no concern like for the other person. You know what I mean? Like you're gonna cause shit. Like suddenly you get inundated with messages. So here we go. It's Thanksgiving. I want to spend a day with my family and friends, but I'm inundated with messages. So ignore them. I get messages every day from a million different sources, and if it's bullshit, I ignore it. Now, I'm much better at doing this today. Back then, not so much. Admittedly, this kind of shit would get to me. But it's Thanksgiving. You're spending it with your family, your friends, you're having a meal, you're sitting down. Why are you on the internet reading messages about people saying that Phil unfollowed you on Twitter? It, you know, like, what? Why is it? It doesn't make any sense. Again, these guys, sadly were bombarded with trolling and didn't know how to handle it. They weren't like me. They weren't, they, unlike me, they didn't have this public face where constantly they were attacked in a negative way. In fact, I would say probably the years that I moved and everything, that was when the negativity started where the, my trolls would go after them to, as a way to get at me. And they just couldn't take it. And again, that's, that's bad. I, it's nothing I intended. It's nothing I wanted to happen. I'm very sorry that it happened. But sadly, that's something that I couldn't have helped. You know what I'm saying? Like, no matter what, these idiots, we're going to go after these guys. And that sucks to know that just because they were my friends, because we made content together, you know, they're going to get attacked for stupid bullshit like that. You know? No, I didn't want them to be bombarded on Thanksgiving with messages about Twitter. At the same time, they shouldn't have cared. Like, ignore that shit. When, the moment you give attention to a troll is the moment that that troll feels recognition for what they've done and now continues to troll. The best thing they could have done is said, what, fuck, what is this dumb shit? Delete everything, block every moron, and move on with my life. Don't pay any heed to this. If I had entertained any, every troll that ever harassed me with shit like this, I would, I would be in a nut house, you know? But again, this is my fault. They said, this is directly you know, my fault. To you, me, my internet it presence, like it's a my black friendship hole, with them, because it always that's causing like them to be harassed. You're this always is the kind of shit that I don't know. Always still I don't know and, and nothing's getting that these bad. guys are being harassed. I agree with you. them on Twitter. If that were the case, I never would have followed them on Twitter to begin with. Seriously, if I knew it was going to do that kind of shit, fuck Twitter. Who gives a fucking Twitter? You know? But sadly, it happened. Okay. If you, you know, while you're trying to enjoy a day with your family. Um, yeah. Oh, here we go. You know what I'm saying. WWE champion. No, no. I, I, I understand completely. You I just. Piece uh, of uh, shit. Yeah, there's a How lot of. <laughs> there's going to be a lot this? of things talked about. WWE you know, and champions. I, again, right. we're not here. WWE and We just want to reiterate this. We are not here to defame anyone. Head. Huh. This is just don't think about to let people champion. know our you side do. of the story because you people have a tendency to just game than I ever uh, view idiot. one thing an and not look at it from loser. another way and trying to understand the other party's uh, view yeah, on it. And I'm not angry. I agree with Howard, okay? Not this! Absolutely. They have the right to make a video that's not defamatory I and give their side of the story. Heads. 
24 fucking Good. 7? Please do. Because they weren't giving me their side of the story, right? They weren't. They weren't speaking to me at all. So by all means, do that. Okay? However, as you will see as we get further and further into this video, we delve from the realm of the public to the private. There's many yes, things discussed gay boy. in this video and that, we're gonna that make love to each other have tonight. absolutely nothing to do with the public. Um, and every once in a while, the public would try to pry into our private arrangements or whatever. And in a lot of times, <laughs> I was <laughs> the, the one who spoke fuck. and I'm brought buying, that I'm stuff buy. to the public and shouldn't have done that. Okay? At the very same time, there's definitely some stuff in this video that they made that I would feel is completely hitting below the belt. And in, in fact, there is one segment that I can't believe they made. There is one segment in this video that is incredibly hurtful to me, and I don't know how I'm going to get through it publicly with you guys because it's really fucked up. Like, beyond belief fucked up. Like, we're going to get to it. We're, I'm not going to skip it. We're going to do it, okay? Um, but... That's the thing he said. Oh, I'm not, we're not here to defame him. Okay, <laughs> fine. But understand that when you made this video, it doesn't matter what your intentions were, that's exactly what's going to happen. Okay? When you're going to make a video instead of addressing it with the person privately, you are going public with information that is defamation. It doesn't matter what your intentions were. Oh, I just want to stick up for myself. Fine. And you have the right to do that but you're also defaming the person at the same time. And absolutely, that's what happened, is this video was viewed as, here's the evidence from all the years that we said that Phil's a piece of shit and Phil's a scumbag and Phil's an asshole. Here's the definitive evidence. Even his closest friends hate him. And that's exactly how this video was presented on the internet for many, many years. Now, and this again, shocks me. I knew that if I responded to this video, all right, it would just hurt these guys. At that time, they had internet presences and everything. And I didn't want to do that at the time. Okay? Now it's different. Down in the past, they don't have internet presence anymore. They don't really care about it. They moved on. Thank God. I'm happy for them. I hope they have great lives outside the internet. But to this day, I am the one who gets questioned about this every single day. Why they make this video is what they said true. Yada, yada, yada. And... Again, good. some of the yeah, stuff in here, absolutely, I will fess up to. Good. Can I go some stuff, there's one right segment away from the I feel is so below the belt, so actually, like, ridiculously fucked up and off base that I don't even know how to respond money to. buff reduces your salt levels while the hat is but We'll worn. get to that. <laughs> like, I don't know fuck? about you, yeah. I'm not angry with the guy. Uh, we've said before publicly, like, we wish him the best, don't wish him any ill. You know, I hope he, like, makes a ton of cash. And uh, his great life, man. You know, yeah. um, why why would I not feel that way? What what is it? How does that affect me? Yeah, and you know? and going back to what we were saying before, there's a weird running pattern in this video as well, where John basically says, "I just wish everyone the best, everyone rich and famous and make money and do well. How does that affect me?" <clears throat> he doesn't just say it about me; he says it about others too. And we're gonna get that's coming up actually. But let's continue. Or I don't, we don't make money, I don't make <clears throat> money off of this. And I don't know about you, John, but it's not something that bothers me. It's just something I enjoy doing. Yeah, man, until this point, which is a good, jeez, uh, been like, been a long time. Until this point, we've not said anything against him. Because, like I said, I wish him the best. I don't want to hurt him. And saying anything negative about him, I feel could hurt his livelihood. And, uh... The other thing is, there's a lot of history. There's a lot of good times, man. There's a lot of really good times. And uh, you kind of uh, you piss on a lot of that stuff by doing this. And then I feel like things should be kept in-house amongst friends. You know, a circle of trust amongst friends, Howard. Do you believe in, in such things with people? No, I, I, I believe, I wholeheartedly believe in that. And that's yeah. why I'm a little ticked off about this, because... Howard, why are you ticked off? Howard, how are you involved? Howard, hello, Howard. You're not even in this. This is between me and John. When I, again, when I moved. Stop this! It was about me and John having an ongoing relationship. Me and John having content we were going to make together and still be friends and contact and all of that. Howard was not in our circle of friends. Howard was friends with John. But he was not a direct friend of mine who we even discussed 
<clears throat> having any kind of ongoing uh, relations of any sort. Seriously. Like, there was none of that. And again, I think people assumed this from this. Here you go. Here's the example. A picture of the three of us together from a video we made. A picture from the three of us together from a video we made. And you would see this on the internet. And you would think, oh... You know, Howard is massively involved in this. Howard is not massively involved in this in any way. This is me and John's relationship and Howard interjecting himself into this situation, likely for the purposes of this video, to try to accentuate reasons why they had a falling out with me. Because, quite frankly, there's several times here you will see another running pattern in this video. Howard seems to get very upset with me over things. He gets very, very over the top, uh, extrapolating, exponentially angry. Okay? And that's fine. If, you know, if he feels that I wronged him. But this is supposed to be in reference to why is John not Phil's friend anymore? Why is John not showing up in Phil's content? That was the discussion. When this video came out, it was, all of a sudden it's John and Howard. Wait, what? What are you talking about? Why are you in this video? Really? If he, he could have made his own video. But it's like double piling on of oh, this is it's so the circle of friends, the circle of trust. Yes, between me and John. Correct. Correct. When did I even ever publicly talk about Howard? Go ahead and I, you know, maybe I'm wrong and you can you can call me on this. I want you to call me on this. Go back and look during that time frame of me moving in 2014. And then 2015, and trying to talk to John, get an answer from John, right? Where, where did I even talk about it? It was me, always me and John. So this is like weird that this video is John and Howard reacts to Phil or responds to Phil. Phil wasn't talking about Howard. Phil wasn't looking to have content with Howard. Phil wasn't looking to, to, to have an ongoing friendship with Howard. He was our Street Fighter buddy who we brought in for certain projects and events and, and uh, you know, parties and things. And basically, and again, I'll, I'll tell you this, it's, we're going to get to this point. We basically kind of had a falling out at the end of when I moved, all right? And I never expected to even talk to the guy ever again. That's me being real talk with you guys. Like, I never thought that he would ever want to talk to me again. I really didn't have a desire to talk to him again because of the way that things went down at that last event that we did together. And that's going to be pulled out here and extrapolated upon later on in this video because he brings it up, okay? Um, so, again, it's weird to me. And by the way, I'm not trying to dump on Howard. I'm just saying this is weird that when this video came out, people were like, wow, Howard is really mean to you. Howard? How, again, like, what are you talking about, Howard? Like, I never heard a negative word from Howard. I'm, I'm serious about this now. Never did Howard call me and say, I'm mad at you. Never did Howard text me and say, why did you do that? Never in person did Howard say, man, you did something fucked up. Any complaint I ever heard was from John. And it was always an issue John had with me. It was never, oh, Howard is mad at me. This is literally the first time that I heard everything from Howard was this video. Okay? So let's make that clear. This whole situation was between me and John, not Howard. And it's weird that he interjects himself so often, apparently, into this when he was not involved. He just wasn't. Every once in a while, he'd be in it. And it's just so odd to me that it, that this was put out like this. Okay? Okay. By the way, I need to split the part soon. Probably another 10 minutes. You know, it's one of those things where, like, you know, you can't even trust him in terms of, like, sending a message, like a text message, because you don't know if that's going to get publicly put on, like, YouTube. Howard. Hello, Howard. You never sent me a text message outside of one or two, which will be addressed in this video. Okay. Um, we never had conversation like that behind the scenes ever. I never revealed a text from yours ever public. This is all John. He, he's literally talking and projecting John in what he's saying as if it happened to him. It didn't. This is John he's talking about. John, we would text back and forth. John was the one who I should not have, and I revealed some private information on one of my streams. Not Howard, but he's talking like it's him. It's not. This is a complete misrepresentation of the situation that happened to try to make me look worse, and I don't appreciate it. I just don't. You can say I'm bad because I did bad things, and here's the bad things. He's saying I did things to him that never happened, okay? Or if he's going to make a video about it. Because it's something, you know, if I send you a message, I don't expect you to the next day or two days later or whatever make a, a, 
you know, d during your regular vlog sessions, I didn't. you go ahead and, and you publicly read the message. That happened yeah. once with John. Yeah, not you. That's a good point because, yeah. like, what we're going to be doing today is kind of maybe revealing some things, and that's I've kind of really held against doing that because it does make you such a hypocrite to be doing the same thing that uh, has caused you pain or caused you, you know, to be pissed off. Now, you guys might give them a hard time for this. You may not. You say, well, you're, it's true. If they were angry at Phil for doing this, right? Then why did they make the video, okay? <clears throat> There's a lot of theories on this. <clears throat> they're, they're, what they say outright in the video is the reason they're doing this is to save face, to, to basically protect themselves. Because I said a lot of things that are false. Yeah. And they want to clear the air and defend themselves. And you'll see by the end of the video, they, they seem to say that they want me to contact them about this and hash it out, okay? But again... The video has a lot of stuff in it that's not true or half truth. The whole how this Howard stuff is wrong. Okay, PayPal is that again? There's one thing in this video that is so hurtful to me to this day that I still use, I'm gonna have a hard time. A, a magnetic stripe okay? receptacle, and they know uh, that. Digitally it's online not that they didn't to transfer. Know. Uh, they knew from one entity that that was going to hurt me, and that's why they included that in the capacity. video. Okay? Uh, it is reported this, uh, you to can, the IRS. As much as you can say, this is for them to defend themselves. All right. From my perspective, I feel like this is a final goodbye. Like, this is them saying to me, listen, we tried to ghost you for a year, man. You're not getting the picture. Here's our side of the story. Stop bothering us. We don't, we're tired of you. The toxicity of your trolls is ruining our lives. The shit you're saying is hurting us. Just fucking move on and leave us alone. That's how I, I take this. To this day, when I watch this, I still feel that way. Maybe you guys will watch it and feel different. But again, you don't understand the perspective that I have because you haven't heard it yet. You're going to hear it, okay? All right. Um, but if it's the play, like enough is enough, man. At this point, we're gonna jump a shark, and uh, things got to be put out there, man. Sadly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the thing that the thing that's like, it's another thing that's sad about it is no one listens to this kind of stuff, and then. Or let's just uh, like him talk about us, or us talk about him, and, and then goes, "Oh, these guys are fucking cool." You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. It's disgusting stuff. It's sad. It's not. You're not creating content. It's freaking yep. garbage content uh, for the bottom right. of the barrel, man. And, and it's what it is. But you get dragged into it. Why do you think? Why do you think I avoided doing this for six and a half years? Right. For as many people that are watching this right now, and just want to have clarity on what happened, how the hell did this friendship fall apart? There's another half of the people here who are just drama hound idiots who just want to fucking laugh at the situation and make fun of us and say, ah, oh, Phil's a scumbag and this and that. It's fucked up. He's right. This is not, there's no winners in a situation like this. There's just never is. All right. That's why I'm trying to approach it from a point of view to let you guys know. I know I was wrong with the stuff that I did, but I also do have to call out the things in here that are pretty ridiculously unfair oh, no. Someone's of which we will address and we've already oh, no. started. Wait. No. So, you know, getting back to his video, it's really full of what's, as I said, it's an example of the problem itself. You know, it's, it's full of what's been a long history of him saying things publicly, out of turn, exaggerating things, and or saying, just, just saying shit that's not, uh, just not true. Yeah. Okay. We're going to split the video here. Okay. By the way, now we're going to make headway because I don't have to give that giant half an hour to 45 minutes of you know, backstory, we're going to start making big progress in the video, but I want to split it. I don't have a seven hour video. So for the purposes of YouTube, if you're watching this on demand on YouTube, there's going to be more parts coming. If you're watching this on stream, just stay put. I'm about to just split the part. Here we go. All right, guys, really briefly, YouTube I just want you to the restroom and then we're going to resume. Okay. I'm just going to run, run here, use the restroom quick. I'll be right back. It'll be one minute, not even. Okay. I'll be right back. None of anyone's business. $16.51 from PayPal. $1.50 
$110.09 from Apple iTunes. All right, ready? Jump right back in. <clears throat> so just so you guys know, the food's coming around 4 p.m. Pacific time, about 90 minutes from now. So we're going to do 90 minutes, and then it's time for Feasting with the King. And then we go back to this, because there's no way we're done with this in 90 minutes, okay? But all right, you guys ready? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to DSP Reacts to the John and Rambo response video from 2015. So far, uh, whew, we haven't gotten too far into it, but that's because I talked a lot. But now we're going to get heavily into it, all right? If you have not seen part one already, I strongly recommend you go check it out first or else you're going to have no idea what's going on. That has all the references you need to get up to this point. Um, thank you for watching. Blah, 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 There's no monetization blah, 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 on this video at all. If you see it, it's not me. I'm not doing it. Okay, let's continue. Here we go. About me, about others, man, so... And uh, again, if people get, if get down on my just listening to this, thank you and still be on camera, as a consolation prize, if you really think about it, if you're a fan of Phil's, you have to agree that I did, and I know you did to an extent, everything you could to help him over the years. You know, and so much so, so that to this day, he makes money off of videos that mm -hmm. we're in to this day, every day. Yeah. Whether it's, you know, 10 cents, whether it's 10 bucks, whatever the hell it is. He's making money off, you know, off of the work we did for him every single day. Mm -hmm. He's and right. He's still finding new ways to, to monetize us. Well, uh, not today. Based on that video. Not today, John. Maybe maybe up to this point, but not today. If I was going to do this React, there was no way I was going to monetize it. Um, for good reason. Like I said, that's the major point he says. No, not monetizing this whatsoever. And uh, it's too important. It's too important to monetize. It really is. Okay. <clears throat> Video and... Uh... Other things that go on. Yeah, pretty and much. And by the way, again. Oh, I don't care about the money. It's not about the money. But then they. Okay. Yeah. Oops. And then I, I think, I, I really think that like. Uh, it's Dark Dave's fault. It really, it really, it's really like a testament as to what what he held our friendships for because it feel it's, it seems that the money was more important than us being his friend. Yeah. I mean, that's how you feel. Yeah. That's I'm sad that they feel, that's... I'm really sad that they feel that way. I really, 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 really am sad that they feel that way because as I said it's over the years, Kevin's to, you fault. Guys, to me, it was like, we were friends. We would hang out. We were going to hang out regardless and have fun. So if you could put a silly camera down and record what you're doing, and make money doing it, why not, right? Like to me, I was doing YouTube as a hobby for two and a half years before I could even put ads on my videos and make a living doing it, right? John was in my content before I could monetize. We were having fun already. So to me, it was like, let's hang out, let's have a good time together. Hey, by the way, we can make money doing it. Why the fuck not, right? To them, it seems to be like, that's that's not a case. Um that because there was money involved, that that wasn't like friends hanging out. To me, it was. The entire time we did Project 7, was it work? Yes, but was it a bunch of friends working together and having a shitload of fun doing it? Hell yes. That was a really cool experience. So what's the issue with the money-making part of it? That I didn't understand. Um, and again, never brought up. It wasn't like they complained and said, Phil, you know, we really don't have enough 
stuff that happens without the cameras. I need though. that money. I really do. Phil, I need that it'd be money. Great. If we could hang out bills. today, and you didn't record. And by the way, that did happen a lot. You know, we went to a convention. I wasn't recording every moment that we were there. Uh, when we went over to Howard's house to play Super Turbo frequently because he had cabinets there, he recorded and broadcast all of that. Not me. I didn't record while we were there at all, usually. Um, I, that was just me having fun with those guys. Okay? So it wasn't like every single interaction I had with these guys the camera was on. They definitely are saying that in this video many times. That wasn't the case. But that's definitely like how they're spinning it. Whenever John Rambo came over to do a weekly co-op with me, which we would do Smart Guys, our wrestling commentary show, and then we would actually do gameplay co-op, we would have like an hour to two hours of conversation before we ever even took a camera out. Just shooting the shit, hanging out, having a good time, talking about our lives, right? Like I said, I felt like I was actually really close friends with John Rambo. I don't know if he felt the same way you know, or that it was reciprocated, but I felt that way for sure. Like, he was the guy who uh, I, I kind of opened up to about stuff. Was that on camera? No. A lot of stuff was on camera, but that was the fun part. Was, oh, let's play games and dick around. Let's talk about wrestling and make a buck on it. But not not the other stuff. And there, there's private conversations we had over the years that, None of us have ever talked about publicly, you know, private shit about me and, and him about him. And we would never talk about that publicly. Like, we had, we were friends. To me, when they say, oh, you know, it was only about the money for Phil, that gets to me badly. That that hurts because that's not the case with John. With, with Howard, again, we never had that close personal friendship. He would come over to be in other co-op shit we were doing or Project 7. But how John, I don't know how he could possibly say that. Really, that's really hurtful to me. For them to say something like that. When John and I, I feel, did have a real friendship. We were hanging out playing Street Fighter together before I ever turned on a camera for YouTube from 2006, 2007, 2008, 2009. How can you say we didn't have a friendship? And it was only about the money. When we had that friendship way before YouTube was a thing. That blows my mind. You can watch. Go watch the videos that are out there. But understand that there's history behind it that you didn't know. You know? And it seems like he's just saying, oh... We were only friends during the YouTube years. That's completely false. It's completely false. All right. But what I will say is this. When I became a full-time YouTuber, I became a workaholic and I worked my ass off constantly making videos seven days a week. I did not have a day off when I started monetizing my videos on YouTube in 2011, 2012. It was Mr. No Days Off. I'm just here to pump out videos for the internet and make money on it. Right. That was my life. I loved it. I loved gaming and everything, but that was absolutely positively my life. Um, was there time that I made to hang out with these guys outside of that? Every once in a while, if I went over to play Super Turbo at Howard's house, we were all there together or going to a convention. We went to several conventions and events together. And even though, yes, I filmed there, the vast majority of the time that I spent at those events was not filming. It was spending time hanging out with these guys. Okay. So again, this is, I feel, a misrepresentation of the situation. Absolutely, there was a ridiculous amount of filming and monetization of the time we spent together, but there was definitely friendship behind there as well. Again, it, Howard, whatever. Say whatever you want. We weren't close friends. John, we were. And that's incredibly hurtful to me that he says this. Like, all we ever did was record and make videos together and make money. That wasn't the case at all. Um, and sadly, after I moved, it just got worse because now he's not there to be in person with and have the conversation. So instead it became text messages back and forth and he didn't like that. He wanted me to call him and I really couldn't. And we'll talk about that because he's going to bring that up later specifically. And we'll address it at that point why there were no phone calls between us after I moved. All right. We'll get to that. But anyway, <clears throat> let's continue now because they're going to get to a certain point. That's, that's how I feel because, you know, I... I don't know. There's like a whole bunch of things that we got to talk about, and I don't want to go yeah, ahead and, and go out of turn. All right. But, I, got, I got you. Yeah. I'll try to keep this, uh, you know, keep this rolling here. Yeah. Um, in that video, uh, he says, this is the Thanksgiving video I'm talking about. He says, we just he, watched about, he says they talked shit about me. I don't know if you caught that part. I didn't say that. You could go back in this very video, or actually it was part one. I didn't say that. What I said was, you know, if you, and this was me being very stupid, essentially what I was saying was, don't be passive aggressive. 
If you have an issue with someone, come out and say it. Don't talk shit. Don't hide the truth. I never said that they did talk shit about me. Okay? I never actually outright say that in yes, the video. Yes, they said that you're a gay boy. Can you say that I insinuated it? Yes. Gonna make Can love you say that I said it? Tonight. No, because I never said it. What I was saying was, I'm not the kind of person who would do that. That's actually how I phrased that. I said, I wouldn't talk shit. I wouldn't do that. If I have an issue with someone, I tell them to their face about it. Okay? That's the point I was making in that video. <clears throat> However, John did talk shit about me. And we're about to watch it because he glosses over it in this video um, without actually showing the actual evidence of, like, what he's talking about. And now you're going to see it because, by the way, this is really where this video is where the big problem started with my trolls getting interjected into the situation. It was this very video you guys are about to see that started all the problems with the trolls harassing us on both sides. Let's do it. Yep. yep. And I'm not exactly sure what that is in reference to. Now, there was a video I put out, Pay Me Tons, parody, right? Yep. Hi, Here it is. My name is John, and I'm special because I upload videos to the internet. But being so important does have its dark side. In fact, it means that my life is much more difficult than everyone else's. While you're following the average path of working a traditional job, attending school, or perhaps both, I'm following my dreams and busting my ass. Talking over video games, posting breakfast pics, and vlogging about movies that I hate. Creative things, and as we all know, creativity is fueled by pure cash. This is why I've opened a Pay Me Tons account. It's an internet website that allows people like me to receive lots of creativity from people like you. Simply log in and transfer the entirety of your bank account into my Pay Me Tons account. I won't even get out of bed for less than $50. And then together, we'll make sure that the world, well, my world, is a much more creative place. I'm not sure where we talk shit about him. I mean, we made that Amy Tons parody that says Dark Side in it. But I'm not sure where we talk shit about him, okay? Now, for the record, I think this is funny. I do. I laugh at this. I think this is fucking hilarious. This is a razzing, okay? But this is a razzing that happens, okay? in early 2015. It might have been late 2014, but I'm pretty sure it was early 2015. This happened on John Rambo's podcast. This was an open, like a cold open to his podcast, okay? <clears throat> At the time, no, and now I know it was early 2015 because that's when I opened my Patreon. So it was early 2015. At this point, a year, it's almost a year has happened, okay? Almost a year has happened, all right? So, or since I moved. I've been trying to, to, to have constant contact with John and have conversation, figure out what's going on with him. Is he okay? Figure out where we're going to make content. And every time that I texted him, I felt like he felt like I was always about asking about videos or content. And that wasn't the case. I never felt like every time that I would reach out to John, it was about let's make videos, let's make videos. I was genuinely interested in how he was doing and everything that because he was in a, a very stressful time where he was making Schnozman a whole punch and a lot of other stuff was going on. He actually talks about this in this video, so it's okay for me to say this is not private. He already talks about it in this video, okay? So this was the time frame, like mid to late 2014, early 2015. John stops directly responding to me. He stops responding to my texts and everything, okay? People are constantly asking me, Phil, what is going on with you and John? Why, you know, are you going to do content with him? Is he talking? What's going on? All right. I should have said, fuck off. None of your business. That's where, okay. Maybe not fuck off. That's kind of harsh. Maybe I should have said, none of your business. Don't ask me that question. It's between me and John. But instead I would constantly, oh, I don't know. Everything's fine. Maybe we're going to do content later this year. I'll let you know. Oh, John. And then sometimes I would sadly <laughs> reveal information. Thanks for the money, that, stupid John fuck. did text me back. I would this say man is a living I, I should have said that was private. My fault. All that I'll take responsibility for. Okay. John's not talking to me actively at all. Everyone suspects there's an issue there, but I'm not being truthful. Truth is, I don't know 
what the issue is, but he's not talking to me anymore. After months of not talking to me, he puts this out. So what do you think the people on the internet think this is? This is Even if he's saying it's not about me, even though it says dark side in it, it's about me, okay? What do you think people think? Wow. John out of nowhere, out of left field, just slammed Phil. Phil hasn't said anything bad or insulting about John, but John just slammed him. Wow. He fired the first shot. And that's the funny part because they said in this video, Phil fired the first shot. Okay. Me unfollowing them on Thanksgiving was firing the first shot, according to Howard. Um, no, I was not trying to hurt them by unfollowing them on Thanksgiving. This is a direct, intentional, concerted effort, a produced segment of a show slamming me for opening a Patreon. Has my name in it. You can't dispute it's about me. Sorry, you just can't. Okay? Now, the funny part is, in that Thanksgiving video that I made in 2015, I never said that they talked shit about me. I said if I was someone in a situation that had an issue, I would be public about it, confront someone to their face about it, and not talk shit. I never said they did. They did. But I never said they did. All of a sudden, they're bringing it up in this video. They're even referencing this Pay Me Ton segment. Why? Because either one of two things. They're feeling guilty because John made the segment and it absolutely was about me. So this is a way for them to try to deflect that and say it wasn't. Or because everyone construed it as thus and messaged the shit out of them saying, why did you make this about Phil when I he hasn't said money. anything really negative about you? Why are you slamming him in this video? I don't understand. Okay. Now, personally, I didn't take this as a direct insult. And they're actually going to talk about that. So let's continue. Let's switch back over here. Okay, here we go. And it's a parody, man. I've done parodies in the past. Just to give you... It's a parody that has my name in it. If it has someone's name in it, it's not a parody. A parody is a caricature of a person making fun of something. Not... So you directly reference my name. So it is actually a slam on me. It's not a parody. A parody would have been you know, a cartoonish content creator who isn't me, but maybe could be construed as me. You said dark side in the video. That's not a parody anymore. You've, you've passed the realm of parody when you name drop someone. The okay. whole idea of Dawn parodies about machinima. I did a, a YouTube parody where YouTube was a, uh, a talking uh, vagina, a vagina robot that ran yep. YouTube. His parodies in the past, machinima, the partner network that everyone knew that I was with for the longest period of time. YouTube, the website that I put videos on for a living. You see the running pattern here? Oh, I've done parodies in the past. Oh, by the way, every parody just That's happens insult. to also be related to Phil. What a coinky dink, right? What a, what a shocking coincidence that they all actually are related to things that have to do with Phil. Those others didn't name drop me, though. This one did. Okay. The GameStop, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Comes out, man. Oh, and I, you, you, you missed that. He said GameStop, et cetera, et cetera. He did do a parody on GameStop. GameStop unfairly fired him because he was in my videos. We were at a tournament way back when, I think it was, I want to say 2009, 2010. We're at a Street Fighter tournament together. I'm filming. He's working for GameStop, and in the video, we're in a different game store, and he's basically saying things like, this is the best game store. They used that video, my video, as grounds to terminate him. Now, it's completely wrong. Shouldn't have ever happened. They were in the wrong for doing that. He made a giant later on. He, he talked all about this in his podcast, and he did a big parody segment about GameStop. Okay? So what does he do parodies about? Things that he feel have wronged him or things that, that, you know, are bad in relation to him. And all of it has to do with me somehow. Right? Okay. People get a little crazy about it. So, two weeks later, you know, you and I were on, uh, doing the show, and we explained it wasn't singling him out, you know. Has my it name was, in it. Uh, it was about many, many things. And not necessarily in a hateful manner. Like, I think you can make fun of something. That I agree with. And uh, really not feel negatively about it at all, actually. Completely agree. Yeah. Like, Saturday Night Live, you know, Phil Hartman would uh, dress as Bill Clinton. I don't think he wanted to assassinate the president. <laughs> Very, very bad analogy, <clears throat> okay, because 
He's saying Phil Hartman impersonates Bill Clinton. He doesn't want to assassinate the president. True. That's absolutely true. Um, but in this case, this was a different situation. No one was asking Bill Hartman, hey, Bill Hartman, didn't you used to have a friendship with, with Bill Clinton? Phil Hartman, excuse me. Did you have a friendship with Bill Clinton and you're not talking to him anymore, even though he keeps saying he wants to talk to you, you're ghosting him, and now all of a sudden you drop this video on him? There's a difference. It's, it's context. The context is there's a sketch comedy show at night that makes fun of everything equal and isn't Ill, Ill, Ill intentioned at all versus someone who everyone wants to know why you're not talking to Phil. You won't tell Phil or anyone else. And now you make a, a video that can be construed as a negative video about Phil. It's a completely different situation that he fails to really understand why it was construed by the internet like that. Again, I don't think it was actually intended, all right, as a video to be hurtful to me. I think he thought it was funny. I think it's funny, but you have to put it in context of the time. If he had released that video two years prior when we were still active friends and he was in my content or whatever, that would have been different. This is a situation where he's ghosting me. He's not in my content like he said he would be. And then he puts that out. Of course, the internet is going to say that's a hit piece on Phil. Why'd you do it? And he got harassed for it. Basically, he got a lot of trolling for it at that time. Okay. Right. Yep. It's uh, just having a good time with something. And that was really my, uh, what was it about, man? <clears throat> now, was he like an inspiration for the character that I was portraying in that? To, yeah, sure, to an extent, you know? But again, not in a malicious, uh, hateful way. I believe that. It's having some fun with something. Um, but it's not, again, it's, 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 I think it's hard to say it's directly about one person. Except this is dark side yeah, in it. Yeah, it was a whole thing. The whole thing was about that, that pay me... Or pay me, wow, Patreon right. uh, uh, website. You know. And now here comes Howard with a little segment I like to call Howard Deflect. Because this is going to happen many, many times during this video. Let's see how Howard can deflect this one off of them doing something wrong. You know, what people do and, you know, and, and then what it is too, it's, it's when you, when you look at it, it's, it's, it's to basically shed light on some of the negativity that, that revolves around that site and not only that site, but Kickstarter. Mm. Look at all the shenanigans that has, has gone, that has transpired in the past like few years where people like raise up all this money, promise a, a product, and then, and then basically everyone's SOL. They, they took the money and people are fucked. Mm. You know, look at what happened with, you know, look at the disaster that uh, Inafune is going on out with that uh, mighty number nine. That's still not out. Yeah, I'm uh, waiting for that one. Looking for you know. it, uh, hopefully it comes soon. <clears throat> Howard feels that a Pay Me Tons parody about Patreon, the content of which directly name drops me, makes fun of someone who basically is a content creator who does video content like Stop playing this. games, commenting over food, etc., and asking for monetary compensation for said work is the equivalent of a Kickstarter campaign where a company does not provide a product for a contractual basis that is agreed to in said campaign for fundraising. Patreon is not Kickstarter. They're not even close to being the same, all right? He brings up a game in Afune's Mighty Number no. 9, which did eventually come out, did live up to all expectations. Of course, at this point, it didn't. So he didn't know that, that that was going to happen. But he's essentially saying, if you have a Patreon, you are taking someone's money and running and never producing said content that you promised to produce. That's what he's saying, okay? That Pay Me Tons segment was made in early 2015. There was no controversy around my Patreon at that point. This video was made later on in 2015 after that had happened, okay? If you want to know the, the skinny on that, again, you can go watch me referring to the Down the Rabbit Hole video, Dark Side Phil. We go into that whole Patreon situation, Okay? So over the course of the year that this is out, they changed the narrative. Oh, this wasn't about us just making fun of filmmaking content. You see, this is us criticizing Kickstarter as a whole and saying that people aren't living up to the, the, the goals that they're promising or whatever, which is actually in, incidentally one of the controversies that I was embroiled in at the time with Patreon, okay? So it's he's completely deflecting. Ooh. My name is in the parody. You can't deny it's about me. If they had not put Dark Side in there, you can argue that. My name, Dark Side, is in the parody. It's about me directly. 
Personally, do I think that it was an actual meaningful meaning mean insult? No. People told me about this. I watched it back myself, and I responded publicly and said, I don't think that's an insult towards me. It's kind of a funny joke. Yeah, it's razzing me, but they're not directly insulting me in this video. I don't believe it is. Okay? So if that's the case, why are they bringing it up in their video? Right? I outright said it's not an insult. I didn't say in my Thanksgiving 2015 video that they had talked shit about me. I said if I was someone who had an issue with someone else, I would say it to their face and I would not talk shit or anything like that. I'm telling you what I would not do if I were in their situation. I didn't say they did it. You could say that I insinuated it, but I never said it. They are actually, in my opinion, <clears throat> guilty. They're feeling guilty that they made that, or John feels guilty that he made that. And to the point where so many people contacted him saying, you know, that's kind of mean-spirited. You made that about Phil at a time when you were kind of not talking to him and you were supposed to be in his content and you're not. And this is kind of messed up. You did it. And he's got this underlying guilt that he made it. And now he has to talk about it to defend himself in this video when I never brought it up. I, I Again, I outright said, and he'll even say this, I outright said, it's not about me. He's not insulting me. So why, John, are you bringing it up in this video then? I don't understand. And then why did you have Howard deflect the whole situation and say it was about Kickstarter? Patreon is not Kickstarter. They're two completely separate businesses with different intentions. It's not even equivalent. It's like apples and oranges. Massive deflection and an epic fail of a deflection right Stop there. this! So, yeah. People make promises and they don't, you know, go through with them. And that's basically what the parody was about, you know? Yeah, because I mean, I hate... Wrong. You know, I hate yeah. nothing to do with Kickstarter. people that use it or something. No, I really... <laughs> Honestly, if everyone on there, hope you, like, everyone gets a million dollars a month. Yeah. Like, what it doesn't... Again, it doesn't affect me in any... John, if you say things like, I hope that everyone out there makes a million dollars a month, it doesn't affect me then why are you saying it? If it doesn't affect you, why are you saying it? Because it affects you. Listen, I'm guilty of this too. Why do I sometimes name drop other content creators that are bigger and more successful than me? Because I'm jealous. That's why. Yes, I'm jealous of PewDiePie. Yes, I'm jealous of Markiplier. They're rich. I'm not. I'm jealous of them. Why do you think I bring them up? Right? You can... Why would you even have a parody of that in your show unless you're somehow affected by it and feel that it's meaningful to you. It's a false narrative. He is affected by this. Money was a factor or else it, none of this shit would have been brought up ever. If it really didn't bother him, he wouldn't make the parody about it. He's trying to bring light, a humorous light, to something that he feels maybe is kind of wrong. Not outright hurtful or criminal, My but wrong. Like he doesn't app, agree app, app. that people make Why content and have a Patreon <laughs> so people can support it with finances like that. He doesn't agree with like that. App, That's app, why app, he app, made app. that no. clip. Sounds nothing like that at all. Don't then say, oh, it doesn't affect me. I hope you're all rich. No, you wouldn't have made the clip oh, if it didn't affect you. It's WWE complete champions. bullshit. So like, I know, because I'm a bullshitter too, and I've done it over the years shit. with these other guys. Yes, you are 100% you're affected by this, but you wouldn't have made it. It's just, it's cause and effect, man. WWE champions um, lives rent free. But again, my, my main thing was like looking around YouTube and seeing that no one has done a WWE parody champions. of this. You do, which is interesting. You you do. No one, like, uh, no one ever made a parody of Patreon, well, according idiot. to John here. You're an obsessed loser. Because, you know, people want to have one. They don't want to make fun of it or something, or you know, <clears> or they will be called a hypocrite if they have one or something. So I felt like, oh, I could get away. I could get away with making fun of this thing. Because uh, I'm not looking to really make money on this or really have the option. <laughs> I'm not really looking to make money or I don't really have the option. It's all in the way he says it. Not that he doesn't wish that he could make money. He doesn't have the option to do it. And that's why he's making parodies about Patreon, people that's trying to make salt. a living doing it. He doesn't feel he'll, he could be successful doing it. He says it right there. Yeah. So I put it out, and, and here's a little secret for you. I don't really matter that much on YouTube. It's not a video that got a billion views. Now here we go. Now he's really... da now he's downplaying himself on you. Oh, I'm not popular on YouTube. This is again going with his narrative. I can't make a living doing it. It's okay for me to make the parody. He's punching up essentially, is what he's saying. I can make that parody because I'm punching up. True. But you're punching up at me, who's supposed to be your friend. Right? You're put you my name is in the video. You're punching up at someone who's your friend. Here. You're punching up at someone who why did I open the Patreon? Because I was having financial difficulties at the time. And by making that parody, you're you want to say who shot the first shot? 
I mean, okay, maybe you say unfollowing someone on Twitter is shooting the first shot. I say this is the first situation. This is the first outright kind of aggressiveness. Well, you get this passive aggressive. It's still aggressiveness towards me from John, okay? Can you really say it affected you in a negative way? Yes. And despite all that... Yes. I was mass messaged by people constantly. Phil, why did John insult you? Phil, are you weird? John insulted you? Here, here it is. They were tweeting me. They were emailing me. It was on my video comments. It was on my stream comments. It was everywhere I went. John hates you. And it was toxic shit, and it made me feel like shit. Not that John made it, but that everyone's harassing me about it. Yes, it did absolutely positively, negatively affect me again. 2015 was one of the worst years of my life. All this negative shit was piling up. This was just the cherry on top of the shit Sunday. All this other shit going on. Do I really need someone who's supposed to be my friend piling on as well? Of course not. But it happened. We came out and said it wasn't directly about him. It's we wish Kevin's him the very fault. Best. And uh, just said we're not going to be part of his stuff. Nope. And, uh, that didn't happen. We said it wasn't about him. We wish him the very best. and said we're not going to be a part of his stuff. That never happened. Did they say it wasn't about me? Yes. Did they ever say, all right, we're outright saying to the public, we're not going to be a part of Phil's stuff. You, no. It always seems like it's a black That was part of the problem, that they like never no did that. We contribute, they were doing that, and they'll actually problems. admit this you're later on in the video. And, and nothing's they were doing this behind the I scenes. I agree with you. They were talking to people in person that they ran into, and people were like, hey, whatever happened to you and, and, and Phil, are you going to do anything with them? And John would basically tell, no, we don't associate with him anymore. But they didn't tell me. It's none of anyone's business. Again, it's it's the passive aggressiveness, and... It's not, it's, it's being half truthful. Yes, they did tell people we're not going to associate, but not publicly. So everyone was constantly pounding me with requests as to why aren't you doing something with John? What's going on with John? And I had no answers. How was that? So I don't see how that's talking shit about, we're talking shit about him. On top of that, after the Pay Me Tons video came out, he publicly said, if John does a skit making fun of Patreon, it doesn't mean he's correct. talking shit about me. Co absolutely correct. I'd I said like, that. I'd like to know. Yeah. Where was the shit talk? Right. It's like one of those things where but you I can... didn't say, But I didn't say you shit. I shit. You should talk to me. I never said it. We just watched the video. I said if I was in that situation, I wouldn't shit talk. I didn't say you did. You can say there's an insinuation there, but that's a jump. And no, I wasn't saying that they had shit talked me. Um, they are feeling guilty about this Pay Me Tons video all year long because people said, hey, you basically insulted Phil with this. And now they're projecting that onto me when I didn't say something that, I, that they're saying I said, you see. Um, I outright said that they didn't insult me. So why is this even an issue and why is this being discussed? I have no idea. Just put, say something in a video. It's like, oh, they talk shit, but you have no didn't say examples they talk of shit. this. So people just kind of go, oh, they talk shit. They must, they must have done it. But I didn't say that. Yeah, and, and <laughs> you know, it, it's just one of those things that people like... I feel bad because he doesn't know how to uh, let go of things. I guess people like, you know, and this happens with anything. You know, people jam you with stuff yep, on like Twitter right. and they prod you and prod you and yes. prod you to try we're to get a response Twitter. out of it. And he fell right into the shenanigans. Yeah, you know what? And we're falling yeah. into it right now because I was, honestly, yeah, we're I think falling he's falling into it right now too because he, 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 he threw a shot, and then we are we didn't want to throw the shot, but now we have to throw the shot. Yeah, and it's, it's weird. It's weird timing. Why, why yeah. did you pick that day at that time? And the, you know, it's so it's weird because now I don't even know what they're talking about. Are they talking about when I unfollowed them on Twitter in 2014, or are they talking about the video I put out in my holiday Ask the King that I always do on Thanksgiving in 2015, I actually have no idea which, which they're even talking about because, again, already they've already jumped from 2015 to 2014 to the Pay Me Tons segment. It's Where's the timeline? What are they even talking about? I don't know. I actually have no idea, okay? um, But I agree with Howard. I have always been terrible at damage control. I have always had an issue where if I get attacked from multiple directions... And back then it was way worse, by the way. Today, we got our shit under control, right? We do. Today, you got a ton of people in the in the chat being dicks to me right now. I'm not paying any attention. I don't care. It doesn't bother me anymore, you know? But back then, if people came on me at Twitter, at me, you know, came at me in my, my video comments, 
came at me in my stream chat, on my forums. I fell for it. Hook, line, and motherfucking sinker. Motherfucking sinker, bro. I just yomp like a big fish. Here, oh, there's a worm. Ah, eat that shit. I fell for it all the time. I always took the bait. I always got angry. This is what people were doing. They were troll baiting me constantly. Oh, so <laughs> Ultimate oh, taking oh, of the bait. So I was such an idiot. And I would get upset about shit for no fucking reason that I never should have got upset about. I let these trolls get to me. That is why, for sure, that is why things got so bad with the internet and me, with this is how you don't plays and shit. They're like, the worse that we get, the more we get to fill and the better reaction we get. And Howard, 100% correct here. All right? I was the public-facing figure, not them. Did they have their own internet shit going on? Yes, but I was the one who made a living on the internet. So I was the one who saw it every single day. Every video, every stream, every comment everywhere. Where's Where's John? What's going on with John? Why isn't John in the, in the video? Why isn't he making the videos with you? What did you do to John? Why? Why, Phil? Why did you ruin John's friendship with you? And I'm like, what the fuck, man? So then I would say dumb shit. I would. I would completely say dumb shit that was out of turn, that was insulting, that was dumb, that was revealing private information, and it's all wrong. I have no defense against that at all. Zero. I did it. It's wrong. They're going to bring up instances of it. Can't defend it. All right? At least today, if you haven't noticed, we do have things better under control when it comes to things, comments on the streams and things like that. It's not a constant toxic universe anymore. The, I would argue... <clears throat> that the universe of Dark Side Phil at one point was a very toxic place to be. We have definitely improved that over the years, okay? But no, I can't defend it. Howard, absolutely correct in this statement. I was completely guilty. Why am I toxic? Okay. Uh, like we did the show through, uh, Wednesday, and we were like talking shit or, or there's anything that has to do with them. It's like, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a attempted at trolling. Yep. It's, uh, l let me say something, hopefully they'll respond, then I could come back with something else, and I create a whole situation of drama around That's myself. That's not true. You know, and uh, I think this is what he wanted us to do. This is why I haven't done this uh, ever until now. Despite him, you know, running me down on his forums, on Twitter, on, on his we'll chat. talk about that. You know, and but, like, try to do stuff on the sneak. But I catch wind of all this stuff, man. People send me all this stuff. Yeah, and for the most then, part, I don't. I don't look at it, but with things like this happen, I'll go through and see what's what's going down. So he's saying there's a campaign against him. Like I was constantly trying to like talk shit about him and bring him down and stuff. Again, that wasn't the intention, but again, it's troll bait. Trolls baiting me into saying dumb shit or trying to get emotion out of me, right? About the situation specifically, he doesn't bring up any specifics, so I can't directly react to what he's saying and say, "Oh, here's what I meant" or whatever. So I don't know. I can confirm it happened. Happened on Twitter. Yes, happened on my phone. My forums. Boy. My God, there was like two or three so assholes on my forums. We're gonna make love to each other tonight. Constantly pelt me with shit about this and try to get this out, and I would fall for it every time I typed a paragraph. I fell for it. Like, oh my God, I did it again. I did it again. But here's the thing: he's trying to kind of say that like I'm doing it behind the scenes. Everything I did was public. My forums are public. You can see them right now. I didn't delete the posts. My Twitter's public. My videos are public. Everything's public. It's not like Phil is is trying to do a underhanded backstabbing campaign where he's bad mouthing John behind the scenes and shit. I did it in public. I mean, maybe that's even worse, right? But it seems like he's trying to say like, "Oh, I got wind of it." Now, John, you got wind of it because my trolls baited me and then they sent you my responses. They did it on purpose. It was a, a concerted campaign. They tried to get me to react badly so that you would see me react badly and be angry with me. You, I mean, I fell for it, and then you did too. You know, this was absolutely them trying to create friction between us, and I was guilty because I was the one with the public face. Again, I was the one who got attacked with it every day. How are you going to reach John? Hit him with a video comment, tweet him. He doesn't even check his Twitter that often. You don't have other ways. I had to be public every day. It was my job. He didn't have to. Okay? But in reality, I'm guilty of this. You know, again, I fess I up to it. But absolutely, John bit hook, line, and sinker too. But the trolls sent him. He's like, oh, I got wind of it. How did you get wind of it? Because the troll sent it to you, dude. I mean, how did you not realize this, who it was? They were getting me to say stupid shit so that they could show it to you and you'd be mad at me. That was the point. That was what they were intending to do to begin with. You see? Okay. Let's continue. Um, You know, it's an attempt to 
It's an attempt to get something going. Oh, and by the yeah. way, he says this is an attempt to get something going. The reason he he's talking like this and the reason he made that Thanksgiving video that we watched at the very beginning is because he wants to say something, then we'll say something, then he'll say something. It'll be drama going back and forth for, for attention on the internet. Wrong. All right? I'm going to reveal this later uh, in depth, but the reason that I did that in that Thanksgiving video was because I needed to prompt an action because in my life, I had a lot of fucked up stuff going on. This was one of them. I hate my job. I was actually having a lot of problems behind the scenes tiger, mentally tiger. because of a row, what a bad a row, year it was tiger, for me. A row, um, a row. We'll talk more about that because there's a specific segment of this video that addresses things. You're like, I don't understand. And when I explain, you'll understand. Do you um, want to play the fucking game? I never in my wildest dreams expected they were going to do a public video like this. First of all, Howard at all. Howard has nothing to do with it. But John, um, I never expected it. I thought this would be the straw that broke the camel's back, that he would either call me or start responding to my texts again and say what was going on. Because again, he had been ghosting me essentially for almost a year at this point when I made that Thanksgiving video 2015, okay? So that's what I thought. I thought, all right, if there really is an issue, which he always said there was never an issue, he never said there was an issue. He would on ongoing tell me, oh, God. All right, everybody, what's... <laughs> okay, that's the wrong video. I guess we got to get out of there. There we go. Try it. I would oh, try God, to now we're at the end of the video. Anyway, he would outright tell me when he did respond, there was no issue. Don't worry, there's no issue. If there is an issue, we're going to work it out. I'm going to be in your content. It's things on my side and yada, 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 that kind of shit. And then... um. He just stopped responding entirely. And when he stops responding entirely, it's like, like, dude, come on, at least be honest or truthful or upfront and transparent with me, you know? Um, and he wouldn't be. He would just ghost me. So I thought making that Thanksgiving video would prompt him to finally reach out. And even if, if it was, Phil, I've had enough, okay? I've seriously had enough about with you. I don't ever want to be your friend again. At least if he had done that, there would have been closure, Okay. That's what I was looking for, closure, because there was, it was open-ended, and people were constantly hounding me about this and wouldn't leave it alone. And I was like, the only way I'm ever going to get closure is to force the hand. Banned, is banned, that fucked up? Banned, banned, yes. Banned. Gone. Is that Forever. wrong? Yes. It is. I shouldn't have ever done that. It's fucked up to put him in that stressful situation um, that he was in because of me. Absolutely, that was wrong to do, and I shouldn't have done it. But I did it because... A lot of things going on in my life that will be explained later in the video. Now I gotta find where we are. Option. <laughs> yep. So I put it out, and, and here's a little secret for you. I don't really matter that. No, here we go. It's like it's a it's a it's a vet, it's a attempt to at trolling. Here we are. Yep. It's, uh, let, let me say something. Hopefully they'll respond. I didn't want a response publicly. I just wanted him to respond to me in general. It's been a year since he was myself. talking to me. You know? I just wanted and, uh, anything. I think this is what he wanted us to do. This is why I haven't done this uh, ever until now. Despite him, you know, running me down on his forums, on Twitter, on, on his chat, you know. We already did this. And so. bought, like, try to play. do stuff on the sneak. But I catch wind of all this stuff, man. People send me all this stuff. Yeah, and for the most then, part, I don't I don't look at it, but with things like this happen, I'll go through and see what's what's going down. Um, you know, it's an attempt to it's an attempt to get something going. Yeah, and he falls victim to it on a consistent basis. Yeah, and he doesn't he has an issue, like a really big issue with damage control. Yeah, like he doesn't know here. how to ignore things. I agree here, hundred percent. So this is why right. we're in the situation that we're in now is because of that. Yeah. You know, there was no need for him to make, to address this. He could have just let it go, and that was it. Mm. But we'll I mean, talk. I don't know if you want to. It's three months after we last spoke about him in a, in a positive way that we spoke about him. Let's choose just three months randomly <clears throat> and just say some stuff. And now, But again, that was three months. John didn't ever think about me, hear about me. I was getting it constant. My trolls were all over me constantly about it. Man, Phil, you really fucked up that relationship with Rambo because that was a good thing you had going. He was your friend, and look what you did. And I'm like, what are you talking about? You don't know anything. There's no public information about this at all. But that's what I got every day, you know? Um, and it, it, it just festered, and it got toxic inside of me. 
that I felt like shit. Why are you an idiot over if you don't this, agree? Right? If you don't right? agree, because and again, why did I? Why did this come up? Was asked the king on Thanksgiving. That's my Thanksgiving thing, thing that I do every year. Uh, I don't know if I specifically do it anymore. I'm seven, eight years later, but you know, I used to do it every Thanksgiving at the holiday. Ask the king. And I felt that this would actually give it closure because from my end, it was it was one of two things was going to happen, either. They ignore it completely. They never respond, in which case I say, that was my last word on the subject, never talking miserable. about it ever again. Just or miserable. they respond behind the scenes. I find out what's actually going on. Maybe we have a resolution. We work things out and we're friends again. Or maybe not. And if not, at least there's closure. Closure is better than, oh. than nothing. In my opinion. Like That was my mindset back then. Was even if the closure is a negative closure. And this is the uh. end. And this is John saying, I hate you. Don't ever talk to me ever again. You're a scumbag. I'd rather have that than, oh, I just ghost you forever. And who knows what happened, right? So in reality, what happened was I got my answers, just not in the way that I was expecting. And my face, because now everyone publicly thought that I was a scoundrel, a scumbag, a piece of garbage because of this video. Um, again, I'm not going to dispute that there's things I've done wrong. All right. Let's continue. Then not only that, every single time we've been out in the field and people have asked us about him, all we do is we don't associate with him anymore, but we wish him the best of luck. Yeah. Remember that guy that we met at the YouTube studios? Yeah, he yeah, asks yeah. Us the same question that we say we always give the same answer. Yeah, man. We're not. They would go out in public and tell people we don't associate with Phil anymore. We wish him the best, but they wouldn't tell me. <laughs> They're telling other people, but not me. So again, I'm the one left with the public face to the to the internet thousands of people who want answers i have none and they won't give me the answer but they'll tell someone at the youtube studios oh we're done with phil we're not going to deal with him anymore how about me <laughs> you know i'm here to bash anybody <clears throat> but at the same time we're not here to take shit from anybody either <laughs> yeah there's enough is enough and uh we, we always talk about it you know as i always say hopefully we don't have to do this yeah we talk about this on it's a sad. consistent it's basis disgusting. it's sad but here we are, man. So, yeah. And again, I want to, I'm gonna like spill this out. This isn't an attack. This isn't like an, just an attack. Like this is all the shit that went down. There's things that are out there that he put out there, mm -hmm. things other people believe that are not true. Yeah. So I have to defend. All right, he's gonna bring up the subject of money now. Um, he's right, but it's because. All right, I'm not even gonna get ahead. I'll let him talk, and then we'll we'll address it. Okay. Um, so really my last feelings on the subject of, cause now they're going to move on. My last feelings on the subject of the, the Thanksgiving 2015 ask the King, which is how this whole started. All right. I was completely in the wrong for saying what I said. Um, and doing that at the same time, they had been ghosting me for about a year. The only contact I have with them is them is John making a pay me tons parody that essentially has my name in it. So it, it is a slam against me, even though I thought it was funny, it's still slam against me and everyone sees it like that. All right. They continue to ignore me for the rest of the year. All the viewers and fans are asking why. I don't know. But they're telling everyone publicly that they run into, oh, we don't associate with Phil anymore. We don't like him. Uh, you know, but we wish him the best. I don't know that, right? Things are just getting worse and worse for me in 2015. Again, piling on, on of shit. The, de the DDoSing, the swatting, my relationship falling apart, my YouTube channel uh, getting destroyed, and... This was just the other fucked up thing behind everything. You know what I'm saying? Um, and it just kept festering to the point where I wanted a closure. And what I did got a closure, but sadly it was a public closure. I just wanted them to say, hey, enough is enough. We don't want to be your friend anymore. Leave us alone. Which they never did. And they still didn't. Because in this video, they don't say that either. Although obviously if you make a 90 minute negative video about someone, that's pretty much what you're saying. Okay myself we have to dispel some things so i want to get into a couple things here man there we go so first one i want to talk about which is disgusting man is money okay you ever told like you shouldn't talk about money you ever, you ever oh you yeah ever all, the time. all the time yeah this is not me complaining oh, about I hear it money, every day because honestly from my side of things i know some other people uh in our in our circle uh don't agree but uh I believe I was treated fairly with, I need with money. I that money. I really do. I need that money. But well, the problem bills. is info that's been presented to you is not exactly true. So it's something. Okay. John feels that he was treated fairly with money. 
but people in their circle don't agree who. What are you talking about? This is about you and me. This is not about people in your circle. And what did you tell them? So you told people in your circle what money you were making in our videos. Other people knew, okay? It wasn't just me on one side. He was telling people all around him what kind of money he was making, apparently. And they said it wasn't enough. So there's the seed of, oh, you're not happy. You shouldn't be happy with that. You should have more, right? Um, again, John said earlier, this isn't about money. I don't care what other, everyone else makes around me. I, you know, He says here, Phil treated me fairly with money. But now he's about to have a whole segment about money. So why? If you feel you were, you were treated fairly, right? Why are you doing a segment about money? He says, oh, because there's some misinformation. Even if there was misinformation, who cares? You were treated fairly with money. How is this an issue? I don't have money to do it. I don't have money right? to do it. I don't have money to do it. I and then he's just the circle of friends. I don't have money to do I, it. I, again, when I watch this video, and I've watched it many, many times over the years. This is a seven-year-old video. There is this reference to a circle of people behind the scenes who are basically, it sounds to me, they're poisoning the well. They're looking at the situation as outsiders, right? And they're telling John, hey, John, you were treated badly. This was bad. Why were, you know, meanwhile, John and I are having a blast. We're making content. We're making money. We're having a good time together. There's no, there's no ill will there. All right. But who, what is this circle of friends telling you you didn't make enough money? And why are you listening to them if you feel like you did, right? This comes up later. There's other topics where they start saying, oh, you know, people in our friend circle said this and that. What? <clears throat> why, why is this, why is this in discussed in your friend circle? This is you and me, our friendship, our business relationship, why is this being poisoned by others? This is weird to me to hear him say it like this. It's very telling that there's other stuff going on that you don't know about until this video comes out. Okay. Anyway, let's see what John has to say about money, which he said you shouldn't talk about. That he <clears throat> says quite often, John got 50%. He got half of everything that I made, that we made together, or videos I was in with him, right? And again, Howard, like, why is this something that's said publicly? This can you, should have can you come up with been, any kind of a, there, a reason? There is, there, is, um, there is no reason to say mm. this unless he's, A, he's lying, or B, he's trying to save face. I'm trying to save face because at this time, again, when did I start talking about that shit publicly? 2014, 2015. Because people started, again, maybe mostly trolls, but people saying, Phil, why is John on your content? Phil, John said he would be in your content and he's ignoring you. Why? Did you not pay him? And that was a big thing. People always wanted to make it about money when John never had an issue with money. Never once did he say to me, I'm not getting paid enough for my work. Um, <clears throat> and so, so I never thought it was an issue. There's now, a sick motherfucker idea on the internet called Super Hound, whatever the fuck when its name is. I started talking about it publicly, nor do I know the context because I couldn't find it. I'm sure people will find it, it now, and that's fine. Because I'm going to tell you, I know I said it. I know Are that I said just complain all night. Just leave that. John, fifty percent. I know it's I, I should. Should I have said fault. that? Probably not. At the same time, do you feel that if you were getting paid fifty percent of the money being made on a project that's a oh co-op, no, is that enough? Streaming you. Oh no. Right. I'm trying to be fair. Um, people were constantly attacking me, telling me that I was not paying John. Like this was an ongoing thing with my trolls. That Phil was a scumbag who ripped off John and never paid him or didn't pay him enough. And he was pocketing all the money and being the big guy who was rich and everything. And John was getting nothing. And I was basically using his work and profiting off of it and all that. And it couldn't have been further from the truth, as we're about to discuss. But this became a common meme. Much like all the memes about me today that are stupid bullshit. The more that people say something, the more they will believe it, whether or not there's any evidence at all. There was no evidence of any of this because John never talked about it publicly, nor did I. So there's no way they could say that, but that was their that was their line of reasoning is that, oh, Phil doesn't pay John, okay? So one day, I'm sure I got annoyed, like like Howard says, I take the troll bait, I got annoyed, and on a stream I say, listen, I was fair, I paid John 50%. Was it a lie? No, it was saving face. Howard is correct. I was trying to save face, I was trying to justify that you can't tell me the reason John doesn't want to be in my stuff today is money, he was always paid fairly. I shouldn't have done that. Another mistake I made. There is, no, there is no reason to even address anything about money publicly on a YouTube, YouTube video. 
Yeah, and this was done way before there was any kind of pr- for yeah. before there was major problems. Just something's thrown out, like, "Oh, look, I'm a great guy. I'm giving him half the money." Yeah, that get. Um, it's not exactly the truth. Okay, so he starts doing YouTube stuff in 2008. I do. There's some of it. You know, I start doing videos with him. That's Street Fighter vlog. We've been hanging out for a couple years go. before that, playing games. So just kind of transition into now we're to be playing games, but recording games. You know, um, and I did this stuff for from 2008. When he started YouTube, I did this for probably a couple of years for nothing. He, saw- he says he did it for a couple of years for nothing. That's correct. Any videos that he appeared in before I was able to monetize those videos, he didn't get paid for. I was only able to monetize the gameplay videos in early 2011 when I got partnered with Machinima. So any videos he appears in prior to that, he didn't get paid for. Also, I didn't get paid for them either. I was on with Machinima a few years later. <clears throat> And I had to come to him and ask, because we're, we're still doing videos. And I said, since you're getting something for this, do you feel that I should get a percentage of that mm-hmm. for my efforts on here, right? Mm-hmm. So we make an agreement. By the way, he says, I had to come to him and ask. He says it like I was, he was doing these videos for an extended period of time, and I was not paying him, and then he had to ask for the money. No. Once I got partnered, it was pretty quick. I don't. I can't exactly tell you when. I can tell you it was relatively quickly after I got partnered and he was regularly doing the co-op with me. And then we started seeing the results. Oh, the views were good. There's money coming in. And then he said, hey, can I get paid for that? I said, absolutely. You are 100% entitled to getting paid. You're part of this content. It wasn't like, oh, I did it for months and months and I had to then ask him and beg him for money. That's not what happened. The way he says that makes it sound like that. And that's not what happened at all. <clears throat> the fuck? which will be basically half of the month, half of the month's co-op income. So what happens is he takes out taxes from that amount um, mm-hmm. and cuts it in half. Fair. Right? Get half of that. But for instance, like if it's March and we do videos in March, mm-hmm. I will get a percentage of what was made in March. It does not include residuals like for months coming up. Like, for instance, if those videos make more money in April or, or, or uh, June and July, okay? Like, that doesn't include that. So whatever was made in April for that month, that's what I would get. It does not include streams or whatever other money comes in, right? Yeah. This went on for a little while. Okay. So let's address this because this is the for part one, then there's a part two to it where the agreement changed, okay? Here's the full story for context. I was working with Machinima as a partnered member, and that means that I would put out videos. Dependent on the views the videos got, I would make a flat rate of money per a number of views on a video. Machinima would keep all the ad revenue and give me that flat rate. Most cases, they were making more money on the ad revenue than what they were paying me. That's how they made their profits, and they made a living, basically. They were making the money on the ads. I was getting the flat rate payments, okay? So, John is correct. What we would do, we would do a month of content, okay? Now, by the way, people seem to have this very weird conception or notion that YouTube is this big corporate entity that runs crazy amounts of tracking and reports and has all this data that is completely false, okay? Especially back then, we're talking like 2011. Here's how I got paid and here's how I figured out any data. I got paid by a PayPal payment, one lump sum a month, Here you go. There's your money. Okay, what is this? Is this revenue from one channel, other channels, all channels? Oh, that's just all your revenue. (laughs) So I don't even know the money coming in. What's it from? Is it from DSP Gaming? I had other channels running. Is it from the other channel? I don't know. Here it is. Lump sum. Okay. So how do I figure out what made what? Especially back then, there was no way to figure that out on YouTube. There was no analytics tab on YouTube. It didn't exist. There was no way to figure out how much money a video made. Okay, what you would have to do is manually sort videos and start counting views and shit. So it was a nightmare. I was like, dude, with the amount of co-op videos we're pumping out, right? We're doing every week. We're doing a co-op. That's what? 20, 30 videos plus smart guys. Like we're talking, we'd have to track a hundred more videos a month to figure out what we're making on these specific videos. So I started contacting Machinima behind the scenes and I made a request of them that they thought was ridiculously outlandish. I said, hey, guys, you're the ones who have all the data. You're the partner network. You're tracking videos. You have access to all that data. 
can you on a monthly basis start sending me reports on videos and you know can i use those reports to pay well i, I here's what i told them which is kind of stupid i said i need these reports to pay my employees i got some people here working with me and i have an agreement a business agreement with them okay and i need to be able to pay them and if i don't know what videos are making i can't pay them so machinima on a monthly basis starts sending me reports that are the most stupidly ludicrous reports i've ever seen is it a excel file that i can sort and search and, and and do stuff with right is it anything that i can do anything with actively no it's a fucking pdf file uneditable unsortable it's just like as if someone right now handed you a piece of paper with printed text on it. That's what they're sending me, okay? So here's what we would do. We would wait for a month to pass, okay? And the next month, we would sit down when they send me the monthly report, and we would say, what were the co-ops we did last month? And we would figure it out. Okay, here's what we did. And we would, I would, I would not John, I would go there line by line and count up the amount of money that those videos were made because that's exactly what the report was. What what we were what I was paid for that video by Machinima that month. So I would go through all of that and sorted myself, money. Really added up, I subtract money. taxes. I we knew what the taxes were. I knew what I was paying my tax guy and everything, you know, for the taxes. Here's the profits. And I would cut it right down the middle, 50%. Oh! And I would give that to John on a monthly basis. Okay? Now he's absolutely correct. There was no residuals paid. Okay? And there was a reason for that. It was actually a discussion that we had. It wasn't like, oh, we never talked about it or whatever. We did have a residuals discussion. He said, is there any way to figure out residuals? I said, well, John, the only way we can figure out residuals is literally if every month, not only am I going to sit down and look at the new videos we make, but now I have to request reports on previous months from Machinima, and I have to sit down here and crunch those numbers too. And we did this actually once and found out the game devs were basically that the residuals, unspired, unless it was a giant play play combat, the residuals kind of game. were essentially nothing. All right? A few dollars. Okay? Now, you might say, well, it's a few dollars is a few dollars, right? I mean, hell, if, he'll, if he's coming over your house every week and doing co-op, what's fair is fair. Pay him what you're owed. We had this conversation. And the conversation was, okay, well, we're going to do this co-op content, but also there's going to be things that come up. <clears throat> Right. Sometimes we're going to do other things. We're going to go on trips. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And not to say that it was a contract we made. We didn't. This contract was never, by the way, no contract was ever made between us. There was no written contract. He didn't sign. I didn't sign. This was just our agreement that we did. We just did it. We were friends. We didn't think that anything could, could go wrong. And my God, if any, ladies and gentlemen, please listen to me. No, really. Please listen to me right now. Okay. If I can give you one piece of advice out of this whole situation, this whole fucked up situation, this is it right now. This moment. Stamp, clip this part, okay? Like, get down on my hands and knees and it say, doesn't thank matter you if you're camera, friends with someone. I would do it. If you are entering a business arrangement with someone, you must document it and you must have a contract. Period. Because this is not the first or last time that an entire friendship has been negatively affected and in some cases torn apart by a business relationship. All right. I know ex examples of this. For example, <clears throat> screwattack.com, which doesn't exist anymore, was a very prominent website on the internet for people who make content about video games. There was two guys who were in charge, Stuttering Craig and Handsome Tom. Sadly, the same thing happened with them that happened with me and Rambo, where we, they had kind of agreements and they, they weren't necessarily contract. And then after years of working on this content together, they had a massive disagreement of falling out. They split and now they hate each other, essentially. Okay. Fucked up. Blah, 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 they were like blah, the closest blah, blah, guy, blah, blah, you know. And the public saw that unfold. Saw them have their relationship be broken, fractured, and split over the business. You know, I don't necessarily think that's exactly what happened here. <clears throat> I think that's one of the factors. Obviously, John would not be bringing this up if it wasn't a factor, right? He'd be ignoring it. It's a factor to him, or he's not going to address it. But we didn't ever have a contract, so he can say all of this, and I can say all of this. But there's no evidence of any of it, right? It's all hearsay. All I can tell you is I'm corroborating what he's saying. Yes, it's true. There were no residuals. Why was there no residuals? Because there was no way to figure them out. There was no, oh, can I have someone take data from YouTube and crunch a spreadsheet and figure out this and this and actually pay him? What we had was kind of an unspoken agreement. 
okay? Um, and the unspoken agreement was that for the extra stuff, here's the thing on YouTube, how it works. When you first upload a video to YouTube, especially back then, maybe today it's a little different. Back then, you would upload a new video to YouTube. That video would get a ton of bright, hot new ads on it. You make tons of money on the ads. As soon as that went away, the ads would stop running and you'd make almost nothing on the video. So if a video is not monetized, you make no, no money on it. So we would do a, a playthrough, a hot new co-op playthrough. The first few weeks, we'd make tons of money, right? After that, the next one, two months, almost nothing. Because the ads aren't running on it anymore. Those ads are now running on all your hottest new uploads, okay? Always. Why do you think I pump out so much content? Right now, you if I were to not make any new content this game. month, I would make almost nothing on ads on YouTube. That's how it's always worked, okay? Don't care what anyone else wants to tell you. In my experience, that's always been the case. <clears throat> so, we had a situation here where... I would have loved to pay him residuals, but we didn't know how to figure it out without an insane amount of number crunching and work for what essentially was going to amount to very little. All right. So the unspoken rule, I mean, it wasn't that we put it down on writing, but we talked about it is, all right, well, there's going to be situations where we're going to go on trips, right? I'm going to arrange for us to go to a convention. I'm going to arrange for us to go on, on a, a trip that I'm going to vlog or whatever. And the arrangement was that even though he wasn't getting paid any residuals for the content, I would try to pay for as much of that as possible, whether it was a hotel room, whether it was gas for his car, because he was driving, Someone but I would pay shut for up gas, dude who's whether it was moron. plane tickets in some cases. That was kind of the, the rule that we had. I had I was the one making the money here, right? I would pay him 50% of the co-op income, and anything else that came of it would be in another form, and in, maybe intangible form, but you'd be able to go on trips and stuff. Like That's how what the agreement was. Okay, um, <clears throat> he never complained. He never had a problem with it whatsoever. And this started essentially in early 2011 when I was partnered with Machinima. I can't tell you the exact date, but I believe it was about mid to late 2013 when this changed. And he's going to reveal how it changed. All right, right now. So let's continue. Again, it's not exactly 50% if you throw that out there, but... <laughs> This goes on for a little while. Then he says to me, Machinima isn't sending me reports anymore, so I have no idea... I have no idea of the, the amount of money that we're making on the co-op. I have no what, way of figuring it do? out. So I can, I can no longer figure out this percentage that we agreed on. So I basically just go, okay, listen. Throw me $100 every time I come down. I'm going to let him talk. Okay. Say the whole thing. And the way I come to this number is because round trip is about two and a half hours of driving, right? I'm there the entire day, and uh, I have to buy a meal at some point. So give me a hundred bucks to kind of oh. cover my expense. You also have to consider, you know, these are days like I'm, I'm not going to work because my job, and I'm, in, I'm an independent contractor, so I'm not going to work these days. So if you really do the math, uh, with gas and food and uh, wear and tear in your car, you know, $100 every time you come, you're not exactly profiting there. And, in, and including not going to, a, or working at a job which will actually make you more money than, than this, you know. Yep. So just to flat out say you got 50%, it's, uh, it's far from true. It's far from the truth there. Like, it's ha I guess it's half truth. It's a half truth. Is that what you would say? Yeah, it's a half truth, you know. Um, so when people want to throw their stuff out there, man, all like mm -hmm. you went to conventions and uh, you paid for things. Again, like you go to conventions, you got to take time from work. She's I'm not getting paid for work. Um, and we went to conventions. He's got a, an injury. She has a back injury. So I would go and I would carry things. I would uh, film things. Uh, I did all the driving, as you as you know. <laughs> Uh, and do whatever I could to help. I was I was coming as not. It's not just like, hey Phil, take me on this trip, and I'll fuck around and I'll sit by the pool. You know, as uh, you know, came as basically to assist him in his business, as he likes to call it, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of passive aggressive stuff, and what all that stuff he just said. A lot of passive aggressive stuff. The business, as he likes to call it. Um, oh, he has a back injury, or so he says, his back, right? Yeah. I, all, I mean, everything there, I, everything I ever said was true. I had a back injury. It was severe. Um, the thing is, 
I'm very, very good at hiding pain, right? You guys couldn't tell in my videos back then. Half the time when I was sitting around making a vlog, I was in shooting pain up my leg, numbness. Uh, it was bad, all right? Um, I had a business. I was paying taxes. I was doing everything like you have to do with a business. The Ziggy Piggy's but it's funny, back. all these insinuations, right? Oh, yeah, what he calls a business. Ah, oh, that back injury he has and stuff. That's basically what gout, he's saying gout, 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 by gout. saying that fact, stuff fact, like fuck, that, fuck. okay? Um, <clears throat> now, I will 100%. Confirm everything he just said. Stop yes, this. what happened was in late 20... I want to say it was late 2013. I can't confirm that. But after over two years of me paying him that 50% cut, our arrangement changed. Now, just to give you guys a little bit of perspective. Okay? One month. Okay? He, he We're texting back and forth, I believe. And John's like, hey, I'm just curious... Did Machinima send you the report? Because actually, I'm kind of hard up this month. I need some help. I, 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 can I get the money a little early? I was like, yeah, no problem, man. Let's try to figure this out. So I got, I get the report out, and I'm doing it. It was like the middle of the night, okay? I'm doing it, and I don't know if I fucked up, all right? I don't know if we just had a really, really good month that month. I can't remember. But I remember doing it in the middle of the night, and it was like... <laughs> An exorbitant amount of money for both of us. Split down the middle. It was like a ridiculous amount for a co-op. It was the most we had ever made on a co-op by far by like, I'm not kidding, like double. All right? And I'm looking at it and I'm like, could this be real? Did I fuck up? So I'm doing, I mean, it's the middle of the night. I'm tired. I'm fucking it. I'm probably fucking it up. Who cares, right? I'm doing the math I again. That money. I, I really do it again. Do. I need that money. It's the same. Bills. I was like, so I don't think I fucked up. I just think something happened. Maybe, maybe that particular playthrough got giant ads on YouTube for some reason, giant views for some reason. I don't know what it was. You know, I don't know why. There was a time when we did, it might have been, nah, I don't know if it was, but I know that we did a Family Guy playthrough and that playthrough had inflated views and we got overpaid for it. But I don't know if that was it. But anyway, there's this one time where he really needed the money and I said, okay, I'm going to send it to you. Okay. So I send it to him. All right. Five minutes pass. I get a frantic phone call. He goes, Phil, I think you made a horrible mistake. <laughs> he goes, I, I think you sent me too much money. This is ridiculous. There's no way. I was like, no, John, I just did the math like three times. And that's really, you know, what you're owed for this month's work. He goes, no. He's like, no, there's no way. He goes, there's no way that that's, that's the amount. And I was like, no, it really is. And, and he's like, I, I feel guilty taking this much for the work for the playthroughs we did this month. You know, and what we're doing, we're fucking around. We're sitting around playing video games. I don't have money. He's to like, do we it. made this much money. money I was like, John, I don't, listen, I don't have money to do it. I don't I want have money you to know. Do it. I don't. I don't even care do if I, I don't fuck have up. money to do it. I make good money here. You know, not only are we doing this co-op that's making crazy money because these were the great years of YouTube when ad revenue was rolling. I told you how much money I used to make back then, insane amount. I said, Stop this. there's so much money. I'm making, dude, I don't care. Just keep it. I don't even care if I fucked it up. Just keep it. You need it, dude. I'm your friend. I know this is kind of fucked up that it's a business relationship. We even have to talk about it. Just keep it. And he was happy, you know? So to me, when he's, when he's bringing this shit up in a video like this, it's like, it couldn't have been further, business related, further from the truth of this. The, 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 he's making it sound like it wasn't a good situation. It was a crazy good situation, man. He was so happy doing that co-op. I know he was. We had so much fun, and he was actually able to do things financially because of it, you know? And I, it, it just, it really irks me. $16. It really irks me that he even talked about this in the video. PayPal. When he says, oh, I was, I was treated fairly, but now I'm going to talk about this for a long time like I wasn't, okay? Now, the second half. He's talking about the $100 a week. Okay, so in late 2013, I think, I can't confirm this because I don't have the data anymore. Um, Machinima tells me they can't send me the reports anymore. They don't give me a justification as to why. They just say they can't. They also told me no one else under the partner network made those requests. I was the only person asking for that data and they don't have to provide it. So this is just one of the many cases to be following the game, following the over the years where Machinima's attitude towards me completely changed for no seemingly good reason. They were, we had a good relationship. They were sending me these reports all along, no problem. All of a sudden, oh, we can't do that. Why is he being so demanding of us that he wants this data? So they wouldn't give it to me anymore, okay? So if you don't have the raw data, all you can do is guess. 
based off of views on YouTube, which is not reliable. Um, and we were trying to guess how much money videos are making or whatever. And John, after like a, a month of trying to guess and, and, you know, having difficulty doing it, said, all right, forget it. He's like, here's what we're going to do. Just pay me $100 a week. And I even said to him, I said, are you sure that's what you want? I, I, in my head, I had a ballpark number. I wanted to pay him around $250 a week to come do what he did because it was Smart Guys, the commentary show. And it was all the co-op we were doing. And I knew that he was Jenner. driving. I knew it was gas cost involved both ways. He lived in New York, New York, the state. I live in Connecticut. There's exorbitant amounts of gas cost there. Probably he was paying $20, $30, I would think, every couple of weeks for gas just for the trip. Okay? Um. So I wanted to pay him more. That was the ballpark I, number I had in my head. It was around 250 a week. It's been pretty okay? slow. Not going to lie. And he said, no, I just want the 100 All right. That's our agreement. We're going to do the 100 By the way, I never offered him the 250 I got to clarify because now, now I'm misconstruing it in a wrong way. Bullshit. Bad on you, Phil. Bad Phil. I got to call myself out on bullshit from Take now that on. as you will. Bad Phil. I didn't offer what him the, the 250 What are you talking about? I asked him what he wanted, and he said 100 The 250 was a number in my I don't mind. Want drama in the I never yet. said it. I feel bad now because I said that. Be That's a lie. That didn't happen. He wanted 100 I said, I will give you what you want. Okay? I should have paid him more. I didn't. Okay? So, from like late 2013 up until the time when I moved in mid-2014, he was getting paid about $100 a week for the stuff that we were doing. Keep in mind that all those other things like he just mentioned behind the scenes, conventions, I paid for the hotel rooms, I paid for gas to driving to those. When we went, just, just to give you some perspective, <clears throat> we went to E3 together in 2012, all right? I basically bullshitted Machinima. And I told Machinima, listen, I need John to come with me to E3 because I need a cameraman because I have a debilitating I back Hulk Hogan's injury. Dead. Now, did I have a debilitating back injury? Yes. Did I need John to come to E3 with me? To film and carry my shit? No. I could have done that myself. I bullshitted Machinima to get him into E3. I paid for his plane ticket myself because Machinima would not pay for it. They said all they would do is they would get him a pass. So I paid for his plane ticket to and from. Okay? Um, we went to, to WrestleMania. Okay? We knew going to WrestleMania in 2013 would not garner a lot of content for the internet because WWE was classically infamous for claiming content that you put out there from any of their live events. So I knew that even if I recorded footage at WrestleMania, that oh, no, you didn't. it wouldn't make money. It wasn't, it, in my mind, that up. was not a business trip. That was a fun trip for friends. Okay, Mark my I fucking paid. words. For the gas, he drove. I paid I'm for the hotel to room. I paid I'm for the WrestleMania ticket. The fuck you Those are. were over one thousand dollar each fucker. WrestleMania ticket. You okay? are fucked. I didn't care. Let this be this was fun stuff I was doing internet. with my friend. You're fucked. I wanted him and to be along for done. the ride with me. Okay. I didn't want him to feel left out because I was the one with his name on the channel. I wanted him to come with me and, and share these experiences with me. The WrestleMania trip was not a business trip, at all. It was a friend trip. For us to go experience WrestleMania together, and sure, on the back end, come back and do a smart guys about it, right? But it absolutely, positively was not that. And he's saying every trip we ever went on, he was my work guy, carrying my stuff and filming. That is completely false. The only trip ever that happened was E3. Do you want to know why that happened to E3? Because we had to bullshit Machinima to get him his pass. So they needed to see him following me along, carrying my bags and equipment. They needed to see him recording some stuff that I was doing so that he, we wouldn't get in trouble for getting him into E3. Okay? Outside of that, it's actually completely untrue. Whenever we went to a convention, John could do whatever he wanted. I mean, yeah, he would be on the panel that we did at the convention to promote his own content that he was doing on his channel, whether it was his podcast or Schnoz Man and Hole Punch. I, I didn't demand it, because that when he came to a convention, time. he could only talk about our, our content. That wasn't the intention. It was to, he could get free promotion for his own stuff. I got his foot in the door of all of these conventions and onto these panels to promote his content, okay? <clears throat> there was a, uh, a convention we went to, Screw Attack Gaming Convention in 2013, 
okay? I think it was 2013. I'm pretty sure it was. Well, During this convention, Maybe you shouldn't have just stood still. I think paid attention, dumbass. I interacted with John Rambo a grand total of two hours. It was probably when we arrived, said hello, saw each other at the table that we had there a few times, and then when we were leaving. We didn't have the same hotel room. At that point, I was with my ex. We had our room, and he had his own room with Howard, okay, and OJ. Oh, they have to um, bring up something personal about me. Well, I was in, doing my own content. Oh, I was shit. filming everything myself. Immediately everything that was filmed point. for when you go, the when Iron Man of Gaming go competition, low, 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 I filmed, moron. okay? Yet, he was there. I got him in. He had a table. He was had a, he had a panel with me. Like you know what I'm saying? Like he went and made so much content for his own channel. In this video, he acts like, "Oh, you got to understand that even though the money was good, and people can justify that the money maybe even when it wasn't good, will feel paid for all those conventions and things." Well, I was working the whole time. That's a lie. He worked definitely during E3, and everything else was us having fun as friends. Okay, everything else was you know like I said that WrestleMania trip. There was zero work. There was no work. It was fun. So he is spinning this in a way that's, com all right, not completely untrue because there's one time when he actually did do a significant amount of work because he, because we had to or else Machinima might say, hey, what are you, fucking lie to us about this guy, you know, filming for you or whatever? I told him he was my it's cameraman. Dark Dave's and I fault. needed that because I had a back injury, right? Outside of that. It's Tevin's fault. You, it was always it's friendship. Fault. It was about friendship, me paying for everything because I was the one making all the money on the channel. And There's friendship, so that he could with me. on the internet this called statement he's making here is whatever incredibly the fuck hurtful. This idiot's name is. Incredibly. Because it couldn't be further from the truth, at least from my perspective. Maybe that's how he saw it, but that wasn't what was happening. Um, I can't believe he says this. Really, I can't. Oh, every trip that we went was full work for me, and I was taking good days good off of work. Job. Dude, it was us hanging out. Good I paid for everything because you were taking time off of work to do it. You, you wanted to go. You agreed to all of it. Like, why is this an issue later? Right? Anyway, that's all I have to say about that. I'm really, I'm actually really hurt by that statement that he makes there because that really makes it feel like all those times we had together that were friendly and I was doing my best to make sure that he could share in the fun of everything that I was doing as a result of being a YouTuber that he would be part of it because I wanted him to be part of it because he was my best friend at the time. I really felt like this is like him just saying none of that ma mattered at all. None of it ever mattered. It was all bullshit. He didn't care. And I don't, I don't believe that. I think that this is a video of him trying to, like I said, along with Howard, create kind of hit piece against me. And this is a messed up situation where he's trying to downplay all the great times we had that were not about being monetized. We're not about him filming and doing work for me. It was about us being friends and me paying for those fun times to happen. And he's like, oh, that's not a factor. Okay, you know, whatever. You can believe me. You can disagree with me and, and not believe me. I don't care. I'm just getting it off my chest, okay? So, again, it's not me... That wasn't me complaining about, like, I should have gotten this, I should have gotten that. Because he never else. did. It's just, like, again, it, it gets out there. You got half of what's made. But there's many more details in there that, uh, you know, are not, are not given. One final thing about it, because they're going to move on and start talking about Project 7 now, I believe. Um, by the end, those last few months that I was in Connecticut, and I was paying him the $100. Not that this even matters, but... Um, just doing basic math, okay? Our co-op stuff had completely fallen off. We basically had done all the big games. There wasn't many big games coming out. We were just weekly doing co-op. And between smart guys and, uh, you know, the co-op stuff we were doing and the money that those videos were essentially making from Machinima, I was paying him more. That $100 I was paying him a week was actually more than what was being made on the videos. So <laughs> Thanks for the money, coming over. Fuck. And we were Why doing content no for the goal? sake of How much keeping, he doing mean? content and having fun. And I was paying him more money than I was than I was making. I was losing money on the co-op for about two, three months there at the end there, roughly. Okay? Um, all you got to do is look at the decline of my channel over the years, and you'll see the viewers go, boo, all the way down. It's none of anyone's Yeah, busy. those views monstrously declined on that stuff around 2014. Um, but I wanted it to keep going. And that's why I kept paying him. Let's get it's this man. I'll spend all day on this. Probably Here we go. go. Project hours seven. on this topic. Try to keep it down as much as we can. But we got to touch on Project Seven because again, there's things said publicly that kind of need to be, uh, you know, addressed. So Project Seven, man, the version we were involved in. 
Oh, tell us a little bit like how it started, Howard. Man, these are your those are your guys. You know, actually, guess what? The food is here early. It says order complete. Oh, yeah, it just got delivered. So, I guess we're taking a break. A really early break because I ordered the food to show up at like four four thirty. It's three fifty one. It's already here. So, I guess let's do. Let's just uh, end the video. If you're watching this on demand on YouTube, apologies because I was not expecting to end it there. Go, but it's go, actually go, go, time go. to fat, end fat, fat, fuck. this portion of the video, and there will be further parts. So go check them out. Thanks. All right, to you guys, the viewing audience Let's here on YouTube, uh, we're swapping over. <laughs> Feasting uh, with the king. Ooh, I gotta eat it. I gotta eat it. I gotta eat the height. Okay. Ugh. So, since we're now swapping over, Pardon very briefly, me. let me do some shout outs for anyone who contributed. I don't think many or any people contributed at all. Um, but let me take a quick look. Uh, no tips came in on the YouTube side of things. 672 did a super chat and says, back from Costco. What did I miss? That was it? So I missed absolutely nothing. Okay? Uh, let's get the leaderboard up. Hint, hint, hint. Let's get 672 on, on said leaderboard. Oh, my God. This mouse is not working. <laughs> let's get the pop-up notifications working again. So if you guys do contribute in any way... Starting now, there will be pop-ups on screen if you qualify for the pop-up. All right. <clears throat> I am going to go downstairs and get the food. And we're going to do Feasting with the King while it's warm. I actually wasn't expecting to do it this early. But we get out. this is good. We'll get out of the way. And that way we'll have a good solid two, three hours left to continue with the video. Okay? Hold on. Ouch. Give me a minute. I'm just gonna run downstairs. Not here. Any and uh, I'm gonna grab the food and we're gonna do it. I'll, I'll tweet, of course, that we're doing it. Give me a second. I'll just mute the mic. I'll be right back. 